The story begins with a room filled with comic books, and our male protagonist is currently passionate about reading stories. Since he was a child, he has loved reading comics. But every time he reads it, he always feels like Enon is the main character. On the contrary, what really caught his attention were the normal characters who seemed careless, but when needed, those characters were super strong. That kind of hidden power, and since he was little, he had the dream of becoming a character with super strong hidden power. As time passed, the boy grew up every day, kind and silently helping others. Like you're helping push an old lady's cart without her knowing. The old lady was startled and wondered why it was so easy to go uphill. And our male protagonist hid somewhere to feel the joy of helping people, next to the wall he stood and hid there, listening to the old lady say, usually on this slope it is not easy to be alone, pull up position. It was as if someone was pushing him to help him. Hearing that, he smiled with satisfaction and thought that if he didn't hurry up, he might be seen. I'm only here today, because if I help you anymore, I'll lose sight of you. Maybe tomorrow I will help my uncle at the fruit stand. And so ten years of helping people without being seen passed, but unexpectedly, he was crossing the street with fanciful thoughts about today when he was hit by a large truck about the size of eight tons rushed forward quickly. Just when he thought he was dead, he suddenly woke up. Confused, he looked around and exclaimed, where is this? I remember being stabbed. Suddenly there was a voice, this is the world of swords and magic. Looking in the direction of the sound, I saw that the person in front of me was an angel, she was smiling and gently reaching out to say, I've been waiting for you, you have a pure soul. She introduced herself as her seer, the goddess of this world, and said she was waiting to revive him. He asked suspiciously, you said wait for me, what do you mean, you already know who I am. Of course, he is one of the few people who helps others without wanting to be noticed. Many gods were very surprised by his actions. Hearing that, he bowed his head softly and said, I know. Even though I tried my best to not be noticed, I still couldn't get past the gods. Hersia looked at his sullen, sad face, said happily, as expected he was quite humorous. Goddess Hersia of this world will bless you. You can become anything you want in this world. Being a hero can also be a demon king or a dragon or even a lord of hell. Now you choose what you want to become. He spoke softly, a character with hidden strength. You muster the courage to speak louder. I want to be a character with hidden strength. Please let me become that person. Hearing him affirm like that, she asked again, Do you want to become a character with hidden power? Your body couldn't control it and kept shaking, saying, I always wanted to become like that. I secretly turned on the fan for someone else, silently sweeping the street. But those actions are clearly not a character with real hidden power that I want. A character with true hidden power will often be overlooked but when necessary, they show their enormous strength. Hearing you being so determined, Hersia softly said, I know, even if you have overwhelming power, you still want to hide it and be ignored in everyday life. Seeing that he still hadn't changed his decision, she told him that he would be reborn again, and would be born as a commoner in this new world. Your strength will be stronger than any hero, including the demon king or other dragons, he was happy to hear that and thanked him. Don't rush to be happy. But the moment your power is revealed, your heart will explode. As expected, he will become the person who needs to hide his strength. Hearing the last sentence, he shouted in panic, There, no, wait, what, why is my heart exploding? Hersia ignored his words to stop her. She said, There you will be the one who possesses a huge power but needs to walk on a lonely path. I pray you will be at peace with that power. Let it go. I beg you, hey wait, slowly send me there. Hey Hersia. Two years have passed since he came to this world, he is now bored and sitting in the forest complaining about how boring it sounds. Suddenly, a pack of ferocious wolves appeared from nowhere, eager to devour him. Looking at the pack of ferocious wolves approaching, he said, okay, okay, because I'm the strongest person here. When they came to attack, he alone killed them all without sparing a single wolf. Looking at the corpses of wolves lying on the ground, he exclaimed, really, such domineering power. Turning around to see that there was only one left, I was startled and exclaimed, oh, aren't there only five? It ran away in fright. Running straight into the forest, seeing it running away, he clicked his tongue, hey, when did it run so far? Now that he thought that even the monsters knew his strength, he didn't want his heart to explode. Without thinking much, 
he quickly rushed forward and struck the wolf. After a miserable cry, it shared the same fate as its fellow humans. Destroy them all, run around excitedly, and catch them all. Great, now, there are no more monsters near me, and no more people. Should I go back to the village? This boy is the male protagonist who has reincarnated, his name is Urian, he is currently nine years old. Urian returned to the village again. He was holding a broom like a real one. He happened to see Ella. Before he could say hello, Ella immediately blamed him. Where have you been these past few days without telling anyone? Urian pretended to have a stomach ache, and sorry Ella. Hearing that, Ella was worried but still criticized him. So you have to tell me, I told you not to wander around alone because you're very weak. Do you know how many wolf packs are near us? I'm sorry. The children behind spoke up. There really aren't many wolves around anymore, is that so? Often because of them, it is difficult for us to raise livestock. It is all thanks to the prayers of the priests. Thanks to them, we can raise livestock easily. I wish that every day there weren't any wolves at all. While having fun, the boss came up and angrily shouted, This trash. After saying that, he grabbed his hair and threw him far away. It's best for an orphan like you not to wander around alone. Seeing that, Ella was worried and quickly ran to see if he was okay. He hated seeing you humiliated. I adopted you because I saw you were still young, you were short and weak. Is there anything you can really use? She kept calling his name insecurely. Urian, are you okay? Urian smiled and reassured her. I'm okay, I'm sorry, you weren't arrested today either. The cruel owner angrily cursed. What are you guys doing? grabbed the broom and walked away, the children heard that and immediately obediently did not dare to delay, the cruel and cruel man tortured them all day long, stripped the children, but today no one recognized Urian as the one who defeated the monsters. He threatened the kids, you guys still remember the song, those of you who don't remember, I'll throw it to the wolves to eat, and Urian is very happy because he destroyed the wolves, he's only interested now that he's the one with the power, hidden power that no one knows yet. The children are now working and singing in unison, I'm so happy, even though we are orphans. Because the boss adopted us, even though we are orphans, we are still happy. Because the villagers gave us food, gave us food. We want to repay them, please dance for us. The children have to sing like that every day to avoid being thrown to the wolves by the cruel owner. The villagers don't know, when they hear the children sing, they feel very happy, look, the kids are cleaning again today. I heard they did it themselves. They're really kind. It's because the boss is kind. He even took in orphans who had nowhere else to go. We can't help but cheer him on. Let's catch chickens for the children. The villagers kindly gave the children chickens to eat. When I brought the chicken home, I didn't expect that the person who was enjoying it was the cruel owner. The children were only allowed to eat a few potatoes. The poor children felt angry and sad. Why potatoes? A frustrated little girl, sister, after all, you gave us chicken. Why can we only eat potatoes? The kid next to me took a big bite and said, Go ahead and eat it. I'd rather eat potatoes in your house than starve outside. Ella took out four eggs and said, Today is a special day. Before she could finish speaking, the children all opened their eyes and stared at the egg. I secretly took these from my aunt just now. Eat these quickly or you'll be caught. Otherwise, soak them in potatoes. It's great. I'll eat it right now. Urian wants her so much. Ella gave him an egg, hey Urian, you can eat mine too. You're too skinny, if you're too skinny, the boss will throw you out. Ah, it's okay, I'm fine, so just eat yours. Seeing that he was stubborn, she pressed him down and said, I told you to eat, you have to eat, if you don't eat, it will be a waste, he smiled and said, really, I'm fine. Suddenly Ella's stomach growled, Urian laughed, sister, you should eat. No no, I'm not hungry. When Urian first came to this world, he was just an orphan with no one to rely on. Abandoned and estranged by people in the village. Orphan life is like hell. With no one to protect them, violence is almost a daily occurrence. Even if you think you should be looked down upon. At that moment, a girl suddenly appeared and asked, so I was also lonely. That person was Ella, she gave him a potato and invited him to follow her. Even though the boss is quite mean, there is still food and shelter. So she took his hand and led him to the orphanage and begged the boss, please take this child in. He was surprised, it was a boy. Ella assured the boss that Urian would be good at his job, I guarantee it. From that moment on, 
he loved Ella very much, she was so kind. Returning to the present, Urian said, sister. Then immediately put the egg in Ella's mouth, let's go to the magic academy. You can join in, and eat as much delicious food as you want. The boy next to him heard that and asked, can I eat as much as I want, the little girl next to him also asked to go with him. Ella hugged the children and promised to go to the magic academy together. Eat as much delicious food as you like. And instead of working hard, go to school. Let's try to survive here, and leave together. Early in the morning, the boss had just returned to the orphanage, he called everyone together to announce something. Regarding Ella being adopted today, let's all congratulate her. When he heard that, it was like lightning struck his ears and he stood speechless. Ella had tears in her eyes and repeatedly apologized to the three children for not being able to stay with them until the end. The children happily encouraged Ella to cheer up. He went on to say there was more good news. Urian will be a sacrifice to the wolf god. Suddenly Ella shouted loudly to stop him. Clearly this is different from what you said. You said you would take care of Urian if he was adopted. He ignored her words and asked Urian, do you know why the wolves haven't appeared often lately? He replied, yes, what you know is wrong, that's why they don't appear much. It's because we often give them food, the wolf gods like baby meat very much. You're both weak and short, even if you're big, you can't become a good worker. Your sacrifice will save the whole village, now everyone congratulate the boy, Urian will now understand the duties of an orphan. Ella shouted, boss, I will sacrifice my life, please save Urian. He was angered and immediately decided to teach Ella a lesson. Immediately swing your hand back and forth, do not damage the goods. Ella would never utter those words again. Before that I not only sacrificed Urian, but also the others. Except for Urian, everyone picked up brooms and went out. Urian was wearing a wreath waiting for the farm owner to come here, he was bored, what could he do? Should I secretly deal with the wolf god or something, then secretly run away? Suddenly there was a voice calling Urian. Seeing Ella coming, he was extremely surprised. Sister Ella, what happened, what happened to your hair? Hearing that, she touched her hair and smiled shyly, saying, I cut it to look like you. That's right, there's no time left, hurry up and change clothes with me. Even though these are girls' clothes, because I'm quite skinny, I guess they'll fit just fine. Why, why clothes, what are you talking about? What do you mean, I said I would sacrifice on your behalf. Why are you sacrificing for me? You say that even though you know what it means, what it means to sacrifice. Of course I know, because my sister is also a sacrifice. Urian, since I first met you, I thought my brother had returned to earth. You two are very similar, I think that's why I take care of you more. I don't want to see my brother die again, so for my sake, I quickly run away. Urian is eager, but then we can run away together, why are you so determined to be a sacrifice? Ella sighed, if we do that, sooner or later we'll get caught, you know how quickly adults grow up. You have a good idea, the moment the boss sees your hair he will get mad and will start beating you. Do you know how long it was from the time he started beating me until he forgot, if you run away now, you can at least escape the village. So Urian, live for me, then Ella took the wreath and placed it on her head. It seems like the place I adopted is not a good place, instead of living in a place like that, I'll help you. Hearing that, he clenched his hands and wondered, is this what a ten-year-old girl should say, even though she has enormous strength, she still can't. Suddenly the door opened and the cruel owner walked in holding a knife. He stared at Ella, hey Ella, what happened to your hair? He seemed to understand the problem. Don't let Ella or Urian worry or explain anything. The guy nervously walked over and strangled the little girl. I told you, you are an important package. But what kind of trick are you playing? If you do that, the value will drop. The more he talks, the stronger he gets. Urian called Ella in vain. He was so angry that he couldn't control himself and used his spiritual energy to give him a blow. Then his heart suddenly pounded. The heart constricted violently. He suddenly remembered Hersh's warning that if his power was revealed, his heart would explode. Ella couldn't take it anymore and vomited blood. He looked up at her wreath. Laughed sarcastically, wreath ha ha I know you want to be like your younger brother, become a sacrifice and then die, right? Ella, let me tell you a funny truth. The wolf god is me. I'm the one who killed your brother. After throwing the skin and meat to the monsters, 
I sold the organs for a bargain price. Who knows when you die, you'll still be worth money, that's a favor to useless orphans like you. Your brother was still very kind in the end, saying that it would be okay if he was a sacrifice, even if it didn't work, at least he was still a sacrifice, ha ha ha, he was really kind, ha ha. Seeing her motionless, he laughed loudly, is he dead? Urian witnessed his crime. His face was filled with murderous intent as he looked at the cruel owner. He looked at you expressionlessly, your sister is dead. It's a pity he's always worried about you. But don't worry, I'll let you see him soon. Hearing that, suddenly images of the two of them having fun together appeared in his mind. Looking at him expressionlessly, Urian smiled faintly, why hesitate? He listened to what he said but froze, what? He remembered when Hersia asked him why he wanted to become a character with hidden powers. Wouldn't the hero or the demon king be more obvious? You really don't want anyone to know. A hero or demon king uses his power for humanity or demons. I do not want like that. What I want is to use my power for the people I want to save. As soon as he finished speaking, he swung his hand vigorously. With a swish, his head was immediately chopped off. Ella fell directly to the ground. He picked her up and called out to her. I'm sorry for being late. I thought Ella was dead, but unexpectedly she coughed a few times. Seeing a ray of hope, Urian smiled. Knowing that he could still save his sister, he used recovery magic to treat her. Seeing Ella gradually recover, he smiled with satisfaction. Luckily it's not too late. Look at the bright sky ahead. Urian closed his eyes tightly, he still smiled, he no longer regretted anything about the things he did. His heart was pounding again, but he was still alive. Look at the owner's body lying there. Urian understood, he realized one thing. If he killed them before they noticed his strength, he would not die. And from here the birth of the secret main character Urian, who was super powerful, was born. Thanks to goddess Hersia, I entered a new world. And save Ella from that cruel master. It has been four years since then. You're still as good as when you saved your sister. At this time, Urian was in the forest and standing in front of him was a monster. He looked towards it and suddenly shouted, I forgot I didn't drink milk this morning. No, no, no I haven't grown any taller in four years. But I didn't know that the monster was attacking him, and he was mumbling, what is the average height of a 13-year-old child? While there was something going on, the monster kept bothering him, so he immediately took action against it. Saw its head fall. His mind jumped, wondering if eating deer antlers would help him grow taller. And as always, our male protagonist Urian is still the strongest. Several years passed, and the nun informed Ella and Urian that they were both old enough to take the magic school entrance exam. Sister Arlen, ask if you two are ready. Sister Arlen, who adopted them after their master died. Listening to what she said, Ella replied, Yes sister, thanks to you we have prepared very well. The two girls and boys next to her were cheerful, you two should be happy. Good, there must be a reason why God took the boss away and left us two behind. Sister, I hope God will bless you all in the entrance exam, thank you sister, we will definitely pass. What I just mentioned is the magic school, their dream when they were in that terrible orphanage. And that is also the place Urian is extremely looking forward to. The past four years have been really boring, because all he did was silently destroy monsters. But now, he thought, everyone would openly despise him. Wouldn't a fantasy world and a magic school be like that, with a despised male protagonist? So excited. The Royal Magic School is a school founded by the royal family. This place nurtures all magical talents, regardless of their status, to fight against monsters, protect humans. Today is the day of the magic school's entrance exam, the orange-haired boy talking is Noble Chris, as expected of the Royal Magic School, right from the entrance, I was surprised, can already feel the nobility. Just as I thought, almost all of them had blue brooches, they were students from the same aristocratic class as me. This guy is surprising, looking at the girl with pink hair, wearing a red brooch in her hair, she is a princess. He already felt uneasy, this year's entrance exam was no joke. Urian and Ella over there were laughing and talking, Urian, don't worry too much, Chris heard that and looked over. He began to pay attention and saw black brooches on the two people's outfits. Ella smiled and said, let's just act as usual, hey Ella, I'm the one. While talking, Chris burst out laughing, ha ha, ha ha oh my god, 
everyone paid attention. He walked up to the two Ella sisters and mocked, it's true that this school doesn't discriminate on status, but how can lowly people dare to dream of entering a magic school like that, O oh, respected majesty? Not only that damn Chris, but other noble brats are also in the same boat as him, and are also making fun of people when they see a black brooch, is it black, you country people, do you know how to read, no, ha ha, I already eliminated two people. Whatever, they won't be eliminated anyway, they should at least try once, as a thank you for giving him a chance. Urian half smiled, ah yes, very good, this is a typical plot in a story about a similar character. Ella looked annoyed, that's right. But I didn't want to bother them, so I pulled Urian away. But, Ella. Urian, don't listen to them. Because they are people who value status more than human values. Ella felt a bit regretful, but she had to sadly follow me. Um, I'll wait for you. A moment later, the headmaster of the Royal Magic School, Marges, also announced that the 29th entrance exam had officially begun. The test is simple. As a student of a magic school, your goal is to protect people with your sword and magic. So, this entrance exam will evaluate your basic sword skills and magic power. Urian in the queue is having his ears tortured, having to listen to taunts about him, hey hey, look over there, he's wearing a black brooch, there are also farmers with black brooches, is he there, can you hold the sword properly? After the principal finished speaking, instructor Gar Ryanby began to introduce and explain that I was the instructor in the exam to evaluate the student's sword skills. During the exam, all you have to do is, use the practice sword in front of you. Slash all the targets behind him immediately, and as he spoke, Ryan B also held the practice paper, the doll behind him was immediately slashed horizontally. The students gasped in admiration, how did he do that with paper? It was so far away, it was so amazing. Now when I call your name, you all come out, first, Tien. He replied that he was present. Teacher Ryan B spoke up, when you're ready, start. Um, but if it's like me, if I can't cut it right away, will I be eliminated? Ha, huh, no, we don't have too high expectations for you. Because after all, you're only at a child's level, so don't try to show off, just do what you can, I understand. After hearing what Tien said, she also started, she held the sword and slashed down on the doll. Looking at the slash mark, Ryan B spoke up, I haven't been able to cut half of the doll yet, so the next person is next. Chris, Chris up and also cut in half. Rishul cut it in half. Next is Ella. I'm here. Urian comforted him by saying, I think the criterion to judge is whether you can cut it in half, you can easily do it. Yes, thank you. Now start when you're ready. Seeing Ella, those nobles still laughed and insulted me. I know that everyone here can apply, but I didn't expect that we would have to take the test with the peasants, really, look at it like that, probably can't cut the doll in half. Ella was extremely focused. When she looked at the doll in front of her, she remembered that four years ago, she herself could not protect Urian. Taking a breath, she slashed straight at the doll in front of her, immediately cutting the doll in half. Looking at the scene in front of him, teacher Ryan B was also surprised. The other nobles were also extremely surprised. Look, he's the first person who can cut a doll apart. How can someone wearing a black brooch, what sword does he use? I will use that sword too. Ella smiled, now I will be the one to protect Urian, because Urian is super weak. Master Ryan B didn't say anything, just looked at the doll. In the middle of this figure, there is a wand. Even if you attack with all your might, you can't completely cut it off. To cut it off, she needs to enhance her weapon with magic, but even an adult would find it difficult to do that. Yet a little girl can do that. She's really talented, after thinking about it, the teacher started reading Urian's name. Urian approached with his sword. Ryan B spoke, let's start when you're ready. In my heart I'm also curious, wondering if that younger brother is similar to my older sister. Urian picked up his sword and started slashing. All eyes turned to him. He couldn't even cut half of the doll, immediately becoming a joke to the nobles. Ha ha ha, it couldn't even cut half. As expected, after all it was only in the installation. It's just black, weak farmers give up because they can't eat enough, ha ha ha. Ryan B silently assessed, compared to her sister, she wasn't that talented, and Urian enjoyed listening to them talk, the teacher read the next person's name. Later, came the magic test. This time Moz, Ge will be in charge of this test, I am Ge, 
the instructor in this test, I will ask you to use this magic tool, and use magic to attack all targets, one goal to another. Suddenly a student raised his hand to speak, but, I can't use magic, it's okay. This magic tool can create water even though you can't use magic, okay? Then one by one let's step out and use it to shoot the target. The first person was Chris. This kid was holding a magic tool, his face was smug, so I did it first. Then it started, Chris used a magic tool, a column of water was released. Shooting straight into the heart of the target, Moors, G was loud and good and excellent. Chris walked arrogantly back to his seat. G E was happy and called out the next person's name, followed by Urian. He happily said, yes, Ella behind him cheered him on. Chris came up to him, gave Urian his wand and said, take this wand and move forward. He reached out to take it, then pretended to drop the wand on the ground. With a look of disdain on your face, you dare stand while accepting something from a noble, you lowly peasant. Ella and Moors, G E behind were concerned, Urian, contestants, you can't fight. He bent down, picked up his wand and said, it's okay. Turn around and hide your infamous face. He was extremely happy, thinking to himself, thanks to you Chris, now all eyes are on me. Urian raised his wand, and this time he will also fail according to plan, and will become a perfect hidden character. Urian practiced, a column of water shot out from inside his wand, but the wand broke. Urian was startled, wait, this wand. Both Ella and Gee, along with the students, were extremely shocked. Urian was sweating, looking at the wand in his hand, he knew he was about to get into big trouble. Magic school entrance test. The main character Urian closely follows the plot. He was taking a test and just now he used his wand and broke it in front of so many other students. The noble children are still in shock. Urian was stunned. His father's death was not over. Ella called out. Urian what's going on? The wand exploded. Why? How could it be like that? The power of that lowly guy is that strong. Listening to everyone talking. Urian was extremely panicked. Bang, 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 bang. Chris screamed loudly. It was because of the wand. There was definitely a problem with that wand. There's no way a magic wand could be destroyed in the hands of a lowly person. That's right. How can a commoner? We use our wands continuously throughout the test. Surely at some point it must fail. Right when we test the wand must fail. Right? Ha ha ha. It's really fun being a proletarian. Not knowing how to explain. Chris was so shocked. He breathed a sigh of relief. Thinking. Chris. Thank you. Luckily. This wand is too weak. Just using a little bit of magic power it broke. I just become a hidden character, I can't be caught yet, I'm not allowed to be subjective. Having ended two rounds of competition, the principal announced that now is the final test, a team of three people will go into the forest, hunt the ghost bear and bring back its forbidden tooth. No matter how superior your swordsmanship and strength are, if you can't fight monsters, it's of no use, prove that you are brave students. Urian was absent-mindedly thinking about the final test being monster hunting when Ella spoke up, Urian. Just one more step and we can reach our dream. Try your best to the end and pass the test. He smiled, sister, yes I will try my best. And now the list of teams, those whose light radiates the same color will hunt together. The principal had just finished speaking when the light on Ella's brooch glowed red. See, I'm also red. Come here, you call Ella to join the team, we will go to the forest. Oh yes, seeing her on a team with two high-ranking people, Chris was jealous, they were on the same team as the princess, why did that commoner, it was just luck, it was just luck. Urian was secretly happy, great, lucky, I think she's on a team with some strong people. Ella said goodbye to her younger brother. He also smiled and said goodbye to Ella. There must be something wrong, I don't understand why he doesn't have any light shining out. The two students looked at him with contempt, he's really a low-class guy, luckily they didn't share with him. Urian thought, Luckily no one paid attention to me. Oh don't tell me I don't really have a team. Ah found it. Here it is. Rishal looked at the brooch. It turns out it doesn't radiate any light because it is colorless light. Hey Urian. You're Urian, right. I've noticed you since I took the test. My name is Rishal. Please cooperate. And I'm Tien. Urian happily responded and happily cooperated. Luckily our male lead also had a team. Several other nobles looked at this ragged team and burst out laughing. 
Black and Blue being on the same team is truly the pinnacle of incompetence. By the way, this is the fourth time that guy has taken the exam, the fourth time, really useless, what a commoner, ha ha ha. And that girl, well, she's an outcast noble girl. A top-notch combination. You were stunned, why? The one who retakes the exam for the fourth time and the noblewoman is an outcast. Looking at the two people with their heads bowed, not daring to say anything, you should regain your team spirit, we will pass this test, right? Rishal smirked. He said excitedly, it's true Urian, I didn't see you wrong. A confident appearance that doesn't flinch in front of nobles, even commoners like me want to have that personality. You'll definitely be accepted, Urian, just pass the test. Tien is worried, but can we overcome it? I failed both the swordsmanship and magic test. Urian continued, the swordsmanship test, with magic. He immediately turned to stone on the spot, because he was acting too deep, he was about to die, what kind of test was that? Thinking back to the last two tests, I was shocked. Urian was sweating profusely, oh so I failed too. Remembering what my older sister had told me before, to try my best and pass, made me even more scared. Rishal was excited, it's okay, I can pass. I'm not proud, but I know very well because this is the fourth time I've taken the test, it's okay to fail those two tests. Because, the highest component score is the monster hunting test, if we join forces, we will pass. Hearing that, Urian immediately became more excited, he breathed a sigh of relief, so he could pass with his sister. The three then headed into the forest together. I've never encountered a ghostly bear with a ferocious fire, and I'm scared to death, I can't stand anything like this. The three of them took their slippers and ran away, Rishal was impatient, Miss, what should you do? You are a noblewoman, stop it, I'm sorry. Several hours have passed, the three of us are exhausted, but we still haven't hunted any monsters, we've lost, it's truly cruel. Urian was also having a headache, he thought, to get admission, I have to hunt a ghostly bear. But with these two people, I can't hunt anything. What should I do, if I were alone, I could hunt hundreds of them. Rishal spoke up, at this point, we all failed the exam. We all have our own circumstances, but this year I really can't miss it anymore, this is my last chance. Well then, just take their forbidden teeth, hearing Rishal say that, both of them were confused, what's the point of just taking their forbidden teeth? The problem is to hunt a ghostly bear and bring back its forbidden teeth, but because we are too weak, we cannot hunt them. Then we just need to bring back their forbidden teeth. How can I do that? Well, I know a way. If you look closely, this monster always points its forbidden teeth out. Seeing that Rishal said something reasonable, Urian exclaimed, Oh that's right. Rishal continued, If we do it my way, even if we can't kill it, we will get its forbidden tooth. This time I was lucky. The monster bear was the easiest to hunt. He took out a small bag and told Tien Tu Tu to apply this on her body. Tien hesitated a bit. Ha, huh, this. That's dear blood. The bear monster is very sensitive to scent. When it goes crazy from the smell of blood, I will take its forbidden tooth. Tien scratched his head sheepishly. I, I don't run very well. It's okay. You can do it no matter what. While eating the prey, even if I attacked it, I didn't pay attention. Tien was so scared that his face turned pale. Then I will destroy it. Urian held Rishal's hand tightly. His voice was cold. Are you bluntly telling her to go die? Rishal looked at Urian. What's wrong? You don't want to go to school with your sister. Sacrifice is inevitable. He asked him directly. Is there any other way to catch it? I can never do it. And I can't either. So I'll always be an inferior person. Unlike the nobles, I am not blessed with strength. So we, the lowly, should stand in the same boat. It's a good thing to sacrifice a noble so we can both pass this test. Since this dangerous test puts us on the same team, she's already an outsider. I can't take advantage of it however I want. Hearing such insults, Tien could only bow his head and stay silent. Thinking about the situation where she was considered an outcast noble, when they learned that she had failed the test again, everyone looked at her with jealous eyes. Unlike her talented brother Ricky, even your mother is harsh, I doubt if you two have the same blood. I honestly don't know if you are the shame of the Earl family or not. Every sentence and every word cut into Tien's heart. Urian couldn't help but protect her. Even if she is cold or abandoned, people will always shine. Don't arbitrarily determine the value of others like that. 
Rishal was speechless. He gritted his teeth. Then. I only saw this guy holding a bag of deer blood and throwing it at the two people. Then raised his voice and said, Go and die with her. Hearing the smell of deer blood, the ghostly bear craved it. Aggressively rushed towards Urian and Tien. Tien panicked. And Urian is calm. Slightly smirked. Because he couldn't advise the two of them, he bluntly sent his friend to death. Urian really didn't expect Rishal to do such a thing just because of a test. The monster went crazy because of the smell of blood on the two people's bodies. Seeing the crazy monster rushing towards him, Tien screamed in fear. She glanced at Urian. Song thought, he is too weak, if this continues, we will all die. Unable to rely on Urian, Tien decided to kill this monster himself. The ghostly bear bared its sharp teeth at the two people. Money despite fear. But thinking about her relatives cursing her, she was just a disgrace to the family. Tien gritted his teeth and endured it. Determined to kill the monster, without hesitation she cast a magic wind shield. She affirmed one thing. She is also a noble. Next, use the wind blade to attack the monster. Saw him take the beating. Tien felt elated. But the unexpected thing was that it was unharmed by her attack, not even the slightest scratch. Urian marveled. Whoa that bear is so strong. Seeing him bewildered, Tien said, at least I have to get him out of here. She used magic again. Using the wind to cover Urian, Urian was stunned. What is this? Is the air cold? She reminded, it will probably hurt when you land. I only know how to make you fly. I still haven't learned how to help an object land. But, that's still better than dying. Having finished speaking, she lifted Urian up high. She was grateful to Urian for not hating her. Thanks to him, Tien had the courage to stand up and fight. Standing in front of the bear, she was no longer afraid or trembling, she just hoped Urian would run far away. The monster now attacks Tien. Unfortunately, she was seriously injured by one of its attacks. And Urian now returned, he supported Tien. Like I said, you're already shining. As for the guy wearing glasses, he ran away because he didn't want to get into trouble. Thanks to that, I was able to save this girl. Tien was unconscious, and the guy wearing glasses had run away, now it was just him and the monster, he didn't have to hide his identity, watching the monster roar. Urian directly kicked it towards it, now his job was to pull out this monster's forbidden teeth. Before the guy with glasses comes back, I should prepare to tease him a bit. But where did he run off to? Right now the guy with glasses is with a few other teams. And these guys have bad intentions towards Ella's team. Ricky's voice was cold. What do you guys think you're doing? Swords and that stick should only be used when fighting monsters. Among them, there is a guy who is luring Ella. Hey commoner, come here. I will help you pass the test. Ricky immediately said. The only person who can decide whether to pass or fail is the principal. What are you going to do? We will make the nobles fall and take their place. Ricky looked scornful. So you low-class people cooperated with each other, hearing that, the commoners immediately attacked back, you nobles are the reason we have to do this, you want us to fail, isn't it over? As for Ella, I told you, come here, Ricky continued, do you really think that having her on your side can win against me? The one who will defeat you is not us, but the monsters themselves will do that, we lowlifes will use the monster to kill you nobles, this guy says that the whole team hates him, hey get rid of him who invites this brat in, group like that. Ricky raised his voice insultingly, I understand. This year I discovered that there were more low-class people participating, probably because of this. When the princess spoke up, they probably knew the bear monster and were excited by the smell of blood. As a member of the royal family, I find this situation extremely unfortunate. The future guardians of the citizens, the future students of the magic academy, would use monsters to do such things. Ricky, take them alive. Those who use the final part of the test, and the monster's characteristics, to endanger other candidates. The royal family will investigate them. Ricky listened to the princess's orders and immediately rushed forward with his sword. He swung his sword and slashed. Just one sword defeated all those despicable civilians. Rishal, standing at the end of the line, saw the whole scene and began to tremble in fear. Shouting loudly, everyone poured out their blood, immediately he and two other people poured bags of deer blood towards Ricky. Ricky is still the same, still has a cold expression. 
Suddenly there was some power that made Ricky's body not have any blood on it. That made Rishul panic. The blood dried up again. It turned out that the princess used magic to dry the blood. The princess told them, all of you should quickly surrender. Your plan has failed. The best thing about Ella is that she doesn't have to do anything. There are two people who have done it all. At this point, Rishul was still stubborn. He loudly told everyone. This year is our only chance. This opportunity will not appear again. If we get caught, our lives will be over. Everyone, don't give up. Be ready to take the sword and cut your hand. Those who saw him do such an action immediately followed suit. The princess is also helpless. Why must she harm herself and go this far? The monsters smelled blood and immediately rushed towards the crowd. Ella was scared when she saw them. She gasped. There were four stars. It was a bear monster. How can kids like us fight against something like that? Seeing that the monster bears had arrived, Rishal shouted, We won't be caught that easily, damn nobles, and Ricky then used his wind power. With just a few strokes of his sword, he killed four monsters. Ella's eyes lit up, that noble was truly on another level, she secretly exclaimed, and he told the commoners, Don't hurt yourself, just because the plan didn't go as planned, yours. You are also citizens of this kingdom. After that, he tied these guys up. When he looked closely at Rishal, he remembered that his sister was in the group. Rishal laughed, is that so? Your brother too. Your brothers are all dead. They are nothing compared to you. They must have been eaten by the bears now. That was a shock to Ricky and Ella. Who knows, if they're lucky, maybe one of them will still be alive. Ha ha ha. The princess heard him say that and immediately ordered Ricky to go find them. There are probably still traces left. Ella was also extremely impatient, intending to follow Ricky to look for Urian, but the princess stopped her from going. Ella stopped walking and asked why. My sister was also there. The princess bowed her head and said softly, I know that feeling, when I heard that terrible thing happened to my family, but you'll only get in the way. If it was as he said and they had been harmed by bears, the scene would have been bloody. And monsters will gather when they smell blood, ten or twenty, there's no telling how many there will be. Ricky is good enough to kill them all, but fighting and protecting him at the same time will be difficult. Trust Ricky and wait here with me. The words were so convincing that Ella had no choice but to stay. Ricky ran like flying through the forest. He saw his sister Tien lying unconscious, her whole body covered in blood, her hand still holding the forbidden tooth of a monster bear. He also saw a stranger wearing an iron helmet, so he quickly rushed down to take a look. Seeing someone coming, Urian turned around to see, but unexpectedly it was not the guy wearing glasses. Ricky looked at the black brooch and thought there were survivors among the civilians just now. I still see her sister looking like that. There's no way not to get mad. How dare you? Out of anger, he picked up his sword and attacked Urian. As I thought, there are still some remnants left. How dare they? Thinking about them harming his sister, he couldn't sit still, he immediately slashed at Urian who was wearing a helmet. But Urian quickly blocked Ricky's sword. Ricky was extremely surprised that someone could block his own attack. Urian spoke up, making a sudden attack like that is very dangerous. Ricky continued, Do you think after attacking my sister you can still leave here unharmed? Urian looked at Ricky's glowing sword and was surprised that his blade had magical power, he didn't understand what was going on. So he asked, your sister, me. Calm down and listen to me, I know why you misunderstood the situation. But I'm not a remnant like you think, Ricky didn't listen to a word, he performed magic. Attacked Urian, but luckily he was able to dodge the attack. That attack was formidable, fortunately my helmet almost broke into pieces. Turning around, he saw Ricky coming to Tien, he was using the windshield to protect her. Ricky's voice is cold. He's wearing a suspicious helmet, my sister's unconscious, and you're a civilian. But like you said, I don't think you're a remnant. To show recognition for your ingenious move, which broke my attack twice, I will name you. My name is Ricky, I serve Fong Lin Wai and am the eldest son of the Viscount family. Ah, nice to meet you, Urian thought and made up a name, my name is Yurunging. Yurunging, since you have confirmed that you are not a remnant, I will ask you this. Do you know who attacked my sister? After hearing this, Urian kept humming, Is it your sister? Um. That's me. I mean, I knocked her out, but, hearing that Ricky got even angrier. 
He readied his sword in his hand and said, This time I will break that ugly helmet of yours first. Urien sighed, I guess resolving the misunderstanding isn't simple at all, then. We also need to carry out the plan to remove the forbidden tooth. So next time let's talk more carefully. Urien finished speaking and immediately ran away. Ricky silently exclaimed, he was so fast. Looking at the way he moves, he is definitely a mid-level or higher knight. But, I have read you. Your speed is fast, but my sword is even faster. In a flash, Ricky was standing in front of Urien. Ricky slashed down with great force. I thought I could cut you off. Who would have thought that Urien had disappeared somewhere? Ricky was stunned, had he disappeared? Where was he? Before he could see anyone, Ricky was knocked unconscious from behind by Urien's impact. It turned out that what Ricky had been seeing all along was just an afterimage of his Urien. The 29th entrance exam has also ended. There were a few unfortunate accidents that occurred, due to a few contestants taking advantage of the monster's properties while fighting each other, but the princess caught the culprit red-handed, and the Royal Investigation Council is working to clarify the case, job. Everyone has worked hard, the principal said, the teachers were sitting in the room, seeing the tense atmosphere, Ms. G.E. opened her mouth, the quality of students this year was also very good, then another person interrupted, where is the good, Ms. G.E., what are you saying? This year's competition is like a market, with commoners and nobles mixed together, isn't it? Hearing Mr. Jerry say that, Ms. G.E. angrily told him, hey, please be careful with your language, the Royal Magic Academy does not differentiate between high and low class. That's wrong, that's just a facade, the Royal Magic Academy is a place where students carry out the responsibilities of a noble, didn't you hear what the sage said? When talking about students, don't bring my father's name into it. The principal stopped him, said enough, then asked the person next to him to explain to them. The secretary held the paper and continued reading, there were 29 candidates who passed the exam, among them the top 10 were. In the lobby, the students were also watching the results, some were happy because they passed, some were sad because they failed. On the first place list is Princess Seruti. Second place is Ricky from the Wind Spirit tribe. But Ricky just doesn't care and keeps thinking about where Yerongging is. Third place belongs to the magic swordsman Jade. Fourth and fifth place belong to the two sisters Mew and Sia. Sia told me, I didn't expect that the first place was not us, after all, it is based on personal evaluation, if it is to evaluate the overall results, we definitely won first place. Ella ranked sixth. Seventh place is the son of the Ministry of Internal Affairs Academy, Chris. This guy saw that he was ranked sixth and gritted his teeth. A commoner had a higher rank than him. She definitely cheated. Thug Rezo ranked eighth. Hina ranked ninth. And she is also a fan of the princess. Slanted Eyes Goliath is the tenth ranked person. Tien, from the Fong Lin tribe, ranked 24th, almost failing. My brother ranked second, so good. Oh and Urian. Urian laughed, but you don't rank at all. He was sweating profusely and filled with fear, as expected, he failed. He stood with his head bowed in a corner, thinking, after all, I got the forbidden tooth, is it because I despised the magic swordsmanship and magic tests too much? Hearing that her brother had failed, Ella was extremely worried, she called Urian to ask about the situation, I heard that you fell into a trap, seeing that you were okay, I felt reassured. At that time I also wanted to chase you, ha ha I'm fine, I'm sorry for making you worry. But you're so good, the limit is 6, I heard that if you make it to the top 10, you'll get a congratulatory reward. Ha ha, thank you, I think it's just because I'm lucky, I hope next year I'll be lucky too. Urian was surprised, what next year? Ella smiled, I won't enroll, let's enroll together next year. That's our goal. After Urian heard it, he just remained silent and did not respond, Chris came from nowhere, laughing like crazy, and satirizing others, very good, then you all failed. Ella and Urian stared at Chris in confusion, wondering if he had taken his medicine this morning. He saw the two sisters staring at him, then stopped laughing, then he opened his mouth and laughed again, laughing like a good season. Urian's blood boiled, he didn't know if he should punch this brat or not. There was also an argument in the meeting room, at this time, Ms. G. Yi could not accept the results and stood up to talk about the issue. The principal frowned, I thought this result was not surprising at all. I don't mean the top 10, 
I can't accept that contestant Urian failed again. The secretary reviewed the results. Well the boy is the younger brother of sixth grade Ella. It's true that Urian brought back the forbidden tooth, but it doesn't seem like the boy got it himself. Teacher Ryanby also commented that compared to his sister, his swordsmanship still has many shortcomings. Moos, GE immediately objected, but contestant Urian was very talented. Chris leaned on his hands and laughed loudly. He danced like crazy, he missed, he missed. Urian looked at his hateful appearance and got angry, let's beat him. At that moment, a man in a suit rushed over, I had an urgent announcement. Another candidate will be admitted, along with 29 other students, the announcement rang out to the surprise of the students, everyone thought it was me, it was, it was me, it was me, why, can I slide? Magic department, Urian. The remaining people immediately panicked and looked unconvinced. A commoner was given special consideration. Isn't this the first case at the Royal Magic Academy? Ella was very happy. Telling Urian, congratulations, Urian, we can go to school together. At the same time Urian was also very surprised. Have I really been accepted? Back to before, Moors, GE hit the table and stood up. I don't understand why contestant Urian failed. She has great potential. Not only does she have enough magic power to make the magic machine explode, she can also control her powers to avoid bigger accidents from happening. She has absolute control over her powers. If I let someone like her slip away, it would be a huge loss for the kingdom. Teacher Jerry countered that when the bear monster appeared, if candidate Tien hadn't blown it away, he would have died. He lacked real combat experience. Moors, GE said that, and the place to get that experience is the academy. In the future she can surpass both the first and second contestants. Teacher Jerry looked disdainful, a commoner like him. Do you really think a commoner deserves to study at this academy? Moos, GE asserted, I think the person who doesn't deserve to be here is you, Professor Jerry, a teacher like you discriminates between student classes like that. In the midst of the two people's fierce argument, a voice intervened, enough, Principal Marges spoke up, the Magic Academy is where we nurture talented warriors, class is not important, there's more, I trust Professor Ji Yi. Ji Yi was extremely happy, the principal. Principal Marges continued, she is one of the few heroic magicians in our kingdom, for her to praise a student like that, it would be a pity to let her talent go to waste. He loudly announced that, as the principal, I especially consider candidate Urian for the magic department. But, if he doesn't reach the expected standard, you will be immediately expelled from school. While Urian and Ella were celebrating his recruitment, Ricky said a name, Yurunging. He put his hand a little higher than Urian's head, I think he's about this tall. Urian was surprised, the name, this name is. In the test, Urian was even more scared when he remembered that time. But Ricky had no other reaction. Urian held his sword and stood before the mannequin. The dummy had a crack right on the side of the shoulder blade. That guy can't possibly be this tall. Ella watched Ricky leave curiously, what was it? Urian was also helpless, who knows? The next day, it was said that the top 10 students and special consideration students were all in the advanced class. Ella and Urian went to the academy together, talking while walking, here we are, I'm so worried, Ella tensed her arms, Urian teased me, I'm stiff. The room door is opened. Ella and Urian stood in front of the advanced classroom, decorated extremely splendidly and majestically with royal gold. Their eyes turned to first-class Seruti and second-class Ricky who were sitting together. Fourth-place Sia and fifth-place Mew. Third-place Jade was suddenly looking towards the door, tenth-place Goliath thought to himself that he was really a lowlife, ninth-place Hina was shy, what should I do, the princess is so cool. Sixth-grade Ella is confused, where should we sit, pondering with the special students Urian is lost in his own thoughts. It feels like he's back in first grade. I wonder what education is like in this world, because it's the time of magic and swordsmanship, so it's probably less developed than in the previous life. Meanwhile, 8th place Rezo was also coming to the front of the class, hey, get out of the way. Ella quickly dodged, Urian saw that and immediately thought, are you a bully? Seeing someone coming in, Chris immediately stood up on his hands and knees, hey. You just arrived, huh? Weird Rezo. So what? Chris was angry. You were supposed to be for the low-class people, but you came later than them. The angrier Rezo gets, so what, this bastard? Chris stood up, you're Rezo right? 
8th place, if you don't know I'm 7th. Chris made a weird face, so don't be late from now on. Rezo was so angry that he rolled his eyes, because your rank is higher than mine, so you mean you are stronger than me. He approached Chris, a test like that cannot determine my abilities at all, do you want to die? Ella was surprised, Urian, they were fighting, Urian was much calmer, sis, sit in the empty seat. Goliath laughed excitedly, scratched, there was a fight, Hina's face darkened, what a man. Jade seemed to have only kept a surprised look on her face from the beginning until now. Ella sat down, it was her first time sitting on a soft chair like this, Urian said with a smile, it's really soft. Jade walked over to say hello with a bright smile, hello, I'm Jade. Ella was shy, oh yeah, my name is Ella, Jade laughed loudly, ha ha, don't be so polite, we're classmates, right? Jade smiled brightly, you're a commoner and yet you got into the advanced class, this is probably the first time this has happened since the school was founded, it's an honor to be in the same class as you. Let's ignore class and be friends, oh of course, please take care of me, Urian heard the conversation between the two of them and immediately thought, this guy is acting a bit too much. Jade turned to Urian again, are you Ella's younger brother, a special consideration student I look forward to meeting, Urian smiled, yes, thank you, but I'm not her biological brother. Jade was a bit surprised to hear that. Ella has excellent swordsmanship, is a perfect model student, and absolutely deserves to be in this class. Jade clenched her fists, trembling angrily, I'm looking forward to seeing your abilities, how good do you have to be to be considered for the advanced class, I hope you can prove yourself. It seemed like a fire of struggle was burning in the class. Urian walked back with Ella, the first day there was nothing to do. Looks like I'll start officially studying tomorrow, I don't know what it will be like. Urian, we are finally at the Magic Academy. Enjoy until the other brothers and sisters arrive. At that moment, two people came from behind, wow, this is a real civilian, who would have thought. The blonde male student quipped, I don't know what happened, are they really students here, in my time this would have been impossible, maybe this year the standards have dropped, to the point where even ordinary people can do it, entering the advanced class, the muscular male student added. If I were a year younger, I would probably be in the advanced class, Urian looked behind him, he was a second year, of course there had to be a scene of bullying the council. The blonde male student raised his eyebrows and said hello properly, we're second years. Ella stood in front of Urian, bowed slightly, and said hello. The muscular male student smirked, yes, take off your clothes now. Ella asked suspiciously, why, hearing that hateful voice again, how dare a common address like a noble, this is unacceptable. The muscular male student grabbed Urian's body, I said take it off, take it off now. Suddenly he stopped. Urian's face darkened, seemingly very angry, staring at him without emotion. The muscular male student grimaced, this guy is too heavy. Urian looked back at him with a smiling, saintly face. Suddenly there was a call, senior. Jade was panting from running fast, the academy was not a place where he could differentiate between classes. Ella quickly ran over, Urian, you act normal again, so happy. Jade angrily stepped forward, senior, please let go, your actions are lowering the honor of the magic academy. The blonde male student raised his fist, how dare you say that to your senior. The muscular male student turned around and punched Ella in the face. He shouted angrily, you have to respect adults. Jade couldn't expect it, Ella. Ella fell down, blood pouring out. Urian was so stupid that he couldn't believe it, staring at that giant muscular guy. At the Royal Magic School Principal's office, hero resident Hyewon is drinking tea with the principal. The principal thanked her for agreeing to teach the advanced first year class. She accepted it just because she had free time. The school principal, knowing her personality, just smiled and said that you're still as straightforward as always, so cheer up a little. This year's class of hers has a special case, unprecedented in the school's history, a special case, do you mean that pair of sisters, despite the objections of the nobles, they are still admitted as special students and placed in advanced classes. Moors, Hyewon understood why the school could accept her sister, she was just a commoner but had instinctively transferred mana into her sword, if she was born into a noble family, then surely she definitely got a spot here. The principal also agreed with Hyewon's thoughts, thinking that Ella was very good. 
but Moors, Hyewon believes that her younger brother is not like that. Ji Yi keeps insisting that he's hiding a huge talent, but unlike his older sister, his younger brother doesn't show anything that stands out. Hyewon wondered why the principal still gave her the special student title, surely it must be related to the meaning the principal mentioned before. The principal asked Hyewon if she thought our school system was operating properly. This school was established to nurture talented people, regardless of status, but in reality it is only a stepping stone for noble children to study and rise, if this continues, it will certainly leading to the fall of the kingdom. Since she was a child, the only thing Mu's, Hyewon learned was how to fight, so she believed in the principal, everything would get better, she believed in the principal's ability to evaluate and take steps. And the biggest reason the two are talking about is Yurian who is being bullied outside the window. As soon as the principal turned around, he saw Yurian being grabbed by his upperclassmen, he didn't understand what the hell they were doing, he had to stop them. But Moose, Hyewon doesn't think like the principal, she wants to wait and see, what this boy will do next, and is quite curious about the reason why both of them were accepted here. See what special abilities they have. Outside the window, the tall senior slapped Ella hard, telling her to respect her senior. Jade was surprised and called Ella's name. The slap was so strong that Ella fell down and fainted. Urian saw Ella fall down and was stunned, not expecting him to strike so hard. He ran to help Ella. Jade couldn't hold it any longer, prepared to fight back against the upperclassmen, asked Urian to take Ella to the infirmary, and let Jade deal with the rest. Jade wants to drag these bastards to the student room. The two angry seniors were extremely angry because Jade called them bastards, because they were one year older than Jade. The guy who hit Ella was surprised because he didn't know when she had escaped his arms, when he had never loosened his grip. Urian hugged Ella, calling her name, as that bastard beat Ella. He injected mana into it, that guy is trash. Urian plans to face him one on one next time, giving him a lesson he will never forget, but now he cannot reveal his strength. The senior who beat Ella and Jade are facing each other. He didn't expect Jade to be younger than him but not inferior to him in strength. Both he and Jade felt that they were formidable opponents and were about to be unable to bear it. When he couldn't stand it anymore, he injected magic. He used all his strength. He wanted to restore the honor of a senior, the guy next to him wanted to advise him, but he didn't listen, telling his friend to shut up. When Urian discovered he was using magic on campus, he couldn't help but tell Jade to step aside. Jade was surprised because Urian had not yet taken Ella to the infirmary and he was using magic to treat Ella. The two are fighting but are surprised that Urian can heal her, he tells Jade not to worry, leave the rest to him. The blonde-haired senior was also surprised. Even the principal and Moose, Hyewon were equally surprised. Ella woke up, Urian was happy, told her not to do anything too hard, and Ella was extremely surprised. Now he will let the senior know that even though he hides his strength, he can still make him look bad. Hum, he was surprised when the blonde senior collapsed. What is that reaction? Moose, Hyewon asked the principal suspiciously. Did you let her become a special student because you knew she could use magic to heal injuries? Urian still doesn't know what happened, why he reacted like that. Jade was also surprised, how could Ella be so healthy so quickly? Urian frankly answered that it was he who treated his sister. Stop for a moment to talk about this world, according to common sense. Healing is the ability to use magic to heal wounds, depending on the user's ability, this ability will take from 5 to 15 minutes to perform, in other words, even good monks it should take at least 5 minutes. And that was the end of today's lesson about the common sense of this world, Urian was surprised because he didn't know that, these people can't heal immediately, this time you're screwed. The blonde senior now understands, turns out he's a special student, the tall senior is angry because civilians can do that, and Jade can't act cool in front of Ella, already. Miss Hyewon watching a good game is enough. From the principal's office appeared in front of the students and said that students were forbidden to fight. The two sisters were surprised because they didn't know where she had appeared, thinking that she had been secretly observing us all this time. She looked at the two sisters. And with a mysterious smile, it seems there are many interesting students this year. She decided to forgive the students this time, because this was an admission ceremony like never before. Urian's side thanked her, but the seniors could not bear this humiliation and were determined to take revenge on these brats next time. In the dormitory, 
students have their own room, bed, wardrobe, table and chairs, fireplace, and full amenities. Urian was delighted, thinking this place was great. After having too much fun, he realized that Ella was not very happy. She said, she didn't know he was so talented, healing instantly, he never told her. He said that he didn't know it would be so wonderful. Ella thinks that Urian will definitely get into a great place after graduation, it feels like we will have to be apart in the future. Sister, I don't know what to say to comfort you. But suddenly she changed her attitude immediately, thinking that she wouldn't lose to him, because with him by her side, she could also get into the advanced class. Let's both say in unison, let's move forward together. On the first day of school, Moors, Hyewon asked the students if they had rested well. Introduce yourself as an advanced class teacher, I'm Hyewon, let's get along well. Hina was surprised, Hyewon she is a heroic citizen but Goliath thinks this is the privilege of the advanced class. Urian did not expect that the person yesterday was our homeroom teacher, a heroic citizen. Moors, Hyewon asked the class, do you think the bed is comfortable, you must like your private room very much, this luxury private room is only used for advanced classes. Or in other words, normal students won't be there, they don't have that privilege. From now on, the food, uniforms, and facilities are all the best and most wonderful, and this privilege is only available for advanced classes. If you can stay in the advanced classes until graduation, you will be envied and admired by others throughout your time in school, and both sisters will feel proud of themselves. Moors, Hyewon said, there is also a system called demotion. Students are admitted to advanced classes thanks to an entrance exam, but if their scores during the course are low, they will be downgraded from advanced to regular classes. You should remember that there were no students in the advanced class last year. I'm very curious to see how many of you can graduate from the advanced class. Urian is very excited and looking forward to that day. After briefly talking about school and studying, Moors, Urian started the lesson. A. Urian was extremely surprised. This is it. He thinks his start is quite good. The selected class is not evaluated according to relative criteria, but according to absolute criteria. After each school year, the number of students in the selected class will change. Selected classes are different from regular classes in that students from selected classes will receive huge support. You will have an extremely noble position after graduation. If your performance is bad, you will be demoted to a regular class. Urian entered the classroom. I had a stupid look on my face and couldn't answer the question. Then Chris was also called and couldn't answer. When no one could answer the teacher's question, she answered with an angry expression. Chris immediately raised his hand to ask a question. Why do we have to study math in a magic academy? She immediately asked him why he learned magic. He immediately answered, because he wanted to become a strong magician like his teachers and help the kingdom. The teacher said, the important thing to become strong is not magic or magical power, but what you need is knowledge about the world. Hannah with a surprised look on her face, what knowledge? She asked a question. You want this small fire to burn more intensely, so what should you do? Chers was interested and said I had to use more magic power. The teacher felt that what he said was very accurate. The teacher asked another question. So usually just using more magic power will make you stronger, right? So what if you can't use magic power? Hannah replied in a faltering voice. If we can't use magic power then we need the help of other magicians. That is also a way to create fire without using magic power. It is necessary to use the wind source. Because fire when exposed to wind will flare up fiercely. That is knowledge and also the reason why we don't just focus on magic power. So, everyone, you must absorb the knowledge being conveyed and take a test. Check to see what the answer is. Chris felt proud because he got two correct answers out of three questions. However, the person honored with a perfect score this time was Seruti. Hannah feels admiration for Seruti. Chris was stunned when the teacher read the name of the second person with a perfect score, Rezo. He expressed his attitude when Rezo received a perfect score. Seeing that, Rezo immediately stood up and asked, did he not get a perfect score? Rezo mocked him, you're from a noble background, you go to school early every day and work very hard, right? Although I don't have much ambition for rankings. But from tomorrow, remember to do it properly. Chris lowered his head, feeling embarrassed. The teacher announced that the last person to get a perfect score was Urian. 
Chris turned his face to show his attitude and asked about people's money. Ella also felt surprised when Urian received a perfect score. Urian chuckled proudly. He bragged, in my previous life, I was a high school student who suffered from the Korean extra classes. He was pleased and continued. He could calculate these questions in his head. Urian proudly said, at this school I am the best student. Goliath praised Yaria for being good and admired him. Jade put her trust in Urian in this test. The teacher gives rewards to those who get high scores. The teacher awarded the badges for the selected class to Urian and Ella. Just put the badge on and you can use everything in this school. For example, premium meals for students in selected classes. Urian and Ella were surprised to see a table full of meat. Ella told Urian, it was melting in her mouth and Ella wanted to take this class for the rest of her life. He replied, you can do it as long as you achieve good results. The teacher asked the kids if their meal was delicious. The teacher led the class and said that this was a class to evaluate the students' achievements. The worst case scenario was that they could be demoted, so they had to do well, you know. Urian said to Ella, Sister, you said this is the class that determines achievement. However, they are only first year students, their age can hunt for monsters on their own. Students pay attention and listen to the teacher explain what needs to be done. Saw spoke up, Oh, I miss you so much, my lovely juniors. Urian felt satisfied with what the teacher implemented. Saw spoke up with a boastful expression. If he reported to her that a junior disobeyed her, their achievements would be greatly affected. Urian, Ella and Jade looked scared. Jade advised Urian that it was best to listen to the students at this time. No matter what happens, I still have to stay in the selected class. Ella also really wants to stay in the class but is afraid that the Saw kids won't be obedient. Saw and his friends smiled triumphantly. Urian thought to himself that it was impossible to receive a low score. He had a flash of an idea. Speaking obediently and politely surprised Saw and his friends. Urian asked if they were betting. Saw spoke up, by the way, you dare to bet with us, what can a first year student do? Urian looked confident and said, let me show you guys what I can do. Urian immediately stood up and said, waiters, will you bet with us? Hearing that, the two of them were very angry, the blonde man angrily shouted, bet, these untouchables dare, what can first years do? Seeing him so angry, Urian's face hesitated, I will show my seniors what I can do now. Before he could finish his sentence, the blonde man angrily shouted, stop. Then he reached out and grabbed the weapon barrel. Throw it hard towards your group. That barrel of weapons just happened to fall right in front of the three of you. Pick up your sword and stick, the blonde guy shouted. The black-haired guy used his tongue to lick the sword, revealing a cunning and cruel expression, saying, this is a real sword, don't let it get hurt. The teachers wouldn't know if the injury was caused by a human or a monster. At this moment, all three of their faces were covered in sweat. Urian spoke up, mock battle. Your face is full of sweat and you look very scared, so tell us, are you using a real sword to fight with your seniors now? The blonde guy smiled cunningly and said that if he won, we would let them go, so don't be too scared, we're not bad people. We thanked them, contrary to the fearful expressions just now, on the three people's faces were now extremely happy, Urian and Ella's eyes were wide open with happiness, Jade even shed a few tears, I'm so excited, mom, I can study in an elite class. While Ella and Urian were happily talking and laughing, Urian, which sword should I use, anything is fine, he replied, but the other two just stood there dumbfounded as if they didn't know what was going on between them, the laughter of three people. These two guys seemed to be angered by their joy, the blonde guy said to the black-haired guy, let's play for real, okay, the black-haired guy replied. Suddenly a sword slashed strongly. Hey, the black-haired man used all his strength to swing his sword at Ella but she quickly blocked it. His face showed surprise and even anger. I thought I was going to cut the sword but that girl blocked my attack, so that means this untouchable had injected magic power into him, sword. After blocking that sword blow, Ella held the sword in a defensive stance, ready to fight. There was a look of caution in her eyes, last time too, let alone Urian, she couldn't even protect herself. In a moment of thought, Ella took a direct hit to the black-haired man's face. The reason is, because I can't calm down, now I'm absolutely not careless anymore, her eyes gradually became determined. It was that look that made the black-haired man panic, 
he quickly asked for help from his teammates, Nigger, and Magic for support. Hearing that, the blonde man used his magic stick to create a protective shield around the black-haired man. A black lightning flashed in the air. Jade was rushing behind the exhausted blonde man. Black lightning appeared from Jade's palm. Those lightning bolts caused the crystal head attached to the blonde man's magic staff to fly away. The blonde guy was now extremely scared, his stick. A magic sword, the other man exclaimed in surprise after seeing the powerful black magic sword summoned by Jade. Jade took back his sword, he happily said, it's an unwritten rule to deal with the magician first. Seeing that he couldn't win against them, the black-haired guy had to take the risk, that's it. I also dealt with the magician first, and then he grabbed his sword and rushed towards Urien's place. Ella also rushed after, I won't let you do that. A faint smile appeared on his lips. As Urien advanced, a black smoke emitted around him that looked very dangerous. The black-haired man's face was now pale, he stammered. Danger, Ella shouted. While Urien was still bewildered, behind him appeared a large hairy orange monster with sharp teeth and cruel eyes. It swung its huge claw towards Urien. Ella shouted Urien and immediately blocked in front of him. Red blood splattered everywhere. Ella was deeply scratched by the monster and then collapsed on Urien. Everything happened in a split second and Urien still couldn't calm down. Sister, he called Ella. Seeing Ella injured, Jade screams at Ella. He summoned the sword from his hand. Jade jumped high and summoned the second form of the demon sword. He quickly rushed down and used the spiral form of the demon sword to pierce a large hole in the demon beast's head. The monster's head was almost completely destroyed by Jade's last move. That head just happened to fall right in front of the black-haired man's face, causing him to step back in fear. Seeing that scene, the black-haired guy who had just looked down on him was now scared to the point of sweating, defeated in one shot, but that untouchable girl had already been injured by a monster. Just as he finished thinking, he turned around and saw Urien using healing magic to treat Ella. You made me so scared. Are you okay? Um, it doesn't hurt at all. After seeing that scene, the black-haired guy was so surprised that his chin was about to fall off. He was completely healed in an instant. This is the elite class. He looked at Urien and Jade who were gathered around to ask about Ella. Jade wanted to give her his vest but she was already wearing Urien's shirt. The black-haired guy gritted his teeth and shouted, You guys are crazy. Urien looked at him bewilderedly, especially I won't report anything negative, he said, is it that simple? Even though he lost, the black-haired guy still stubbornly shouted, but that untouchable kid over there, he was not recognized. The blonde guy who was standing to the side all this time also found a chance to talk after his teammate, his healing ability is indeed very good, but even so it still support magic, yes, idiot, it's over. Those two guys were so embarrassed that they became angry. So they used an unwilling face to say to Urien, you can't do anything by yourself, don't act like me, do you think you can catch monsters alone, you don't have not that good. When Ella heard those words, she angrily clenched her hands into fists, while Urien and Jade just laughed, the seniors were right. In a wooden house in the forest, hero resident Yewon sat on a wooden chair, closed his eyes, holding a cup of tea and spoke leisurely, this was not a collaborative class. The two people next to her immediately laughed and said, yes, it was suddenly changed, it was the first time it seemed like she didn't know it would happen like that sometimes, the girl holding the water said with a smile. Hyewon's eyes became hard, is that so, but it's okay to do that during class. The brown-haired teacher next to him could only smile and say, Muz, Hyewon, please just trust the excellent second years, the pink-haired teacher next to him raised his cup of tea and smiled, Professors also need to rest sometimes, right, right, but actually in her heart she was thinking, I am my father's money, but he said it was empty to me. Hyewon put the teacup on the table. Looking at the two people trying to cover up the matter, she thought about suddenly changing the theory class to a monster hunting class, and also shyly monitoring her, what was the purpose? Even so, on the outside she still appeared to have nothing on her face, raising the cup of tea in her hand, she calmly asked, Excellent second year students, my students won't be hurt, will they? The two people opposite heard that and trembled, their movements stopped slightly, the blonde teacher laughed, what was he injured? Hearing that, her eyes became even colder, she unconsciously tightened her grip on the cup in her hand, without saying a word, what should she do? 
yet she dared to touch her first students, should she applaud this boldness, or should she? Seeing her like that, the faces of the other two gradually became pale and scared. But then she calmly took a sip of tea, just wait, those kids are also an elite class. In another corner of the forest, a voice rang out, the clan uses the magic sword, are you jade? Surely, there are no untouchable brothers or sisters in this place. The other guy's question scared the black-haired guy and Jade to death. Both of them trembled. Yes I will definitely only bring Jade here. The black-haired man replied both fearfully and respectfully. Jade's eyes flashed with panic. Why did she suddenly call me here alone? Did something happen? Yes, it's been hard. The other guy spoke up. Jade, I have a good suggestion for you. The person who just spoke up is from the elite class second year number one ranking Leryl. He has golden eyes and hair. There are three people behind him, male, all four of them seem to be in bad shape. The second year of the Magic Academy is now known as, the Devil's Cave. The reason for the formation of that name was because of the second year's first place winner, his name was Leryl, the one who got first place in the entrance exam, Leryl used a disdainful attitude to utter the sentence, everyone, obey me. Everything happened at the entrance ceremony last year, two people standing there saw Leryl's attitude and laughed, don't be rude, do you think first place is good or something, we're also aristocrats, okay, what do you think a magic academy is? The number of students in last year's selection class originally had a total of 10 people, but that day, before he nearly beat to death all nine remaining people in the selection class, three people were allowed to stay in the chosen class because they surrendered while being beaten, the remaining six people refused to give in, so in the end, they all had to be hospitalized. So the current second year selected class had a total of four people, and they clearly defined each other's ranks. A male cousin looked so worried that he was sweating and wondered why all the second year students were gathered here. Leryl spoke up and said, Jade, before I came here, I had heard about your family. Jade still stood silently listening to him continue, the demon sword family is on the verge of weakening, and your small hands are carrying a very big mission. If you can't graduate from your chosen class, your family will perish, right? In a certain mansion, someone loudly said, what exactly is a magic tool? Why were people who couldn't use magic swords suddenly able to use swords with magic power? And all those words seemed to be said to blame Jade. Seeing that the other person had stopped, Jade raised her face and weakly said, Dad. Having said that, ever since magic swords appeared in the kingdom of magic wands that easily summon water, magic swords that create fire, my magic sword family has fallen into the brink of weakness. Jade's father, after raising his voice for a while, gasped and said, Jade. He reached out and placed his hand on Jade's shoulder and continued, Child. You must graduate from your chosen class, our demon sword family must prove that we still have power. This is mandatory, if you cannot graduate from your chosen class, then me, your mother and siblings, my entire family will die. Returning to the present, Leryl used a face with three parts contempt and seven parts Yang Ho to say to Jade, I will help you graduate from the selected class. Hearing him say that, Jade asked confusedly, what class did you choose to graduate from? Leryl continued, right now there are people with high and important positions you wouldn't expect watching this class. They gave us a mission, if you help us complete the mission, I will guarantee to help you graduate. For those people, graduating from their chosen class is an extremely trivial matter, Jade asked in surprise, really. Leryl replied, 100% correct, you just need to go to those two untouchable sisters and do what I tell you. This is much simpler than graduating from a selected class, I'm helping you because your family is in trouble. Jade opened her eyes wide because she couldn't believe what she heard because that's exactly what she wanted right now. Leryl said the last word, come on, this is your chance to show your filial piety, Jade. Coming to where Urien and his sisters were waiting, when Ella saw him, she immediately asked with concern, Jade, are you okay? Urien also asked, were you beaten? Ella happily walked up to Jade and asked, I've been waiting all this time but haven't seen you come back, we're very worried, Urien continued asking, where have the waiters gone? Perhaps, could it be that they told her how bad our teamwork was? Jade didn't answer a word but secretly performed magic. Urien noticed something strange so he immediately turned around. Seeing Jade preparing to attack Ella, he became worried and shouted, Sister, sister, Ella still didn't know she was about to be attacked and turned to answer her brother, why? 
a black aura descended to the ground and created a cage to imprison the sisters Ella and Urien. Urien was immediately upset. He glared at Jade and said, you're joking too much. Jade, he replied coldly, you should be careful, Urien. Because there is a large electric current circulating between the swords, if you even touch it lightly you won't be able to recover and you might even faint. Urien calmed down and said, you created them with magic swords, that's great. Jade didn't answer Urien but just said this, Urien, Ella, I'm sorry, but you two please stay there for now. He used a face full of blindness as he looked at Urien and her sisters, the seniors told me that this class could receive an individual rating. At any cost, I have to stay in the selected class, it's okay if untouchables like you two fail. When class is over, I'll come rescue you too, so, sorry. Jade, what the FCK are you doing, Jade? Urien spoke up helplessly at the words his friend had just uttered. Returning to the second year class, the noble Leryl looked at Jade with half an eye and said, Clearly I said, you cut off the arms and legs of those two commoners, right? Are you planning to go against the requests of those noble people? Jade's face is bruised everywhere from being beaten by Leryl. Leryl continued, You just need to leave them alone, chop their arms and legs off. Because it seems like those noble people don't even accept commoners to enroll in this magic university. The mission we were assigned was to assassinate them during this class. Moreover, the other teachers could not come to this place, they gathered the teachers in one place, because of this battle. Meaning, I have to complete this mission. We can't ruin their expectations, you have to save your family that is on the brink of destruction, right? This is your chance to show your filial piety, Jade. I don't understand, aren't you forced to graduate from your chosen class? So just because of those untouchables, Leryl had not finished speaking when Jade spoke up and said, they are not just untouchables. They are Ella and Urien. Still with that disdainful attitude, Leryl continued, you guys have only been in school for a day or two, I don't think it's been a few days and you guys have become so close to each other. Jade raised her hands and replied that it wasn't because we were close that I did that. It's because Ella deserves to be in the chosen class, because he is skilled in swordsmanship. As for Urien, he's really weak and has no magic talent. But he is very smart, surely in the future he will become a useful person in the process of building the kingdom. His healing ability is also excellent, later he will be recognized by many people and will treat many sick people. Jade put one hand on her thigh and gradually spoke more firmly, the future of the two of them was very bright. The two of them will have an extremely bright future, much better than new class discriminating aristocrats. Leryl used her eyes to say indifferently, the future is bright, yes, who knows what if it's true. He walked over and sat down face to face with Jade and said, your poor clan will be left with nothing but despair. Your family will be closer to destruction sooner, because I interfere with the noble noble's orders. Even your stupid, clueless younger brothers. Suddenly a memory of Jade and her two younger siblings appeared, starting with a loving call, Mr. Jade, Mr. Jade. Jade's two younger brothers with bright smiles on their lips ran to happily ask, hearing that he passed, I'm in the chosen class, and I'm still in third place, you're really good. Jade saw her sister running towards her and replied, Sade, Hazel. He patted his two younger brothers' heads and smiled brightly and said, Ha ha, are you good? Both of them replied, good. The little boy innocently said, So now, our father can smile again, right? Our family can be happy again, right? Faced with this question, Jade suddenly lost her smile and didn't know what to answer. But as an older brother, he still has to be happy so that his younger siblings can always be happy. Jade hugged them both and smiled and said, Ha ha, of course, just trust me. He will definitely graduate from the selected class. Jade's inner mind is now saying, Sade, Hazel, Dad. Leryl is trying to advise Jade that it's not too late. Jade, shake hands with me right now. Is there anything wrong with thinking about your family instead of the kingdom? Your younger siblings haven't committed any crimes. No matter how hard you try, today is still the death anniversary of the two of them, and there are no teachers here to save them. Wake up and kill those two sisters, I don't hate you. Let's live a successful aristocratic life together. Leryl had just finished speaking when Jade held out her hand, preparing to hold her own blood-stained hand. Jade seemed to have been deceived by Leryl's words, but no, Jade still maintained her reason and stance, 
bluntly pushed Leryl's hand away and stood up on her own. He firmly said, My friends and family, I will protect them all. Jade let out a sentence, Go away, I haven't given up yet. Leryl did not expect this and glared at Jade. He said, You will regret it. As soon as Jade finished speaking, she prepared to cast magic. Leryl, during the coordination class, the senior of the second year elite class came to assassinate Urian and Ella, who were commoners. Jade's palm emitted black energy that aimed at the approaching Leryl, who was fighting to protect Urian and Ella. Jade got into a fighting position. Jade didn't want to but had to admit it. Leryl is so strong. Leryl kept silent with cruel eyes as he approached Jade. He considered and accepted this situation. If he falls, Ella and Urian will be in danger. Leryl's voice exclaimed, Ten times stab you ten times and then I will go kill your other brothers, as he said that, his hand was holding a short sword, showing that he was dangerous. Jade was surprised when Leryl held a short sword in her hand, her face was full of wounds but her face still showed surprise. Leryl moved as fast as a sound wave, he advanced like a wind and aimed at Jade. At that moment, Jade's body couldn't move, he was sweating and worried that he might die here. Leryl stabbed Jade straight in the chest, but his face remained the same, the face of cruelty without hesitation when stabbing others. He arrogantly said, like a superior, I would naturally use a long sword. But you have to use a short probe to be able to see it up close. Coldly and cruelly throwing Jade like a bag of trash on the ground, there were nine times left for Jade to be able to withstand the stab wounds caused by Leryl. The two second years standing outside also cursed more, ahaha here again. Motion sealing ability. Every time I look at it, I tremble. We did not surrender from the beginning, but in the end we could only surrender helplessly. Leryl, he is not fighting. It should be called one-sided violence, punching and torturing the opponent, he threatened, after ten seconds I will stab again. With each count, Jade lay sprawled on the ground, clutching the wound caused by Leryl in pain, for a moment, her body could not move. He immediately deployed the magic sword from his palm. The fourth form of the magic sword's whip kept hitting Leryl. The demon sword swung forward, but Leryl could have just used one hand to block the attack with ease, just like that, the count ended. The ability to seal movement from Leryl is activated. Aiming at the kneeling jade deploying his magic sword. His body continued to be motionless, and Leryl gently stabbed the short sword into Jade's back. Pain ripped through her heart, pain appeared on Jade's face. He smiled happily and said, his expression was good. This time also count 10 seconds, he continued counting no matter how much Jade was in pain and didn't care about Jade's life or death. He came closer with each count. Unwilling to give in, Jade immediately used the third spear form, just like that, the black spears hit Leryl's body. The spears stabbed directly into Leryl's body, Leryl did not choose to block, but used his body to catch the incoming spears. The second years standing outside were laughing and mocking, hey, he's created so much damage, this year's first year is really great. Jade was still waiting for her attack to be successful, her eyes filled with hope. Capturing that expectation was the short sword thrust straight through Jade's palm. Leryl is still okay, not to say his body doesn't have a scratch, the sound of pain echoed continuously in the forest. He was still cold and counted every second to wait for his next stab. Meanwhile, turned towards Urian and Ella. Ella worriedly said, no matter what she said, it was monopolizing, interrupting Ella's words, Urian affirmed that Jade's words were a lie. Ella was worried, she asked if Jade was okay, did those seniors use violence again or... Urian reassures her that big guy or small guy will be fine. Urian pondered, not knowing what it was, but still felt worried in his heart, a bad premonition had just passed through. Jade seemed to be unable to bear it anymore, her whole body was injured, her body was exhausted and lifeless. He fell to the ground in front of the shaking big man standing there. The big guy couldn't say a word, sweat was beaded on his face. Leryl glared threateningly at the fat guy, if you're afraid, get out, we're here to kill you. Scared, the fat man's mouth only filled with a few words of apology. Jade was still lying there without moving anything. Leryl he indifferently asked Jade, hey is Jade still alive? Now I'm going to kill your brothers, in the end, it won't make any sense for you to stop me. You acted senselessly and caused your family to collapse. After the defeat, or not after the torture, 
He immediately said, No regrets, Jade, why did you become like this? Many of his ramblings are like blades stabbing straight into Jade's soul. Why did your family have to perish? Jade, please calm down now. Until now, you can still help with small things, let's go kill the commoners, Jade. Jade still lay there, but her mouth spoke out the analysis that she had experienced, the time to prevent movement was 5 seconds. And to use that ability again is 10 points, surprised when Jade learned about her ability. But what about Jade knowing Leryl's ability? Does it make any difference if he knows his ability? He wondered to himself. The scream, say it, echoed into space, the hand stabbed the short sword into Jade's arm. Jade screamed because of the pain she was receiving. And Leryl looked at Jade with cruel eyes. What is Jade's reason? Why don't you obey me? You have to graduate from an elite class. But even if your family really perishes, it won't matter, right? Why do we have to do this for the proles? Jade still had the courage to respond to him, asking why he didn't obey you. Why would I go to this extent for the proles? You don't have a true friend, do you? I can only tell you one pitiful sentence, the words touched the bottom of his heart. Leryl glared with anger, the short sword in his hand without a word stabbed straight down at Jade's body. He was angry and did not hesitate to stab the short sword down. Something seemed to rush towards me, making Leryl look away. It knocked away the short sword holding in Leryl's hand. Surprised because I don't know what's going on. Then a voice spoke up, what is this, monopolizing individual scores. From now on, stop acting, when did Urian appear, you even used healing magic to treat Jade. Jade didn't expect that Urian had come to save her, surprise appeared on her face. The two second years standing outside were also surprised by his instant recovery magic, they must have believed that the rumors about Jade were true. Urian did not hesitate to provoke them, the seniors over there. Don't think you can leave safely today, especially that guy who makes people uncomfortable. You better prepare yourself. The provocation just now successfully made Leryl's inner dog flare up. He held the short sword in his hand and thought, you idiot. But you came here and now I will kill you. He just rushed forward with the intention of being able to kill Urian. Just like that, Urian didn't show any emotion. His mouth curled up into a calculating smile. You idiot, you're going to your own death, then let me send you to heaven. The magic sword has the second form of a drill. You were so excited just then, Jade, is that an accelerated recovery skill, the blonde-haired crab said. Jade said with a serious face when she saw Urian coming. Urian, why did you come here? You should know how dangerous this place is. Urian worriedly told Jade that he was seriously injured, I have treated your wound, is there any pain left? Jade immediately replied that Urian was fine, his healing ability was great. Urian was happy, but fortunately, my sister was also in a safe place. Jade's face looked confused, princess, so lucky. How big and small are you two? It makes me feel like I'm being left out, Jade's face changed color. Urian then laughed loudly, saying that he was lonely, well said brother. Jade's face had clear panic and magic filled with murderous intent. He immediately told Urian to prepare to run away, that guy was much more dangerous than he thought. Urian angrily replied that I had just arrived. The blonde-haired crab saw that and shouted loudly, who allowed you to run, then he immediately took action. While he was acting, Jade thought he was using a holding technique again. Who is he keeping? Which of the two of us is he keeping? Jade's mind kept thinking. The crab blonde-haired guy was flying towards the two of them, who was he attacking? Jade frowned and looked in that direction, so fast, and hastily shouted, Demon Sword. Eighth form shield. But of course he controlled Jade's movements. The blonde-haired crab angrily said, a trash like you. At the same time, Urian calmly walked over and said, is this your sword? What a shame. Because he had to control himself, then no one could protect Urian. The blonde-haired guy immediately said you knew I would do this so before being controlled you created this shield, he shouted that you tried hard. Urian said angrily at this time, hey that guy with such a bad personality. The blonde-haired guy widened his eyes and couldn't hide his surprise. Urian continued to say, If you make a fool of yourself in front of me again, I will kill you before you realize what's going on. The guy with the blonde hair was shocked. What's going on? Why do I feel so cold down my spine? Urian quickly ran back to Jade. The healer is okay? Jade still didn't know what was going on and asked, 
why doesn't he attack anymore? I don't know what he's planning but this is my chance to attack him. Jade said to Urian, Urian, as I gave the signal. At the same time, the blonde crab guy angrily shouted, you bastards. Playtime is over, I'll kill you all in 10 minutes. At this moment, there were three faces in the background laughing loudly. He said we could kill them. Jade was startled, she forgot. I just kept thinking about stopping that guy and running away. But the remaining guys from the second year class were waiting for the right moment to kill us. Jade's face was filled with worry and panic. What should I do in this situation? In an instant, Jade's eyes became more determined and stronger, putting away those useless thoughts, knowing that fear won't help you at all. Think about how you can escape. Jade took action and reminded me to think. His eyes gradually became sharper and his mind was constantly reminding himself to brainstorm to think of a way to escape from here. At this moment, Urian suddenly spoke up, you did a great job, Jade. Immediately after that, a powerful beam of light hit Jade. Making him drowsy, he barely had time to sleep for an hour before collapsing. Urian had a surprised look on his face as he caught him and then exclaimed, oh my, what's wrong, Jade, are you okay? A grey-haired guy clutched his stomach and laughed loudly, he was so scared that he fainted. The blonde-haired crab felt something strange but still didn't understand what it was. On this side, Urian supported Jade and said happily, leave the rest to me, just rest, Jade. In another context, they are late. Aren't they together? Ricky held his chin and said in boredom, the first-year class chose Ricky as second place, change from Ricky to Ricky. Ella, who was standing next to Princess Seruti, heard that and immediately said, I, I also find it strange. Urian clearly said he'd be right back, but there was worry on Ella's face, surely nothing would happen, right? First year class chose sixth place Ella. The first year class chose Seruti as number one. She also said that we can't wait forever like this, let's go find him quickly. There was a sound of swearing on this side, damn it, they just ran away without even paying attention. The blonde-haired guy ran and shouted that he must catch them and kill them all, absolutely must not lose them. The juniors immediately responded, yes, yes. The blonde-haired crab was both confused and angry, how could that commoner leave the Chaji while carrying another person? You must find it and kill it. While he was angry, he suddenly saw something appear. The grey-haired junior saw this and shouted loudly, go away, we are on a mission from noble people. The thing that appeared wore a silver mask and said, thinking back, it's been a while since I've been physically active. He stood proudly in full body armor, silver mask and sword hanging on his back and said he would stretch his muscles a bit, I hope you guys don't go to the floor too soon. The blonde-haired crab's face was now filled with anger, I ask you again, who are you, this trash? The guy wearing the silver mask replied, me, I'm Yuri, but suddenly realized he said the wrong thing so he pretended to cough twice, the sword dancing genius, who else? The three men opposite had now lost all patience, they jumped up, swung their swords, and rushed towards the man in full armor. But this guy calmly replied that you must be very brave to say these things. The blonde-haired guy standing outside smirked. His subordinate Jen Kang, who first stood up against him, had the ability to punch and break a rock with his bare hands. Aello, the first guy to submit to me, is a stupid guy who is willing to stay under my command as long as he can kill people. The last name is Kelly, the weakest of the three, but a dog willing to fulfill his duty even if it means cutting off his limbs. All of them are my extremely excellent subordinates, they'll tear that bastard to pieces when he can't move. The blonde-haired guy was full of pride. You have such a big mouth, but that's all you get. That voice rang out along with the incomprehensible face of the blonde-haired crab. He glanced back at the direction where the fight had just occurred. His three subordinates are nestled in each large tree. He couldn't believe his eyes, these guys. The silver masked guy said to him, Oh yeah you can't disable my movements, don't play dirty anymore. Playing dirty, the blonde-haired crab widened his eyes in surprise. He was so angry that the tendons on his face appeared and then gritted his teeth and said this trash dog. But at this moment, the guy wearing the mysterious silver mask said, If someone else is talking, you should listen. The blonde-haired guy got angry and immediately took out his sword and stabbed in that direction, but was stopped and heard a provocative sentence from the guy wearing a silver mask, I already told him that it won't work with me. Not stopping there, the mask man added, oh, do you know what else to do this afternoon? 
that statement successfully made the blonde-haired crab guy crazy. His anger reached its peak. What, what the hell is this? Three people had their upper bodies stuffed into three logs? Well, let me tell you. Yurisu continued. You can't disable my transfer. Stop playing dirty. Leryl is angry. This trash dog. Yurisu touched the sword behind her back. Hey, if someone else is talking, listen. Leryl stabbed a sword, but the mask easily blocked it with two fingers. I already told you that it won't do anything to me. Yurisu was curious. Oh boy, do you know how to do anything else besides this move? Leryl trembled. What the, what the hell is this? He swung his sword and slashed wildly, screaming angrily. Why did you do that? I told you, disabling my movements won't help you win against me. Yurisu used her bare hands to break the blonde sword. Leryl looked at his sword broken in half and panicked. You're ranked first year second, right? Yurisu caressed the broken tip of her sword, really disappointed. Your performance is not even worth stretching my muscles. Leryl groped like a waterfall, scared. Suddenly a dangerous smile appeared. It's been four years since I used the long sword again. Leryl rushed forward with a long sword, but his mask was not at all guarded, and even let out a cry of feigned surprise, so should I expect from you? I told you it's not cool. Leryl poured magic into the long sword, why do you think, I only know how to stop your movements? The reason Leryl is ranked first year two is because he slashed through the mask, leaving a trail of blood. Yurisu looked at the blood on her shoulder. Leryl smiled and narrowed his eyes, because the speed was so terrifying that others couldn't catch up with their eyes. Last year, Leryl injured another male student, a violent incident at the entrance ceremony of the selected class. Along with three other male students lying in a pool of blood, the biggest reason why the magic school could not condemn him for his crimes. That's because of the Royal Magic School's jury meeting, he really had no humanity, but we have to accept his abilities, the royal family needs someone like Leryl. In this magic school that always lacks talent, Leryl carried the long sword on his shoulder with a proud look, you're good, try chasing me with your eyes. Speed is power, but your body is so stiff, I'm planning on cutting off your left arm. But you just bled, good luck. The mask looked down at his shoulder blades, ah, this is it, this isn't my blood. Leryl was surprised, what did you say? his whole body was bloody from a long cut on his chest. He looked down at his body. The mask retracted the sword behind his back. Sigh. He was finally able to stretch his muscles. He looked at Leryl falling to the ground and said. Leryl took the wound and raised his face with difficulty. I am a rare talent in the kingdom. If you attack me, it means you have attacked the kingdom. Mask of contempt. Does a murderer even know how to breathe those words? Leryl stabbed his sword into the shoulder of a male student who was beaten until his face was bruised. Then he ruthlessly pulled out his sword. Suddenly there was this call that startled Leryl. Fierce mask, nailing you to a tree won't be enough. Leryl looked up in fear, who are you? The mask holds a sword behind his back, if you know it you will die. Seruti asked a little cautiously, what is this magic? Ricky replied, Yuri Sung Gung. Seruti asked, is that the culprit of the incident when we entered school. Ricky used the wind to speed forward. Seruti turned around and called Ella, let's move quickly. Ricky suddenly stopped. Looking at Leryl lying on the ground in a pool of blood, the other person was clearly a first year second class. Ricky saw the mask standing right there and called out, Yuri Sung Gung. Yuri Zeu looked up, please, can you just call me Yuri Zeu? Ricky continued, First place second year Leryl doesn't do anything to you, Yuri Sung Gung, Yuri Zeu is angry, hey, you did that on purpose, right? You have such strength, why are you still killing students, Yuri Zeu is innocent, I didn't kill anyone. Ricky held the sword tightly in his hand, don't you want to say it, enough is enough. You use magic, then I will force you to say it. Yuri Zeu was full of interest, are you stronger than this guy? Ricky replied, if you still think of me the same as before, then you will regret it. You point your sword at Yuri Zeu, this time, I will use the power of the great wind spirit, so we. Yuri Zeu is curious, great soul, now remembers. Hersia stood with her hands clasped in prayer, demon king, dragon, or king of monsters, you can become anything you want. It is true that besides humans, there also exist other ethnic groups. Ricky swings his sword, oh great wind spirit, so we. 
A blue stream of power covered Ricky's body, rolling like a tornado. Please give me strength. Seeing that, Yurisu immediately became interested. It's so cool. Should I also prepare a similar awakening technique? Thousands of ice arrows shot quickly towards Yurisu. Ricky shouted, swinging his sword X-1000. Strips of wind fell from the sky onto Yurisu's body. He seemed to enjoy it quite a bit, very cool. Those wind bands gathered at one point, attacking Yurisu. He gently shook the sword in his hand. Slash one shot towards the wind gathering point. Do you think you can beat me with these moves? Ricky's sword flashed blue light. While he was absent-minded, it was now. I will finish him off, with a fatal blow. Yurisu watched Ricky gather magic power into a hurricane. Oh, this is spreadable. So let me ask you a question. What are the two words that you will see? Yuri Sung Gung spoke up. This is a question for you. What are the two words you saw? Ricky appeared with sharp eyes. Sung Gung hit Ricky on the head. Ricky spoke up. You sneaked up on me again. Sung Gung counted. After all you are five years better than us. The senior class for the first year select class has been cancelled. The suspect in the attack on the nobility during the entrance exam returned to Yeongung and attacked the practitioners. Teacher Hyewon walked up the stairs. Then go to Principal Majess room. Principal Marges called Hai Won. Hai Won asked, have you received the report yet? The principal answered her, while the teachers called her over, I heard that incident. They stopped me from going to the scene on March 20, 2024. The principal replied that she was not the one who could catch him. Hai Won replied, I can only stand still and do nothing. I never thought my student would get hurt. And I think giving orders to a teacher is the job of a senior person. The principal explained that I also agreed with her. I think Jin Biop is also a high-ranking noble. Hye Won stood still, then got angry when the principal did not agree with her suggestion. The principal was stunned and sat still. I hope you are not involved in this matter. Principal Marges was angry and called M's. Hai Won's name. You are not the only one who feels this unpleasant feeling. I used to be very angry when I saw my student injured. Hai Won was angry. Marges swears I have nothing to do with this incident. I think the teachers who stopped you were instigated from the outside. I'm trying my best to interrogate them. Hai Won responded. I investigated the second year class because Yeongung attacked the students of my class and now the students are being treated. The teacher's voice rang out. I will investigate further after the students are recovered. The teacher thought, Yuri Sungung, is he a spy sent by the empire? The principal spoke up, it has not been verified yet but we will quickly clarify this incident. The evil Yurungung hides in the school. Yurian is happily eating and drinking. Ella told Yurian to try this. It's a bit cold but it's delicious, it's so sweet. Yurian thought he wouldn't be able to drop out of the advanced class because of this. Students were injured in school, but who would force them to participate in this dangerous class? Chris criticized, not classy at all, a bunch of low-class people, Rezo continued, they speak so uneducatedly. Chris cried, it's swollen, isn't it? Rezo immediately replied that I have contacted the hospital and you can be admitted. Hannah told me I heard you were attacked by an intruder, are you okay? Mew said he really wanted to follow. Asia looked foolish and raised her eyes to call her sister. Jade called Yurian, so happy. Both of you are safe, Yurian replied. Ah, Jade are you okay? Jade replied that it was okay. She was a little tired but her body was fine. Ella emotionally told Ella Jade, you said you would sacrifice yourself to protect us. Don't say that in the future, we have to overcome difficulties together, we are important friends to each other. He replied, is it important? Let's get together later. Before we could finish speaking, Yurian interrupted Jade and ranked Ella's importance. Jade looked happy. The students are gathering to eat. Yurian remained in the selected class. The principal announced that student with special abilities, Yurian, if you fail this exam, you will be expelled. Yurian looked worried, then. Instead, you should enroll as a magic student with the condition that if you get a low score you will be expelled, but I believe that if it were you, this exam would be passed easily. Yurian immediately replied yes, principal, then I will explain more. This midterm exam of the Royal Magic Academy this time is a high-level monster hunting exam. Please enter the forest of the exam and if you get 20 points, you will be able to pass. The fresh natural scenery blends with the principal's explanations. Rezo asked, 
20 points, what is that? Really annoying. The principal spoke up, what a great question, student Razo. Monsters will be divided into five levels, monsters like wolves, bears, and tigers are level one. Monsters in the form of weapons such as swords, bows, arrows, and axes are level two. Monsters in the form of natural disasters such as storms, heavy rains, and earthquakes are level three. Monsters in the form of illnesses such as headaches and depression are level four. And level five is something that there is only one thing in the world, time. Surely you have also realized that the greater the monster's power, the higher its ability to kill people. I don't know why it has to do with humans, but one thing is for sure, monsters are humanity's enemies. Urian thought to himself, interesting. Razor looked angry, but what is 20 points? The principal continued to say, very good question, student Razo. Level 1 will be 2 points, level 2 will be 5 points, so I don't need to explain in detail. Goliath spoke up and went hunting to get 20 points. The principal added that the time limit is 5 days, note that this is an individual contest, please prove that you are a student of the selected class. Urian thought to himself, yeah, this is an individual contest, if I want to imitate them without having my strength detected, if level 2 gets 5 points, I'll secretly catch 4 of them. Seer asked, how many points is level 3? The principal explained, among the first year students, I was the third person to ask this question. Level 3 will be 20 points, but if you encounter level 3, run immediately. Teacher Ryanby appears, high school does not meet the standards of students. I will take over this exam, Moors, G smiled and greeted student Urian. Moors, Hyewon spoke up. This time no one will be able to stop me, not Yerungung or other monsters. Since I will directly manage this competition, please focus on the competition. Urian looked a bit worried. At the Royal Magic Academy, the midterm exam is taking place. The first exam is monster hunting. Principal Marges is on the second floor announcing the exam rules and scoring method to the students. Level 1 is 2 points. Level 1 is 2 points. Level 1 is 2 points. Level 2 is 5 points. Accumulate 20 points to pass. Urian looks quite shy. It sounds easy. But this exam, there are many eyes watching this exam. Three of them you have to be careful of a heroic resident Hyewon, teacher Ryanbi and Moos, Ji Yi respectively. Especially heroic resident Hyewon, who always has sharp eyes. While Urian was still thinking, Chris came to make trouble with a provocative expression, hello special student, you know this is an individual exam, right? He used a disdainful and mocking attitude towards you. But someone like you who only knows healing magic can't save 20 points alone, right? Urian was too lazy to compare with him, so he just laughed ha ha ha, but Ella didn't want to hold back, Urian, don't worry, I will find every way to help you. Ha ha thank you, you're still smiling. Him on the contrary, it's also very good, his face looks very bright, not the slightest bit worried about the upcoming exam. The principal, a man with white shoes and pants walked in. It's Mr. Ryan B., you came to tell the principal, I have brought the students to the designated location. It's hard for the teacher, Principal Marges replied while walking around the room. In addition, there was also Moos, Ge in the room who was connecting magic balls to observe the candidates participating in this exam. The ball in Moos, Ge's hand gradually brightened. Inside the sphere gradually appeared the image of Princess Seruti. Principal, I have finished linking the magic ball item, Moos, Ge happily said to the principal, Next, all the spheres under her hand gradually appeared with images of students, you have worked hard, he said gently. Principal Marges held a globe in his hand with an expectant face, which student will complete this test first. A teacher next to him immediately spoke up, it must be the princess, doesn't the princess have natural talent? Riki, teacher Ryanby spoke up to remind him, after saying that, he picked up another ball, this one is also very excellent. This year's first year students are all very talented, Moos, Ji Yi said. So what about this special student? The teacher spoke up earlier. Teacher Jerry said with disdainful eyes, special student, you are talking about that untouchable, how can he be ranked first? I see he can't even complete the test, then he will be expelled, let's get out of here. Moos, Ji Yi's eyes showed concern, she panicked and said, no, Urian has to study at this school. I haven't even seen her instant healing technique yet. If he wanted to know if he could complete the exam, 
resident hero Hye Won calmly held up a ball. So just keep following. In the sphere, Yurian's image gradually appeared. In the competition area, Yurian seemed helpless. Don't follow me like that. He looked up at the orb that looked like an eye shining out golden light above his head. He looked at it and thought about how not to be exposed. If I don't get 20 points, I will be expelled. I have to pass this test to not be exposed. But, what should I do? I need to think for a moment. His eyes looked intently. Urian jumped high with a face full of confidence and cast a spell that made a ring of golden light appear from his hand. Instant healing isn't a very strong skill in this world, right? Hmm, but that's just your imagination. How can you compare the standard of strength to recovery magic? Urian was so lost in thought that he didn't notice that a giant rat monster had appeared behind him, aiming for him. How disgusting, he turned towards it and said. It seemed that this sentence had angered the monster. It opened its huge, disgusting mouth and rushed towards him. Urian looked towards the magical eyeball. Then he used his magic staff to launch a water cannon in the direction of the giant rat. The blue water spout sprayed out and a brilliant rainbow appeared. Ah ah, that water spout is always beautiful when it appears, Muz, Ji Yi said excitedly. Teacher Jerry held up a blue ball. He was quite surprised by Urian. He didn't expect that there was a student who could use my magic items so skillfully. Master Ryan B and resident hero Hye Won seemed quite satisfied with his last move. He commented that the magic power that demonstrated that skill was good, but the power was not strong enough. On Urian's side, the other mouse was completely drenched by his last move, its fur drooped down, covered in water. Already soaked to the bone, he pretended to be happy and cheered. But in his heart he was secretly calculating, as expected, this level was still not enough to kill, but still. He was scared when he first used his power, he remembered the first time he used his power, a boy with panicked eyes and uncontrolled magic in his hands. Now, I have used several times more force than before, that is, showing a certain level of strength, if exposed, I will not be killed, he silently calculated. Behind the tree, two more rat monsters appeared, they looked at Urian with hungry eyes as if they were looking at a delicious and lucrative prey. In the middle of the forest, Urian was alone surrounded by three giant rat monsters that were targeting him. As if he had finished thinking, he smiled triumphantly. So to what extent should you show your strength? How much is enough? Let me not be punished. At this moment, from behind the mouse appeared, then another sword-shaped monster appeared. Urian's eyes widened in surprise. Sword-shaped demon. Before his eyes was now a sword-shaped demon with sword-shaped arms and lower body, its body was a set of ribs with a pair of black wings, its head was a black loincloth with red eyes. Countless attacks released from the two hands of the sword demon beast slashed at the rat demon beast, causing it to disintegrate. While Urian was still bewildered, each of those slashes approached right in front of him. Those attacks cut through the two rat monsters and then hit the ground, causing the ground to crack into many cracks. In the teacher's room, resident hero Hye Won, teacher Ryan B and the blonde teacher all held up Urian's orb. The atmosphere in the room seemed to have cooled down quite a bit, everyone was worried about him. The attack just now filled the ground with smoke and dust. But fortunately Urian is still safe, he holds his wand in his hand, around him radiates the orange light of healing magic. Seeing it, Mu's Ji Yi was both happy and excited, Ha ha healed in the blink of an eye, as for Mr. Jerry, he rubbed his chin, he stood to the side holding Urian's ball and observed, even though he was attacked from the front, he was still not injured. Urian doesn't look scared at all right now, he's still thinking about Ella, middle school is this level, five points right, she's probably getting a lot of points right now, right? In another part of the forest, where light shines through the tall trees. Ella, be careful, it's middle school, Ella and Jade were in a defensive position, Jade looked quite tense. Ella was a bit surprised, it looked like an axe, quickly deal with it and go find Urian, she's alone, Jade reminded her. The monster's axe-shaped arm was reaching out to attack them. Both of their pupils constricted, as if they were seeing something very terrible. The demon swung his axe at the two people, but Jade used his magic sword to block it, black and purple thunder appeared in the air from the two forces confronting each other. Jade was quite surprised with the power of this magical beast. What kind of power is that? He didn't expect a monster to be so strong. This power is making him gradually weaken. 
Just when Jade was about to succumb, Ella stood up with him. His eyes filled with surprise, Ella. In front is the demon's attack. On one side is Jade's bewildered face and on the other side is Ella's determined face. Jade seemed to have regained his composure, he frowned and concentrated. Then use all of Ella's magic to destroy that attack. Temporarily out of danger, Jade turned to Ella and said, Thank you, Ella. Thanks to you blocking that attack. I'm okay. We are friends, she replied. Jade was extremely happy when she heard that. Her cheeks turned pink and she turned to her. Yes, as for Con, she was looking intently at her trembling hands. My hands were still shaking. Ella looked at her hand worriedly. Level 2 is much stronger than level 1. If Urian is attacked by level 2, he won't be able to heal and will be injured. After saying that, she clasped her hands in front of her chest as if she had made up her mind. Ella's eyes became determined and said to Jade, let's quickly solve it and find Urian. Jade saw her suddenly so determined and was suddenly stunned. But she quickly regained her spirit, summoned the magic sword and Ella was ready to fight. Well, if she was alone, keeping score would be very difficult. Jade and Ella just encountered a level 2 monster, those two already have confidence, even so, in front of them, the ghost didn't seem to weaken at all. You say it confidently and eloquently, but the two of you still have to sweat in front of this monster, it's strong but you can still block it, Jade thought to herself, I really want to see if it can withstand my new attack. But now those two faced despair, the wind blew forcing them to look up, but once they looked, there was only helplessness and fear in their eyes. Above the level 2 axe monster, a level 3 tornado appeared. At the academy, teachers stood scattered throughout the hallways, each holding a magic ball in their hand to monitor the monster hunting exam. The magic ball can freely track each student it wants to see. The teachers were all very focused watching the competition through the magic ball. But at this moment, an incident happened, the magic bridge suddenly cracked apart, the crack continued to extend. Miss Ji Yi cried out in horror, oh, what is this? Principal Marjas said nothing, he was frowning and staring at the magic ball in his hand, suddenly there was a scream from outside, reporting, areas A2, B3, C1 have appeared level 3 monsters. Teacher Jerry raised his head when he heard that, he couldn't believe it, high school, there are high school monsters appearing in all three areas. This is so strange, Principal Marjas thought thoughtfully, his eyebrows curled even tighter together. This is the test forest for first years, only levels 1 and 2 appear, but today level 3 appeared, a rare incident. The principal thought for a moment then stood up and called out in a serious voice, Gar Ryan B, Jerry, Hyewon. He ordered everyone to go to the area where level 3 monsters appeared. Those students are the future of this kingdom, we must protect them. Inside the inspection forest, the level 3 monster in the form of a natural disaster tornado is getting stronger and stronger, and the screams are constantly ringing out. Ella's eyes opened wide, her face pale and scared as she looked at the monster in front of her, she thought in panic, what is going on? This is a level 3 monster. Looking at the terrifying level 3 monster in front of her, Ella thought in confusion, where should she attack it from? Seeing Elle absent-minded, Jade next to her suddenly shouted, Ella, focus. He looked at Ella, smiled, and said reassuringly, the teachers will be here soon, we have to be careful until they arrive. Hearing Jade say that, Ella's heart was still hot like fire, but she still smiled and said yes, not letting Jade worry. Urian, will Urian be okay? Ella muttered this sentence under her breath. But in the current situation, Ella cannot separate herself. The level 3 tornado monster has begun to act, hurricanes are rising everywhere, Ella screams in terror, her body is being lifted up. Jade felt bad, he stuck his magic sword into the ground, reached out to Ella and shouted, Ella, hold my hand, the wind is too strong, Ella quickly responded with a jade cry. She tried to get me out. It was very difficult for both of them to hold each other's hands, Jade in front shouted, hold on tight. Jade held the sword tightly in her hand, gritting her teeth against the storm created by the level 3 monster. But at this moment, Jade's eyes suddenly opened wide, looking at the scene in front of her in horror. I don't know who shouted the words, get away, following that voice, a sword-shaped monster suddenly appeared and slashed. The slash carried immense power, tearing through the storm, sending Jade and Ella flying in one direction, 
both of them cried out in pain. At this moment, the sky suddenly started to rain heavily, the two of them were knocked down to a corner not far away, Jade struggled to get up and cried out worriedly, Ella, are you okay? Ella couldn't sit up at this time, so she just replied softly. Jade looked up and suddenly exclaimed in doubt. I only see two sides, one is a level 3 natural disaster monster, the other is a level 2 sword monster, this situation is about avoiding a melon shell and a coconut shell. The two struggled to sit up straight, warily looking at the two monsters in front of them. Jade and Ella both clutched their weapons tightly in their hands. Seizing the right opportunity, both of them rushed forward, if we want to run, we will have to break through this defense line, both thought to themselves. The sword monster didn't bother to move and looked at the kids below. Jade raised her eyes to look at it, the magic sword in her hand began to strike out. He created a spell, then shouted loudly, magic sword, eighth form, protection, as soon as he finished speaking, a shield was quickly formed, blocking his body and that terrible monster. Jade curled her mouth and said silently, sure enough, just enough to block it. Without wasting any time, the sword in Elle's hand immediately struck. She jumped high, then quickly slashed her sword straight down on the sword-shaped monster's body. The sword move carries enormous power, slashing forward with a roar, each chilling electric spark sends chills down one's spine. The sword attack ended, Ella fell to the ground, she gritted her teeth and clicked. This power is still not enough, the sword monster still stands there, not the slightest bit damaged. Jade rushed up to stand next to her, worriedly asking, are you okay? Ella's face was now drenched in sweat, softly calling Jade. Jade looked warily at the two monsters, as if she was thinking about something. He remembered his mother, she kindly stood in front of him, softly asking, Jade, is that true? Are you going to sacrifice yourself to protect the family? Jade then calmly replied, I'm okay, because my family is not afraid of anything. When his mother heard this sentence, she frowned tightly. A moment later, she said softly, Jade, you don't have to do that. There is no need to sacrifice for the family. Use your power to protect your kingdom, friends and yourself. Don't worry about your family, because that is the mission of those who hold the magic sword. Mom, Jade called softly. He raised his eyes to look at the two terrible monsters in front of him. I thought to myself, actually, when confronting Leryl, I didn't use all my strength. If I attack the noble noble, the family will be affected, but if I just ignore Leryl, I will lose my friend, me. Therefore, if only I sacrifice myself, it will be okay. But at this moment, Urian's voice suddenly rang in his ears, he was injured. Then there was constant worry in Ella's eyes, if he died protecting us. Or the two kids always smiled brightly at him and told him not to get hurt. Fragmented memories appeared in Jade's head. Jade found that he had never been as calm as he was now, he stood up straight and shouted softly, the first demon sword technique, with amazing power, slashed straight and rushed towards the monster sword. Looking at this scene, Ella thought in horror, what is that? What weapon is he using? Why can't I see it? Jade, he's so good. Ella looked at Jade firmly in front of her, silently admiring. At this moment, the natural disaster monster seemed to feel abandoned and suddenly let out a long scream. Ella be careful. Jade shouted in panic. Ella followed the sound and turned her head to look. I only saw that the natural disaster monster tornado had begun to act. Hurricanes arose in all four directions, blowing both Jade and Ella high into the air. Both were terrified, completely unable to believe their eyes and exclaimed, what is this? Just because of a gust of wind, people can fly so high. If I fall down, Ella thought to herself. If I fall down from this distance, absolutely. She didn't dare to think about her own fate, but in this precarious situation, Urian suddenly appeared from nowhere, not knowing what magic Yuri used, Ella and Jade replied very gently, to the ground. Ella couldn't believe it, calling suspiciously, Urian, while Jade next to her landed on her head, letting out a soft cry. Urian did not answer Ella, he looked at the tornado natural disaster monster in front of him, smiled and thought, is this a high school thing? Behind Jade sat up, he rubbed his head, called out, Urian, luckily you weren't hurt, the teachers are coming, let's buy some time until then. Urian didn't answer right away, he raised his eyes to look at the tornado natural disaster monster in front of him, then said softly, 
That's 20 points, right? Let's catch all three. Urian looked at Ella and Jade and said calmly. Hearing this sentence, Jade thought in horror, did he really do it? How could he look at that thing and say that? Ella, who was next to her, thought both happily and sadly, a person who only knows how to be afraid like me feels so ashamed, Urian certainly has something much greater than me. Urian was no longer in the mood to pay attention to the strange expressions of the two people behind him, at this moment, his mind was full of the desirable number of 20 points, he had to stay in the class to choose. Right now Urian is stuck between three level 1, 2 and 3 monsters. Can use power to a certain extent to not be detected, Urian thought, he looked at the sword monster. Then turned his gaze to the level 1 rat monster. Urian gave a very calm smile, then, what is the level? The magic ball above had cracked a large piece, still constantly watching the animal hunting contest below. Urian raised his eyes and looked up, making a sound of doubt. But at that moment, the magic ball suddenly exploded. Urian silently said in horror, what, what, it broke, so now, no one in the school can see what I do. What's going on? Urian thought with a sweat. Since when has the level 1 rat monster been approaching him? It raised its two hands with sharp claws high up, able to snap down and rip Yuri apart at any time, when? Urian was extremely quick. Realizing that he was no longer being followed, he did not bother to hide his strength. With a wave of his hand, a stream of power shot out and rushed straight towards the rat monster. Urian said softly, I will say that. The live rat monster's head was chopped off, blood splashed everywhere, he completely lost his balance and fell straight to the ground. Looking at this scene, the sword monster was extremely frightened. Urian said lightly, I really don't have any stimulation for you at all, it's true that no one can see it. So, now I don't need you anymore, Urian said with one hand in his pocket and the other scratching his head. Since there are no followers, there is no need to test the strength. You understand what I mean, right? Urian looked straight into the bloodshot eyes of the sword monster and asked. Realizing that this monster couldn't speak at all, Urian let out a breath and exclaimed, Oh, I'm talking to myself again. As soon as these words ended, a loud bang rang out and the sword monster in front of him shattered on the spot. Urian brushed his shoulders, smiled and said, Ah, I'm so relieved that I tried my best without paying attention to anyone. While talking about this, a wind-piercing whirring sound came from afar. Urian cautiously looked towards the direction of the sound, coldly asking, Who is it? At the academy, the cracked magic ball was completely neutralized. Principal Marges frowned and said, Gee, Please quickly restore the sphere to observe it as soon as possible. Moors, Ji Yi did not dare to relax for a second. Her hands kept moving back and forth on the sphere, nodding and replying, yes yes. Moors, Ji Yi's face was covered in sweat. She thought to herself, what kind of magic tools were broken at the same time? After all it was a level 3 monster, how strange. The repair of magic tools is also not normal. What is going on at the scene? Inside the forest to check. Urian was observing the tornado monster, he suddenly asked, so it's a level 3 monster, should the three of us try to catch it? The two people, Ella and Jade, thought they heard wrong, sweating and looking at Urian. At this moment, the tornado monster suddenly opened its mouth and blew. The whirlwind rushed out with the sound of blowing. Jade looked at the scene before her in horror without blinking. Without realizing it, he was blown up by a whirlwind, then was mercilessly thrown downwards. Ella cried out in panic, Ya, yeah, Jade. Jade did not answer her, but stabilized her body and stood firmly in place. Then he curled his mouth and said, That's really strong. Jade was completely unharmed. He looked up at Urian and said happily, Urian, your healing magic is perfect. Urian didn't answer, just smiled brightly. The opposite side, Jade thought, So that's it Urian, capture what Urian said, doesn't mean kill. Not wanting to waste any more time, Jade jumped up, smiling and calling, let's go, Ella, Ella nodded and replied, okay. The two gathered their strength to overcome the strong wind and move towards the tornado monster, only then did they realize that the true meaning of, catch, is to persevere with determination to defeat it. According to my body's feelings, it was impossible to escape from level 3 monsters. If you run away carelessly, you may be hurt more. So, let's unite and be determined to defeat the monster, that's what it means, right Urian, Ella asked. Urian was still standing firmly in the raging wind. 
He heard the question and opened his eyes, silently saying, Oh that's wrong. Urian crossed his arms and thought to himself, I should have run away to lure it along. If I had run away to a place where no one would see me and then defeated it, I would have received 20 points. At this moment, Jade and Ella had already swung their swords and slashed straight at the tornado monster. Urian looked at the two of them and said softly, In a situation like this with two people here, how can I handle it? It's really complicated, there. Urian had just said this. Riki didn't know how long he had been running here. A layer of crackling electric fire appeared around his body. Riki said in a cold voice, God please give me strength, storm of swords. As soon as these words finished, a giant cold sword appeared in Riki's hand, he shouted loudly and aimed, the tip of the sword pointed straight at the target in front of him. With the correct angle, Riki shouted a shot. The sword followed his control, rushing straight forward at an unimaginable speed. The powerful, unstoppable sword light pierced through the tornado monster's body, creating a large hole right in front of its chest. Jade and Ella raised their eyes to see this scene, unexpectedly but had the same thought, he didn't run away even when faced with high school. Riki retracted his sword and said calmly, that was the decisive fighting spirit of the night. Ella said admiringly, so you've defeated a level 3 monster, Urian stood behind, gritting his teeth and thinking, oh, my 20 points. Jade didn't know when he got close to Riki, he bent down slightly, frowned unhappily and said, hey, you took it down alone. We can defeat it together, don't try to show off your talent in front of Ella, Jade angrily scolded, Ella saw that and quickly stopped, wait, wait Jade. Urian squatted down, also sadly lamenting, really, what's wrong with you, I just want to get the points together. Riki glanced at Urian and said faintly, I'm very willing to give you that score. Urian's eyes glowed, and he quickly shouted, really, of course, Riki replied, giving points to talented people who are useful to the kingdom, I have absolutely no regrets at all. In Riki's mind, the image of Yuri Sungbing appeared, he sadly lamented that if it were him last year, he would have ignored it, but after that time. Thinking of this, Riki looked straight into Yuri's eyes, not knowing if he realized anything or not, but his voice was very serious, please prove it. That you really have such ability, I will give those 20 points to you, is that okay? This year the common people seem to be different, a girl with talent in swordsmanship and a girl with talent in magic, and a genius in swordsmanship that no one knows about. If there really is a special student with such talent, I want to correct him before he goes down the wrong path, Riki thought. At this moment, a cold, dark voice suddenly rang out behind Riki, are you the one who took down my high school friend, a hideous monster appeared who knows when. Riki, Jade and Ella were frightened when they heard this voice, their spines covered in cold sweat. But the monster continued to moan, I don't want to die, I will take action. As soon as these words ended, the three people, Ella, Jade and Riki, could not control themselves and pointed the swords in their hands directly at their necks, all three of them turned pale because of this action of theirs, but could not resist. Fresh blood suddenly splattered everywhere, Urian standing next to him was completely unaffected by that control, he was startled and thought, who is this? Urian angrily stepped forward to protect the three people, using healing skills to instantly heal their wounds. Urian raised his eyes to look at the monster that had just appeared, without hesitation he asked, hey, who are you? Damn it, he didn't even bother to look at the brat in front of him, he said darkly, the power to make people commit suicide, I am level 4 melancholy. A monster stood behind Riki, coldly asking, are you the one who killed that high school guy? The three people, Riki, Jade and Ella, were horrified to discover that they couldn't blink, something was appearing. The atmosphere around here is becoming extremely heavy. At this moment, the melancholy monster continued to speak, I don't want to die. Riki's pupils did not listen to his body's control and suddenly widened. The three people, Riki, Jade and Ella, simultaneously brought the sharp swords to their necks. Suddenly, hot blood splashed everywhere, Urian was not under the monster's control, he witnessed all this scene, was stunned for a long time, and then softly called out, sister. Urian reacted very quickly, rushing out to block the three people who had just committed suicide, using healing skills to quickly heal them, he raised his eyes to look at the hideous monster in front of him. Urian asked coldly, hey, who are you? 
The monster looked down at Urien as if he were looking at a lowly creature with no resistance, and said faintly, the power that makes people commit suicide, I am level 4 melancholy. In the background, Jade, after being healed, began to gasp for air. Ella sat next to her, trembling non-stop, completely unable to understand what was going on. Riki hugged his neck, a thin layer of sweat broke out all over his body, he thought in horror, what just happened? I just used a sword to cut off my own head. But the monster started acting strangely. Urien stared at it, his eyebrows slightly frowned, silently saying, level 4 melancholy. The melancholy monster laughed a few times, seemingly surprised at the brat in front of him and said, oh ho, you don't want to commit suicide. Urien took a few steps back in horror, exclaiming, hey, don't you think the question is strange? Not at all, the melancholy monster calmly replied, isn't suicide a normal thing for humans? Hearing this sentence, Urien gave a somewhat distorted smile, he asked, is that true? As soon as the question left his mouth, a voice suddenly rang out behind Urien, hey special student, no Urien, Riki patted your shoulder, frowned and continued, I recognize your ability. Speedy healing skills, from self-inflicted wounds to mental attacks, all have been healed, Urien's healing skills are extremely necessary for the kingdom, Riki thought to himself. Deciding very quickly, Riki stepped forward to block Urien, he held the sword firmly in his hand, warily looking at the sad monster, his words were very firm, I will definitely protect you. Riki's eyebrows tightened, a layer of brilliant power began to flow around his body, Riki shouted softly, the great spirit blessed him. As soon as the words ended, the surrounding forest began to be covered with a layer of blinding light, strong winds arose in all four directions, Riki still stood firmly in the center of that light, his back straight and uneven, the clown trembled in fear when facing a level 4 melancholy monster, the melancholy monster looked at this scene and asked with some amusement, oh ho, are you under the guardianship of a great jinn? Riki heard this sentence and scolded him angrily, just a lowly monster, dare to mention such a big thing. Jade stood in the light and wind, trying very hard to stand, he silently said the word wind god, in his heart he thought, can communicate, monsters talk, monsters have intelligence and recognition, this consciousness is clearly level 4. The melancholy monster did not take these tricks into his eyes, he said lightly, you must die. Riki was confused and thought to himself, how could a level 4 monster appear here? Just thinking like that, the melancholy monster had approached him without realizing it, baring its hideous teeth, speaking coldly, not wanting to die. When Riki heard this voice, he couldn't help but point the cold sword straight at his throat. Ella and Jade could not avoid it, simultaneously placing their sharp swords on their necks. Fresh blood followed the wave of the melancholy monster's hand and splashed out. Urien couldn't look anymore, he put his hands in his pockets, not too fast or too slow, he said, you, stop it. The melancholy monster heard this voice and actually stopped moving, it turned its head with three disgusting faces to look at Urien. Urien didn't bother to pay attention to it, he continued to use healing to heal the other three people, the monster said gloomily, not wanting to die, it was not a coincidence or any miracle, I will add you are on target. Urien ignored this threat and ran quickly to help Ella up and heal her wound. The melancholy monster quietly approached Urien's back, it opened its mouth full of teeth, and said faintly, I will kill you, you have hindered my plan. At this moment, a stiff voice rang out, no way. Riki tightly grasped the sword in his hand, resolutely saying, no matter what, we must save him. After saying this, Riki wondered again, Urien is holding off an attack from a level 4 monster, his ability to resist what's with that huge magical power of his. Urien heard Riki say that and immediately turned around to applaud, are you okay? As expected, you ranked second. Riki didn't answer Urien, he was immersed in his own thoughts, his speedy healing skills attack the damage of level 4 monsters, each ability surpasses the ability of a student and is almost on par with a fighter, heroic soldiers. Thinking of this, Riki suddenly saw the melancholy monster raising his hand full of dry bones, slowly lowering it to Urien and Ella's heads. Urien, Riki suddenly woke up and screamed. Right in this precarious situation, the first demon sword attack attacked straight towards the melancholy monster. When the monster is suddenly attacked, it quickly retracts its hand and easily avoids the attack. 
Jade pushed the demon's sword to the ground, let out a breath and said, Damn, it's completely impossible to penetrate it. The melancholy monster's skeletal hand once again landed on Urien's head. Riki once again shouted, Urien, run away. Urien heard the cry, he cautiously turned his head to look. Riki was now extremely impatient, looking at the scene before him, he gritted his teeth and said, no, that's enough. Riki immediately used the wind skill, a big wind immediately arose, sweeping the bodies of the other three people, Urien crossed his arms and let the wind blow away, softly groaning, again. As if remembering something, Urien doubtfully exclaimed, oh yes, he is Tien's brother, right. At that time, I also flew like that, it was a really strange feeling. The monster standing below looked at this scene and snorted in disdain. It came up behind Riki and coldly said, that's all, why don't you run away? Riki didn't answer him, he glanced back slightly, wary of this monster. Suddenly Riki smiled faintly, he responded to the monster with the same disdain, hum, why should I run? Riki held the sword tightly in his palm. He calmly said, I will buy time. There are other warriors here too, warrior, the sad monster heard that and asked suspiciously. Are you planning to buy time to cooperate with the warrior? The monster asked contemptuously, with a scared look. Riki clenched his teeth, the hand holding the sword began to tremble, no longer obeying his own control, and heard the monster melancholy say, five seconds, no, just three seconds. Without letting that scary monster finish his sentence, Riki decided to scream, God. Following his call, a fiery dragon rushed out amidst the rolling wind, it screamed and then roared towards the melancholy monster standing. The monster was startled and alert, taking a few steps back. The dragon that Riki summoned rushed straight at the melancholy monster at a speed that was hard for the naked eye to keep up with. Blinding smoke and dust rose in all four directions, I thought everything was over, but at this moment, the monster's faint voice rang out again, do you know? I haven't launched a direct attack on you yet. The unharmed monster once again appeared before Riki. Riki was so scared that his face turned pale, not a drop of blood remained, his face was covered in sweat, he thought to himself, ah, it's over. At this moment, Professor Gar Ryan Bai just arrived in time, saw the scene in front of him and said coldly, I came here to deal with a level 3 monster, it turned out to be a stronger one. Professor Gar Ryan Bai hugged Riki's body, stared at the monster and asked, is that level 4 melancholy? Riki held the sword tightly in his hand, couldn't believe his eyes and called out English. The melancholy monster now seemed angry at being interrupted, he said in a harsh voice, who are you for me to answer? Hearing that, Professor Gar Ryan Bai curled his mouth and replied faintly, Super Beast Windy. Not far away, Jade and Ella were lying on the grass, both unconscious, constantly moaning in pain, Ella sometimes whispering Urian's name. Urian put his hands in his pockets and stood in the air looking at the two people below. His eyebrows were furrowed tightly, his face full of pensiveness, not knowing what was going through his mind. The monster melancholy let out a low growl, his four skeletal hands were raised, a layer of light emanating from his wrists containing amazing power. Professor Gar Ryan Bai asked coldly, that look, is level four melancholy. The monster melancholy and annoyed said, who are you for me to answer? Level 4 monster appeared in the kingdom, this is an emergency situation, Professor Gar Ryan Bai thought in his mind for a moment and then responded to the words of the melancholic monster, Windy. As soon as these words finished, a pair of butterfly wings spread out behind Professor Gar Ryan Bai, around the wings fluttered a few cold electric sparks, Professor Gar Ryan Bai slowly said the three words, Super Beast. The wings flapped a few times, with Professor Gar Ryan Bai as the center, a fierce wind arose in all four directions, the sound of the wind hitting the eardrums painfully. Riki couldn't bear it any more, so he quickly sat down, covered his ears with his hands and thought, damn, can you make such a terrible sound with the wind? But the melancholy monster still stood still in place, as if unaffected by this attack from Professor Garan Bai. The sound that the wind created penetrated the forest, spreading more and more to the surrounding localities. Inside the Magic Academy, Principal Marges heard a strange sound, he was startled and alertly looked outside. The principal frowned, somewhat worried and silently called, Gar Ryan Bai. At this moment, Professor Ji Yi, who was repairing the magic ball, suddenly exclaimed in horror, Principal, 
Something is very strange. Principal Marches looked at her suspiciously and asked softly. Professor Ji Yi was sweating and hurriedly said. Although it was said that it was caused by a level 3 monster, the magic ball was broken and could not be repaired. She turned her head slightly to look at the principal, hurriedly continued, there was some power so strong that the communication was cut off. Principal Marges heard that and his face darkened, as if he was thinking about something. A moment later, he created a sound transmission array and softly called out, Hyewon, can you hear me? Principal Majess's eyes suddenly became extremely sharp. The sudden appearance of level 3 monsters and the destruction of the tracking magic orbs, there was no way these two things could be such a coincidence. Principal Marges suddenly asked, could a monster with this perception be level 4? Why did he appear in the first year exam? The target was a princess, the principal frowned and thought suspiciously. In the end, what's going on? The principal's body flared up with unconcealed anger, he said, we've been so negligent. Gee ye, we have to go there to protect the students, before the kingdom's night army comes to the rescue, Principal Marges said firmly, Professor Ji Yi heard that and immediately replied, I understand. Principal Majess's face was extremely ugly, he silently said, Gar Ryan B, please endure, you must not die. Inside the inspection forest, Professor Gar Ryan B was taking a vigilant stance and looking at the melancholy monster, the wings on his back kept moving, and spiritual light flew everywhere. The melancholy monster saw this and said contemptuously, could it be that the direct confrontation you speak of is like this? As soon as these words finished, the two arms behind its back suddenly grew much longer, ten sharp black nails without warning rushed towards Professor Gar Ryanby, it coldly called him an insect, completely don't let him in your eyes at all. Riki, standing not far away, saw this scene and cried out in horror. Professor Gar Ryanby's face stiffened, his mouth slightly curled up as he looked at the dry bone hand that was gradually approaching him. Right after that, Professor Gar Ryanby flew forward, his speed was so fast that the jacket on his shoulders fell back, Professor Gar Ryanby shouted coldly, sword wind. As soon as these words ended, a sharp sword appeared in front of Gar Ryanby. He reached out and grabbed the hilt of the sword, put strength into both hands, and powerfully slashed, hitting straight towards the melancholy monster standing. Professor Gar Ryanby with splendid wings on his back rushed towards the level 4 monster. This monster's hands are extremely large, it raised its dry bone hand, aimed right at Professor Gar Ryanby and grabbed it. Professor Gar Ryanby's movements were very agile, it didn't take much effort to avoid that fist, the melancholic monster only caught the air in the palm of his hand. It angrily let out a long scream. The arm took an extremely strange position and turned back hitting Professor Gar Ryanby who was behind him. The professor leaned slightly to the side, using incredible speed to avoid this move of the melancholic monster. He raised the sword in his hand and said contemptuously, you're too slow, level 4. Riki stood to the side and watched, at this moment a thin layer of sweat appeared on his forehead, silently exclaiming, his speed is too great, worthy of being a talent of the kingdom. If it were him, he would definitely be able to defeat level 4, Riki confidently thought so, but at this time, the battle continued, Professor Gar Ryanby raised his sword and slashed at the melancholy monster, it I don't want to be involved with you anymore, so I immediately opened my mouth and said, I don't want to die. As soon as the monster's words ended, Professor Gar Ryanby's whole body immediately stopped, completely unable to move anymore. When Riki saw that, he screamed in fear and called out in a hoarse voice. Professor Gar Ryanby could no longer control himself anymore. Following the melancholy monster's charm, he raised his sword and stabbed the sharp tip of the sword straight into his leg, fresh blood sprayed out all over the area. Professor Gar Ryanby clenched his teeth in pain, completely unable to control his body. He knelt down on one knee, half kneeling facing the melancholy monster, thinking in horror, stabbing his own leg, this is the power that makes people commit suicide. The melancholy monster looked down at Ryanby's station like he was looking at a small ant that no longer had the power to attack, it said contemptuously, where is that arrogant look? Gar Ryanby did not answer it, at this moment his face was drenched in sweat, his thoughts were being taken over by an indescribable despair, causing him to just quietly bow his head and kneel there, completely unable to do anything. But at this moment, a little remaining will awaken Gar Ryanby, 
He told himself that he could not be taken over by resentment. Gar Ryanby's teeth bit his lip so hard that it bled. Gar Ryanby stood up straight. His thigh was stabbed by the sword and was bleeding profusely. Gar Ryanby asked in a cold voice, Where is the target? Level 4 has never shown up. Why did it appear right now? When the sad monster heard that, he burst out laughing and said, Ha ha, if I attack you once, you will be so scared that you won't dare to do anything else. Pausing for a moment, the melancholy monster looked straight into Gar Ryanby's eyes and continued leisurely, Hm, of course, we appeared to destroy humanity. Riki was so impatient that he couldn't bear it any more. He couldn't bear it any more when he heard this. He immediately shouted, Brother, run quickly, it's enough to delay the time. Hearing this reminder, Gar Ryanby suddenly seemed to wake up from a coma. He clenched his teeth, thinking, I have to think carefully, I didn't come here to destroy level 4. Ryanby's fist clenched into a fist, currently, no student has died at the hands of level 4, I must quickly return to the kingdom to report its appearance. But just thinking about this, the incident happened, what sad monster let them leave so easily, it performed magic, the forest was suddenly dyed in blood red, the air was filled with the smell of death. Professor Gar Ryanby and Riki could not control themselves and immediately raised their hands to squeeze their necks. Their hands used so much force that it seemed like they wanted to break their necks in half, both people were in pain and couldn't breathe, their faces were drenched in layers of sweat. The melancholy monster was so pleased that he laughed and praised, your appearance is very beautiful. He raised his dry hand high and slowly hit the position where the two people, Ryanby and Riki, were struggling. The hand with terrifying power slammed down, the monster melancholy said in a cold voice, now go to sleep comfortably. At this time, Tien, who was at the academy, was suddenly startled. There seemed to be a connection between the two brothers, Riki and Tien, she held the book in her arms, restlessly calling out in English. But the melancholy monster that was attacking the two people suddenly seemed to sense something unusual, it stopped slightly and raised its eyes to let out a groan. In front of its eyes, a beautiful fairy appeared who didn't know when, the monster asked suspiciously, is this, the six-winged fairy? Is the great star wind spirit? It exclaimed in disbelief. The fairy heard the monster say that and replied leisurely, I am your friend. Having just said this, a ball with amazing power hit straight towards the melancholy monster, the fairy said in a cold voice, have you forgotten the word sir? The melancholy monster had no time to avoid the attack, it tilted its head slightly to one side, thinking in its heart, great wind spirit we. The person with the most complex and superior personality among the four great spirits in this world. The melancholy monster knew that he had encountered something extremely terrible. He regained his domineering appearance and immediately spoke softly, asking the great spirit to forgive me for my disrespect. It paused for a moment as if to arrange its words, then asked a moment later, but the great spirit does not interfere in worldly matters, what are you doing here? The great wind elf Wee did not answer, she looked at the monster indifferently, her face did not show any emotions, for a moment it made people unable to guess the happiness or sadness on it. Manage nature and elements in this world. There are four great spirits. Among them, the person with the most complex and arrogant personality is the great wind spirit Wee. The melancholy monster saw the great wind spirit suddenly appear, was a little doubtful, and hesitantly asked, Sir, what are you doing here? The great wind elf, Wee, crossed her arms over her chest and said faintly, I came here just to talk to you. Exchange, the melancholy monster opened its hideous mouth in surprise. The great wind spirit, Wee, was currently blocking the two people, Gar Ryanby and Riki. She slowly said, Don't kill the two people behind you, instead let me. I won't interfere with who you kill next, you'll kill those two anyway. The sad monster heard this and asked in confusion, a great elf that manages nature actually came here to directly discuss with me. Just because of those two people, the great wee wind demon gave a cold smile and calmly admitted, yes, because they are handsome, I like beauty, but you don't. When the sad monster heard this sentence, he suddenly choked and couldn't say anything. After a while, it waved its arms behind its back, slightly angry and said that originally the great spirit would not interfere in human affairs. The great wind Jin Wei asked with disdain, where did you hear that, are you a great demon? She seemed to be about to lose patience, she didn't want to deal with the gloomy monster anymore so she urged her, hurry up, decide quickly, 
you won't achieve your goal and will be destroyed by me, or agree to my conditions, Ta. When the sad monster heard this, he suppressed his anger and silently cursed, so arrogant, was this an exchange or a threat? It silently pondered, but clearly fighting with the great spirit to kill those two people was not the purpose of my coming here. Looking at Professor Gar Ryan Bai and Riki fainting on the ground, the monster thought sadly, but that was the person she protected to the point of appearing in person, surely this person will be able to borrow everything in the future, the power of the great spirit. Even if I have to fight with the great spirit now, it's better to kill those two before disaster strikes. Seeing the monster in front of him thinking for too long, the great wind elf we impatiently snorted. She raised her hand and flicked it lightly. A beam of bright power shot out from her hand, aiming right at the position where the melancholy monster was standing. The melancholy monster was caught off guard, his body was cut in half, his limbs fell to the ground. The great wind elf we frowned and said, I gave you a chance to trade, this is the punishment. Die four more times. As soon as these words fell, a series of sharp rays of light crashed down, the light was extremely dazzling, a continuous tremor rang out, and dust was caught everywhere. A moment later, the great wind spirit we raised his voice, or listen clearly, in the name of the great spirit, I made an exchange. You did not agree, now I will destroy you. Not far away, the melancholy monster is now just a puddle of broken flesh and blood, its original form no longer visible. But just a few seconds later, its body began to recover, and in a moment it stood up tall again, facing the great wind spirit. The melancholy monster was very sensible, immediately nodded and replied, Yes, I will cooperate, because I came here to complete the assigned purpose, so I hope you understand that I give in only because that purpose has been fulfilled, just become. Give in, the great wind spirit, we shouted, go away. The gloomy monster seemed to be waiting for just that, then immediately flew up, completely disappearing before the great wind spirit Wee's eyes. She followed the direction the monster had just finished, frowned and mumbled, is it time for the monster to start making moves again? Suddenly the great wind spirit Wee's eyes opened wide. She rushed over and hugged Riki's face tightly, shouting his name loudly, Riki, long time no see, Riki was covered in sweat, felt someone calling her, then opened her mouth and moaned a few times. The great wind spirit we used his tiny hand to hit Riki's face, impatiently calling out, wake up and say it. Riki still couldn't open his eyes, just hummed a few times, vaguely responding. At this moment, the great wee wind spirit breathed a sigh of relief, fortunately you are okay. She turned her eyes to look at the person next to her. Said unhappily, Gar Ryan Bai. You still can't borrow my power like before. At another place within the inspection forest area. The melancholy monster slowly descended to the ground, where it stopped filled with intense murderous intent. The melancholy monster scolded angrily, this was a disgusting humiliation. Can't waste any more time, it calculates, we must first achieve our goal when we come to this place. Looking at Jade and Ella lying on the ground, the melancholic monster filled with indignation said, until this unpleasant mood becomes pleasant, I will stomp on you, you will be the ones I vent my anger on. No one will get out of here alive today. The sky was incredibly blue, a gentle wind blew, blowing a leaf from the tree, slowly falling to the green grass below. The melancholy monster raised his hand high and was preparing to act when a giant pillar of light appeared right in front of him. The melancholy monster was startled, not understanding what was happening. Seeing someone appearing in front, it shouted in confusion, Who are you? Urian clenched his hands and appeared right in front of the melancholy monster. He bowed his head slightly, his expression was unclear for a moment, but the words that came out were cold as ice, I hesitated again, even when she was injured, I thought I could solve the problem, undetected power. The monster gloomily approached Urian, bent down to look at him and said contemptuously, it seems you can't run far, right? Don't worry, no matter how far you run, you will still die. Show me your failure and helplessness, the melancholy monster shouted loudly, all hope here today, will turn into despair and fear. It waved its arms, its dry skeletal arms squeezing Urian's neck tightly. The melancholy monster said faintly, you know, your hands will automatically be what I want, you will really be more desperate than anyone, you should kill yourself. Urian was strangled, he did not struggle, just remained silent without saying a word. 
A moment later, a strong hand reached out and grabbed the melancholy monster's bone-dry arm. The cold sound of broken bones rang out, one of the sad monster's hands was plucked alive, followed by a cold voice, Hey, do you often make others kill themselves, stop talking nonsense. Urian waved his hand a few times, his eyes exuded a cold light, you can't kill anyone today, understand, with me here, you are nothing. The melancholy monster was angered by Urian's words, his two black eye sockets flowed bright red blood. The melancholy monster seemed to have used all its strength, from its body sprouting countless skeletal arms, rushing straight at Urian at incredible speed. Urian didn't move at all, he stood still, in his mind he remembered the image of Ella pointing her sword at her neck and committing suicide. At this moment, the skeleton arm of the melancholy monster had come very close to Urian, aiming right at his head and wanting to tear it off, Urian thought to himself, I know roughly the strength standards, now I won't hesitate any more. As soon as his thoughts ended, a stream of power around Urian's body suddenly erupted, he raised his fist high. Then with a strong swing, amazing power emitted from Urian's fist, hitting straight towards the melancholy monster, Urian's voice was cold, level 4 melancholy, destroyed. Level 4 appeared after many years of concealing its whereabouts, the Rarant Kingdom immediately convened an emergency meeting. For many years, the fourth level has always been inactive, but appeared at the exam venue of the Royal Magic Academy, threatening the students and teachers of the school. At this time in the palace, King Brehadinus was sitting on the throne. Royal Magic Academy Principal Marges stood below, frowning and reporting, at that time, Teacher Gar Ryan Bai and student Riki were present at the scene and protected the students from the level 4 monster. Although these two people later lost consciousness, luckily they were okay, it can be seen that the great spirit we protected them. Marquis Drade heard that and hesitantly said, perhaps the great spirit also had a fierce battle with the level 4 monster. Everyone saw the scene, right, he said. What a fierce battle it must have been to make the natural forest leave such an image, I really don't dare to imagine. Marquis Ray sweated and continued, perhaps, that level 4 is much stronger than before, it must have been cultivating its strength over the years of silence. Surely its goal is to destroy humanity, everyone below is talking loudly, if only a level 4 monster can fight a fierce battle with a great spirit, then humanity has no hope. Seeing that it was too noisy, Zertus immediately shouted, everyone calm down. This is his majesty's royal palace. As the monsters get stronger, humanity also gets stronger, the captain of the royal knights, Zialefdan, standing next to King Brehadinus, spoke reassuringly. The defense system is also increasingly solid, and the strength of the knights is also increasingly improving. So if we don't let our guard down, and maintain our current strict defense mentality, humanity will never be defeated by monsters or anything like that. You're right, the king nodded in satisfaction, the strength of humanity is having the ability to calculate and prevent danger before danger occurs. After the king finished speaking, he turned back to look at Principal Marges and ordered, Principal, you should determine the infiltration route of level 4 and take the next countermeasures, Principal Marges bowed his head respectfully and replied, Obey the order, King. The King continued to speak, the Captain of the Knights and the Lord should always remain vigilant, ready to protect the people at any time, Captain Zialefdan immediately replied, obeying His Majesty's orders. At this time, Principal Marges suddenly spoke, Your Majesty, I still have something to report, the King nodded and said, You say it. Principal Marges said seriously, the annual friendly match with the Empire, this year I suggest postponing this match. King Brehadinus nodded and asked, well, if it's a friendly match, then it's an annual event to compete with the Empire's students, right? Principal Marges replied, yes your majesty, this year the monsters are acting unusually, so I think we should postpone the friendly match. At this moment, Marquis Ray stepped forward to protest, Marges, what do you mean by that? What does it mean to postpone a friendly match? He frowned and said unhappily, Have you forgotten the Empire's announcement a few days ago? The Empire appreciates the Kingdom's quick response in protecting its people from level 4. Monsters absolutely cannot threaten humanity. Humanity is much stronger than monsters, so the Empire hopes to fight. The annual friendly match will still be conducted as planned. Marquis Reyes frowned. His fat face was covered in sweat. He continued to speak. The empire that can be said to be our kingdom's eternal rival has shown such a bold attitude, 
do how can we be cowards? Someone heard that and immediately said, the Empire lost three consecutive friendly matches in the past, so this year they probably want to regain their dignity. Principal Marges replied solemnly, monsters of level four and above all have quite high intelligence, they will not naturally come here without a reason. As soon as he said this, a call suddenly rang out and interrupted him, his words. King Brehadinus frowned and said unhappily, how will other countries including the empire look at our kingdom? Principal Marges immediately objected, we may lose the decisive hegemony in the future, raids in those dungeons. But we can't let the students fall into such danger, when the king heard that, he shouted, what exactly is dangerous here, wouldn't it be better to arrange the armies of both countries? Marquis Sirtis stroked his chin thoughtfully and said, yes, if a monster suddenly appeared, seeing that there was a group of knights there, they would not dare to attack casually. Principal Marges couldn't bear it any more. He said loudly, if we let our guard down like that, our students, the future of the kingdom will be threatened, I'm not even sure that there will be a senior son, four more appeared in this friendly match. Marquis Ray sounds like it's hard to understand, what you're saying is, if a monster appears, we'll lose, marches. Seeing everyone below arguing so loudly, King Brehadinus immediately shouted in a serious voice, okay, both sides' opinions are reasonable. He frowned and said, without knowing the purpose of the monster appearing this time, organizing the event is indeed a bit dangerous. But if because of that we refuse to be friendly, the empire will use that as an excuse to work with other countries to exert political pressure on us. At that time the kingdom will fall into a dilemma. Leaning back on the throne, Monarch Brehadinus said hesitantly, if so, please ask the students directly. Principal Marges knelt down on one knee. Hearing that, he was puzzled and asked again, ask, ask the student. King Brehadinus waved his hand and commanded, the person who bravely fought with the fourth level, teacher Gar Ryan and student Riki, led him out here to meet him. The soldiers heard this and immediately responded, obeying his majesty's orders. Also, King Brehadinus called out, bringing the Urian students here. Very soon Professor Gar Ryan Bai, Riki and Urian were led to the palace. Urian thought to himself, what is this? Kneeling in front, Principal Marges respectfully said, your majesty, this is teacher Gar Ryan Bai and students Riki, Urian. King Brehadinus sat on the throne and nodded and said, well, everyone calm down, in an emergency situation when level 4 appeared, but you still bravely used all your strength to deal with monsters, I praise you, you guys, thanks to brave people like you, the kingdom can maintain peace and stability. Urian raised his head slightly and looked up, sweating and thinking, is that really the king? Several Marquis put their heads together, whispering to evaluate Urian, is that guy a special profane student, even a boy failed, the Marquis raised his voice in exclamation. King Brehadinus continued to speak from above, your reward will be prepared later, I called you here today for another reason, in a few months, we will have a friendly match with the empire. Friendly match, Urian thought in shock. King Brehadinus continued, the friendly match not only promotes the friendship of the two countries, but is also an important event of interest to many other countries. But really, this is just a place to evaluate countries' strategies. Whoever wins the friendly match will receive more sponsorship, and receive higher ratings. Hearing these words, Urian thought to himself, what an honest king. King Brehadinus said seriously, we should consider whether we should give up this friendly match. The reason is that a level 4 monster appeared, maybe that monster will appear again. I hear the opinions of you, those who have met him directly, when Riki heard the king say this, two words level 4 appeared in his heart, his face suddenly became sweaty and full of panic. The horrifying image of the level 4 melancholy monster flashed through Riki's mind. His face turned pale, King Brehadinus saw him and worriedly asked, what's wrong with you, your face doesn't look very good. He put one hand on his chin and said softly, just speak freely, I want to hear your real opinions. Seeing Riki trembling and kneeling in one place, the Marquis looked disdainful and talked in low voices, that kid was too scared to say anything, that's right, he was personally at the scene confronting a level 4 like that. Even if you are an excellent student at school, your spirit will probably collapse. If this is the case, maybe we should postpone the friendly, maybe postpone it. Before these Marquis words were finished, Urian suddenly interrupted, Your Majesty, I am Urian a student of magic, please answer your question. 
First of all, it is truly an honor for me to be invited by your majesty to come here and personally reward you like this. About the friendly match, as you know, the three of us once met level 4 and faced it off. And monsters are indeed very strong. However, having said this, Urian paused for a moment, he raised his head, revealing his big, round, determined sparkling eyes. He shouted loudly, I was not afraid of it, rather I was focused on finding a way to defeat it. Riki who was next to him heard this and was startled and raised his eyes to look at Urian, then heard Urian continue to say, if in the next friendly match there will be a level 4 appearing. Then this time, we will try to defeat level 4. Principal Marges listened to Urian and turned his head slightly to look at him. Marquis Sirtis not far away stroked his chin in approval, oh ho, that's quite good. Some people laughed disdainfully, then quickly covered their mouths and mocked in a low voice, the common man, the Marquis, raised his voice to continue, not even knowing how to control himself. The leader of the Zialefdan knight group silently observed everyone below, not saying a word. But King Brehadinus, who was still thinking with his chin in his hands, suddenly burst out laughing, ha 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 ha. Urian maintained his posture facing the king, hearing him praise again, good, very good. King Brehadinus opened his hand and said, I was right to call you here. Urian stammered in response, it's an honor, an honor for me, his face was covered in a thin layer of sweat, he thought to himself, hey, compared to my imagination, the reaction was a bit. His thoughts were interrupted, the voice of the King Brehadinus rang out, magic student, no Urian, I order you, represent the kingdom to participate in the friendly match, the Marquis below heard that then they were extremely frightened, they shouted in unison, your majesty, your majesty, why, why did you leave a commoner? Urian also didn't expect this situation to happen. He was a bit surprised, he thought he heard it wrong and made a noise. Student Urian, I order you, become the representative of the kingdom and participate in the friendly match. Hearing these words of the king, the Marquis exclaimed in horror, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, that untouchable how is it possible? Urian was also very stunned, he made a sound of doubt, completely unable to believe what he had just heard. The Marquis raised exclaimed, your majesty, please think again. A friendly match is a match that bets on the kingdom's pride. Do you intend to let an untouchable become the kingdom's representative? How will other countries look at us? Principal Marges heard that and coldly spoke up, Mr. Reyes, the boy is not an untouchable, but a magic practitioner. Realizing the danger emanating from the principal, the Marquis raised a sweat and said, okay, stop joking. Riki had not said a word until now, suddenly speaking. Urian. Even though I was hit by a level 4 monster, he can heal me at lightning speed, that ability of his will be extremely beneficial in this friendly battle. Urian felt bad when he heard that, he thought to himself, why is this kid suddenly like this? At this time, I heard someone argue that the ability to heal quickly is impossible. Everyone who heard that was silent, the one who spoke was Marquis Rixarso, he continued, heal, seriously speaking is reincarnation. It's not about treating wounds or illnesses, it's about helping you regenerate to get better quickly. That is, the ability to heal wounds instantly, in theory is impossible, Marquis Rixasso firmly denied, Urina now thought, ah, that's why everyone was surprised, ha. Huh? Marquis Rixasso's voice continued to ring out, it was definitely illusion magic that made him no longer feel pain, Riki heard that and said, no, that's not it, Urian's healing power is definitely real. He was about to continue speaking when a large hand reached out, blocking his body, stopping him from continuing to speak. Principal Marges stood in front of Riki, not too fast or too slow to say, the magic that everyone knows, is not all in this world. What? exclaimed the Marquis Rixasso. Principal Marges didn't pay attention to him. He continued to say, why not try it? Demonstrate the ability to heal quickly right here. Prove it, Marquis Reyes exclaimed in horror. How is this possible? Principal Marges immediately turned to Urian and asked, Is it possible? Urian gave a forced smile and exclaimed. He thought to himself, Why is this happening? I just wanted to help a little. What should I do in this situation? The ability to heal quickly. Thinking for a moment, Urian finally nodded and replied that it was possible. Really, the surrounding servants cried out in horror. This is the scar, a voice rang out in the palace. Marquis Sirtis lifted one side of his shirt, 
revealing his arm with a patchy scar. He explained that on the battlefield four years ago, it was twice its size. Even though I've been treating it for several years, the scar still hasn't gotten better. He turned to Urian and asked, can your speedy healing ability cure it? Principal Marges heard that and quickly shouted, please wait a moment, Mr. Zertus. Urian's healing skill is the ability to heal wounds, healed scars are another matter. Marquis Reyes interrupted him just in time, Marges, then, do you mean to let someone here get hurt, in a situation where it is unknown whether the healing power is real or fake? Marquis Rixarso agreed and continued, scars are also wounds, if it is true that it can be cured completely. Principal Marges shouted a bit annoyed, this kind of forced thing, before he could finish his sentence, Yuran took a step forward and said, I will try. He smiled and thought, can the scar be cured? I'm really curious. Urian, Principal Marges called worriedly, Professor Gar Ryan Bai and Riki were equally nervous. Urian didn't turn around, he walked up to Marquis Zertus, raised his hand and said, then I begin. As soon as he finished speaking, from Urian's hand began to emit extremely light and warm aura. This aura directed towards the scar on Marquis Zertus's hand and healed it. Soon, Marquis Zertus's arm was healed, giving him a smooth, shiny arm, with no trace of the old scar anywhere to be found. Marquis Zertus cried out in horror, my scar, my scar. He looked closely at his arm and exclaimed, his skin was like that of a three-year-old child. The people around who witnessed this scene gasped in surprise. King Brehadinus was equally surprised, his eyebrows were tightly frowned together, not knowing what he was thinking. The people below had the opportunity to talk loudly, Marquis Zertus, there really are no scars anymore, how could that untouchable's magic be possible? The Marquis raised his hand to touch his neck, silently exclaiming, not only the scar, but also the pain in his throat that was as swollen as usual was better, this was not an illusion at all. The ability to heal quickly is true, he loudly affirmed. The captain of the Zialefdan knights also spoke up, your majesty, it's not just that you're surprised, this is a revolution. If put to use on the battlefield or in everyday life, it will bring great efficiency. Furthermore, if this healing power can be commercialized, humanity's medical technology will develop dramatically. On the other side, Urian happily thought to himself, oh, so he can heal scars. He was having fun when a voice suddenly rang out, you, no, this special magic technician. Marquis Reyes asked, how many times a day can that healing power be used? When Urian heard that, he was startled and replied, yes, ah, uh, that, he hesitated for a long time, unable to say a sentence, thinking in his head, it is infinite. Even so, Urian was still very alert, he didn't tell the truth but replied, yes, three times, Marquis raised and asked in a low voice, three times a day. Without waiting for Urian to answer, Marquis raised cautiously continued, then, can you help me treat the scar on my skin? Lately, everyone I know has been treating me coldly, because of this scar of mine. The other Marquis heard that and quickly exclaimed, what are you talking about, Sir Reyes, this is not magic that can be used on your skin. On the other side, Riki breathed a sigh of relief, smiled and said, indeed Urian. At this moment, King Brehadina suddenly spoke up and told everyone to calm down, thereby, the special magician's ability was proven. The special engineering student is qualified to become a representative of our kingdom, and he is still a child. Should the moment his abilities be of service to the kingdom, it should at least be after graduating from magic school, before then, the principal should do his best to support the boy. Oh magic student Urian, King Brehadinus called out. Urian immediately knelt down on one knee, he put his hand on his left chest, respectfully said, yes, your majesty. King Brehadinus said solemnly, please participate in this friendly match as a representative member and contribute to the kingdom. Urian's sweat dropped, smilingly replied, special magic technician Urian, please accept orders. Looks like it's a big deal, Urian bowed his head and thought. The king looked down from above and softly commanded, please get along with my daughter. Urian was a bit confused, but didn't think too much and quickly replied, yes, it's my honor, your majesty. The next day, at the magic academy, suddenly there was an unbelievable scream. Chris exclaimed incredulously, did you personally meet his majesty and because of your recognized ability, you were chosen as a first-year representative member. Urian put his chin on his hand, 
smiled a bit awkwardly and said, I don't know how it happened. Ella and Jade were beside me happily praising, well done Urian, we are proud of you. Jade nodded and added, it's true, your healing ability deserves to be recognized by his majesty. Hearing these words, Chris was not convinced and gritted his teeth in anger. He ran to where Urian was sitting, angrily said, with the pride of a noble, I cannot recognize it, let's have a fight, untouchable. Hearing that, Jade quickly spoke up, hey, his majesty has acknowledged it. Before he could finish his sentence, Urian interrupted him and nodded and replied, okay. Let's play a game, Urian gave a faint smile. Jade and Ella looked at Urian in surprise, completely not understanding what he was trying to do. I can't recognize you, let's have a fight, you profane guy, Chris said with a smirk. Riki sat in one place, resting his chin, not knowing what he was thinking, Chris's voice continued to echo, if you lose to me, you have to give up the representative position. The twin sisters CR and MYU also stood to the side watching the funny show. Rezo didn't know where to get a bag of popcorn, he ate and watched, Goliath standing next to him helplessly spoke, suddenly fighting again. Ella and Jade are constantly cheering for Urian to win this match. Hina stood next to the princess and asked cautiously, is it okay not to stop them? She is a big fan of the princess, no matter how calm she appears on the outside, her heart is constantly screaming, oh, what should I do, next to me is the princess. Princess Seruti was a bit worried and hesitantly said, maybe, it's okay, the teacher is also here. Professor Hyewon stood between Chris and Urian, smiled and shouted, come on, please prepare the two players. Urian saw this scene and silently thought, it's okay for teachers to do that. Princess Seruti watched Urian for a while, thinking to herself, I heard he was recognized by his father. You have to pay attention to see how it turns out. The two of you will compete according to the rules of the magic school, competing safely without injuring each other. Do you two agree? Professor Hyewon spoke up. I agree, Chris said, smiling. If it weren't for school, you would be seriously injured, you commoner, he told Urian contemptuously. Urian didn't bother to pay attention and replied leisurely, you're really stubborn. At this moment, Professor Hyewon waved his hand and began to state the content of the competition. From Professor Hyewon's hand, a flickering light appeared, immediately after, a sparkling gold coin appeared in her hand, she slowly revealed that the main event of the competition was to move the coin. Teleport star coin, Urian repeated once. Coin teleportation game, the winner is when the coin is moved to the opponent's area and held for 5 seconds. Moving the coin is a win, holding it for 5 seconds is the end of the game. The coin that reaches your area is a loss, but only magic power can be used to move the coin. If the coin goes over the border, it will fail, the rules are over, quite simple. Goliath heard that and immediately said, it's easier than I thought, Rezo didn't think so and said, it just looks that easy. MYU heard the other two say that and smiled as he continued, but he had to use stronger magic power than the other person to be able to move the coin, CR also nodded in agreement, if he used too much magic power and couldn't control it, if yes, the coin will fly out of bounds, so it's eliminated. In the middle of the game, you can suddenly reduce the power so that the opponent gets too carried away and knocks the coin out, Jade commented. Princess Seruti frowned and said, so from power control to strategy, even though it looks simple on the outside, this match requires a lot of consideration. But Ella couldn't say anything, she was extremely worried about Urian. Chris stuck out his tongue and licked his lips, a little startled and provocative, people, I always want to step on them once. That's it, Urian replied with a smile, ah, that's right, thank you. Thanks to you, I got to experience the midterm exam that I couldn't take. Chris parted his lips and smiled mockingly, in his heart he thought, what kind of expression is that? His eyebrows frowned, silently thinking, quickly winning the battle. Immediately after starting the match, I'll hold the coin with my magic so it can't be touched. And when it's panicking, I will use powerful magic to attack its area. Looking forward to its expression of not knowing what to do next, Chris enjoyed imagining the beautiful future. Naughty naughty, this will be the best five seconds of his life, Chris thought happily. At this moment, Professor Hyewon's voice rang out, the two players have finished preparing and began. Chris curled his mouth, raised his magic wand and shouted, accept your fate, you profane. 
Goliath observed and said, Is he going to use force to control him? Razo chewed popcorn and exclaimed, The opponent is a commoner, so everyone will do the same. Because the opponent was a commoner, he was basically weak, but when Razo said this, he immediately stopped. Chris, in the middle of the battle, suddenly let out a startled cry. He said confusedly, Why did the coin end up in my place? Urian stood opposite and gave a faint smile in response to Jade. Professor Hyewon spoke, determined the location, and started the countdown. Yeah, the professor's voice rang out, MYU silently exclaimed, very fast and sophisticated. CR next to me also gave an assessment, although not as strong as her sister, but still quite good. The fourth second passed, Princess Seru T was a bit rushed. During the match, Chris broke out in a thin layer of sweat, he gritted his teeth and did not make a sound, he was scared and thought to himself, the coin is as heavy as a mountain, this is the strength I felt during the entrance exam. Magical power is not normal at all. Chris clenched his fist angrily, scolding angrily, a commoner. At this moment, the coin suddenly changed. Hina exclaimed in surprise, the coin, was moving. Ella cried out in frustration, you, Urian, Jade stood next to her and softly comforted her, it's okay, Ella. Riki sat aside and laughed, ha ha Urian, did you move that coin yourself? Chris sweated and stammered, you, you, now, can't say a complete sentence at all. What's wrong with you? Looking at the scene in front of him, Chris exclaimed in confusion. The coin moved to create a symbol, Chris said in horror, what exactly is this symbol? Urian covered his mouth and smiled and replied, there was no special meaning. Professor Hyewon's voice rang out again, starting the countdown, Chris gritted his teeth and scolded, you bastard. He shouted unwillingly, but Professor Hyewon's voice rang in his ears endlessly, five, four. With three seconds left, Chris tried his best to move the coin but it was completely ineffective. Rezo held the half-empty bag of popcorn, silently saying, that idiot. At this moment, in front of Urian, suddenly there was a loud noise, a dazzling column of light burst out right where Chris was standing. His face was full of pain, his mouth opened wide and he screamed, his body flickering with energy. Hina cried out in panic, exploding magical power. Jade reacted very quickly, jumping in front of Ella, quickly standing behind me. Professor Hyewon was also a bit startled by this scene. She shouted loudly, everyone be careful, there will be a huge explosion. Urian stood still, he bowed his head slightly and said softly, Chris is indeed the best, I predicted you would do this. A pair of long, slender hands lifted up. Aim at the magic power that is exploding right before your eyes. Hand clenched into a fist. Urian flashed a dangerous smile, in his hand, energy was slowly spreading around. Soon, Chris' magic power was completely destroyed, he looked at the scene around him in amazement. Professor Hyewon was also surprised, her eyes opened wide without blinking. The explosion of magical power stopped, Princess Seruti exclaimed in surprise. Chris was now pale and couldn't say another word, his face was drenched in sweat. But high above, the goddess Hersia observed this whole scene and suddenly burst into laughter. She couldn't help but laugh a few times in a row, then a moment later she covered her mouth with her hand and softly called out Urian's name. Goddess Hersia's eyes sparkled as she observed Urian below, silently praising, now do you realize it? At the Magic Academy, inside the place where Chris and Urian's match took place, Professor Hyewon was extremely surprised. Princess Seruti exclaimed in surprise, exploding with magic power. Chris now opened his mouth wide, his face pale and full of fear, completely speechless. At this moment, Princess Seruti suddenly noticed Urian, she said the last few words, stopped, the magic explosion stopped. What's going on? Goliath asked suspiciously, Rezo didn't answer but said quietly, what, just like the plan Chris prepared. The magic power of the special student, locked the explosive magic power. No way, Hina exclaimed incredulously. The explosive magic power is very strong and unstable, how can you suppress it yourself? Really, really, Hina couldn't believe it and asked again. But at this moment, Urian still stood still, he bowed his head slightly and smiled. In the first test I failed to control my power, although someone discovered it, but my heart didn't explode. And today too, could it be that the heart exploding is fake, 
although one can think so, it is clear that if great power is used, the heart will explode. The words of the ancient goddess Hersia rang in Urian's ears, the moment your power is discovered, your heart will explode and you will die. Power is discovered, surely there are standards for that power. Urian slightly raised his eyes to the sky and whispered, Hersia, the standard for strength is a hero. Hersia on high green smiled. Her white wings flapped lightly behind her. Hersia smiled and said, he finally knew. That's right, that's what I mean. The moment he is discovered to have strength stronger than that of a hero, his heart will explode and he will die, because this world is a chaotic world. Humans, demons, monsters, dragons. A small world, but a gathering place for so many things. At that time, if great power appeared on the human side, the balance of this world would be destroyed. Urian, your power will keep peace in this world, the overwhelming existence must walk a lonely path, I hope that power will bring peace. Heal, Urian shouted, a beam of energy rushed around Chris's body, healing his wounds. Chris cried out in horror. Professor Hyewon took a few steps forward, raised his voice and said, Chris, have you admitted defeat yet? Rezo curled his mouth in mockery, you defeated trash should die quickly. Chris fell to the ground, opened his mouth and cried out, admitting defeat. Urian ran towards Ella and Jade, scratching his head sheepishly looking at the two of them. Chris saw this scene and gritted his teeth, not satisfied at all. His fist clenched into a fist. The friendly match is an important and proud event for the kingdom, so the result is more important than status, Chris bowed his head and said. I lost, special student, Chris finally accepted the truth. Professor Hyewon heard that and smiled, looking at him with satisfaction. She turned around and said softly, people must admit defeat, only then can they grow. It was a good match, Chris, Professor Hyewon praised. Urian turned to look at him, thinking sincerely, thank Chris, thanks to you I know the strength standards of this world. A few days later, everything was arranged, the friendly match with the Empire was determined. Professor Hyewon stood on the podium and slowly said, this friendly match will have ten students from each school, this is a traditional event to determine victory or defeat, so at this location, where the friendly match will take place, I will announce the five players representing the first years. Urian is recognized by his majesty, Urian's healing power can cure level 4 attacks, that power will definitely work very actively in team battles, Professor Hyewon said, Urian heard that and was surprised, thinking about it, the introduction is so grand. Next is Seru T, the first year's top, she is excellent in every aspect, so it is indispensable for her to be the representative. Next is Riki, his outstanding ability and blessing from the great spirit, no one in the first year can defeat Riki in close combat, Riki did not show any attitude but rested his chin, glanced at Urian and thought, the magic power is amazing, Urian, if that's the case then it can be used up to three times. Finally, CR and MYU, both have excellent abilities, but when they join forces, they are the strongest, CR looked at MYU and nodded and said, of course there must be us, right sister. MYU didn't say anything, just nodded slightly in response to her twin sister's words. Professor Hyewon continued speaking, so, the five people here are the representative players for the first year. Hearing this, Rezo suddenly spoke up to interrupt Professor Hyewon, what, although I didn't pay attention to that representative chair. But what is the selection criteria? You are clearly stronger than them. Professor Hyewon nodded and said, well, you must be very curious. If it were to be said in one sentence, there would be no criteria for choosing. Because except for Urian, there are four people left. Has directly defeated level 1, and has already faced level 3. High school, Jade was extremely scared when she heard that. He was sweating and thought, not to mention the princess and Riki, both of them have already faced high school. CR didn't pay attention to Jade's eyes, she leaned into my ear and whispered, if you were with me it would be simple, MYU covered her mouth and laughed, why are you stronger than us, you really know how to joke. Professor Hyewon continued to speak up, saying that it was necessary to carefully define standards to select representative players. A first year student has a record that beats high school results, so there is no need to compare with any achievements, that is a very exceptional thing. Hearing the professor say that, Rezo sat still with his arms crossed, 
his face slightly raised, but he couldn't say a word. He thought to himself, up until now, in the case of first-year students defeating high school students, currently only Deus is the student council president, this year is definitely going to be a big change. Goliath asked incredulously, defeating high school, Hina sweat dropped and said, is it possible to do that at our age? Ella clenched her fists, her face exuding an unprecedented determination, not knowing what she was thinking in her heart. The image of a level 3 monster appeared in Ella's mind. She was full of determination and told herself, I will also be stronger to stand beside you, because I am your sister. Urian is currently extremely annoyed by the design of his new outfit. MYU walked up to him and softly called out, Hey special student, Urian let out a confused sound. MYU smiled and said, Do you want to be mine? CR, standing next to her, heard this sentence and cried out in horror, Sister. Ella was also terrified, her eyes wide open without blinking. MYU ignored them and continued slowly, With your ability, we can go from strongest to unbeatable. If you want, then marry me. Isn't it good to become a noble? MYU said. Urian sweat dropped when he heard that, completely doubting that he had misheard. MYU was waiting for an answer when he was startled by two shouts. Urian turned to look at her with confused eyes and said, I don't like it. Are you stupid? Marriage is to marry the person you love. He clicked his tongue and finished the last sentence. He was still young. TSK. Hey, special technician, MYU walked up from afar and asked, Do you want to come with me? With your ability, we can become the strongest champion. If you want, marry me and I will help you become a noble, MYU said calmly, CR when he heard his sister say that, he cried out in horror. Ella was also startled and surprised when she heard this sentence, she gave an extremely stiff smile and thought, what are you talking about? Urian sweat dropped, scared and spoke up, I don't like it, are you stupid, getting married is something you do with the person you love. I'm still young, well, Urian said, hearing this sentence, MYU was momentarily stunned. CR couldn't bear it anymore so she ran over, she bowed her head and touched Urian's cheek, a little annoyed and said, hey, don't insult my sister. MYU was silent all this time, but now she opened her mouth to mutter, marrying the person you love. I see, she smiled and said, I forgot something important. When he heard that, he turned around and called out to her, Urian stood next to him and silently exclaimed. At this time, Professor Hyewon had finished preparing her luggage, she changed into a beautiful dress, wearing a wide-brimmed hat that looked extremely luxurious, Professor Hyewon looked at her student, smiled and said, well then, since we finished explaining, everyone quickly pack their bags and we'll leave immediately. Hina heard that and asked in doubt, where are you starting from? Goliath stood next to you silently thinking, since when did she prepare her hat and bag? Professor Hyewon replied, where else but the empire? I was supposed to leave this morning, but I found the argument too interesting so I was late. Urian looked speechless at his professor, helplessly saying, really? Everyone quickly prepared their luggage and set off, very quickly arriving at their destination. In front of the bustling city, a splendid castle was located right next to a waterfall, the sunlight shining down, making the waterfall sparkle, like a galaxy. Ella looked at her eyes wide open full of excitement and let out an emotional voice. This is the empire, the people here dress extremely noble, a river crosses the city, on which are passenger boats, this scene is extremely beautiful. Ella exclaimed, something smells delicious, Jade standing behind her nodded and replied, um, that's right. Jade looked at Ella's back, a little embarrassed, he was trembling now, thinking in his heart, this opportunity has come. At this time, Jade remembered what Professor Hyewon told him before, the representative students have something to do first so they will follow me. As for the other kids, G will lead him to the Empire first. He blushed and thought, going on a date with Ella in the Empire without Urian, it's lucky that he wasn't chosen as a representative player, and Ella and I will become closer with this opportunity. Thinking like that, Jade mustered up the courage to step forward and stand next to Ella, softly asking, Ella, have you ever eaten grilled scallops? Ella obviously hasn't, she heard that and immediately asked, grill the scallops and then eat them. Jade nodded and replied, well, the empire is very famous for its seafood, grilled scallops with milk fat is super delicious. Having said that, Jade thought happily in her heart, so she hasn't eaten it yet, so cute. 
Jade continued to ask, before we gather, let's go eat some Jew, Ella heard you say that she was really craving it, her eyes lit up and she asked again, is that okay? Jade nodded, if you just eat Jew Jew it won't take much time, I want to treat you. As soon as he said this, another voice suddenly rang out behind Jade, well, grilled scallops are delicious, but I want to eat shrimp, Chris doesn't know when he came here, open his mouth to invite, let's eat grilled shrimp. Shrimp, Ella opened her eyes wide, full of curiosity, Chris approached her, nodded and said, what's with that reaction, have you never eaten? People say shrimp in the empire tastes sweet, Chris coaxed, Ella exclaimed happily, but Jade was frozen on the spot, unable to say a word for a while, he thought angrily, no, Urian but there is another lizard blocking his nose. Not willing to give up, Jade pushed forward to separate the other two, bent down to face Ella, and gently said, Ella, king crab, grilled king crab is even more delicious than shrimp. King crab, Ella clenched her hands and exclaimed. So cute, Jade thought, his cheeks turned red, he said shyly, that dish is suitable for someone with dignity like you, I will treat it to you. Having said this, Chris promptly interjected, oh, the king crab is fine, let's go. Jade turned to look at him, bluntly said, sorry, but that place can only go for two people, you go with the others. Chris is clinging and won't let go, is there any place I can't go, I'll deal with the boss. Rezo stood to one side and said something too loud then took a step forward, Hina and Goliath followed behind, Hina turned her head slightly and said, we will go first. Chris looked at their backs, exclaiming, in a strange place, acting alone, these people really don't know how to think, the more Jade listened, the more annoyed she became, thinking, please, you can go for me too. At this moment, behind the three people, a voice full of contempt rang out, I wondered where these rustic things came from, Jade heard this and turned around to look suspiciously. I only saw three imperial students standing there, led by a male student with a sharp face, cold eyes continuing to taunt, so they were students from the kingdom. Jade looked at him, mentally assessing, those uniforms are from the Imperial Magic School, so they are Imperial students. The other three people continued to criticize, oh look, that badge you're wearing must be from the elite class, is it a black lapel pin? So is it true that this year's news in the kingdom has no talented people? The two male students behind them started to make fun of them. If the untouchables were also accepted into the elite class, the kingdom would be finished. Jade got angry when she heard that, hey, don't talk so casually, Ella is much better than you guys. The imperial male student wearing glasses laughed and shouted a few times, disdainfully saying, you mean people dare to be better than us, that's ridiculous. All of them started to brag about themselves, these guys are the elite first year class of the imperial magic school, ninth place first year, Les Ertel, boys without introduction badges, next to the boys wearing glasses, sixth place first year, Lee Jerick, finally the top, third place first year, Obaru. Hearing that, Jade's three people were a bit nervous and wary, those people were from the Empire's elite class. And that third place guy is the representative player of the friendly match. At this moment, Chris suddenly opened his mouth to exclaim and lie. He pointed at the three people in front of him and said contemptuously, people like you are in no way part of the Empire's elite class. When Ella heard that, she covered her mouth and smiled happily, Jade clenched her fist and praised her, well done, he really is a bad guy. Lee Jerick gritted his teeth, what to say, Obaru continued in a cold voice, those backward monarchs really have no eyes. So let them see, Obaru gave the order, the two people Lee Jerick and Les Ertel immediately rushed forward with an unbelievable speed. This is the power of the empire, both of them waved their hands, raised their hands, half smiled, not letting the three jade people in their eyes. When Ella saw this scene, she didn't flinch at all, she bowed her head slightly and said, let me go up alone, Jade, hearing that, was startled and called her name. Chris crossed his arms, closed his eyes and said, hum, I hate to admit it, but compared to the guy who fought in the morning, these guys look a lot cuter. As soon as these words were said, Ella rushed forward, walked straight to Les Ertel, raised her hand and punched him and he immediately fell to his knees. Next was Lee Jerick, Ella hooked her arm and hit him, causing him to turn over, blood splattered from his nose, Lee Jerick exclaimed in confusion, so fast. Ella's face was a little sweaty, she smiled and said, hey, that's a lie, you guys are so slow and weak, 
Are you really the elite class? Seeing this scene, Obaru gritted his teeth and scolded, You idiots, quit school. What a disgrace to the empire. Then he pulled out his sharp twin swords, raised his hands in a defensive stance, and said harshly, I will show you, this is the true power of the empire. As soon as the words finished, Obaru's body of demonic energy billowed out, they gathered right above his head, forming the shape of a giant and terrifying skull. He was about to move when he was startled to find that he couldn't move. I only saw Jade withdraw her hand and said faintly, if it's a simple match, we'll continue, but if you cross that limit, be ready to accept it. Obaru's face was covered in sweat, his spine chilled as he thought, what magic power is that, is it a magic sword? He exclaimed in confusion, why aren't you guys representative players? Hearing this question, Jade and Ella turned to look at each other in bewilderment. Jade said doubtfully, well, because there are many better friends, Ella clenched her fists, burning with anger and shouted, we won't lose. Obaru was speechless and couldn't say a word, silently cursing in his heart, who said this year, the kingdom had no talent. It's a complete lie, what did I see just now? Obaru was thinking about it, then in the distance, another person appeared who didn't know when, around her body emitted a layer of faint demonic energy, one eye was covered, cold voice said, Baru, you just are you scared? A student of the great empire, is he afraid of the kingdom? She said, this person is a student of the imperial magic school, first year rank one, Ryase. Obaru three people heard that and denied it in panic, it's not like that, Ryase, we're not scared. Ryase didn't bother to listen to what they were talking about, she clenched her fists and roared in anger, it was the empire's humiliation and punishment. As soon as these words finished, a terrifying stream of power shot out from Ryase's hand, aiming at the three Obaru people. Those three people were already scared to death, their faces drenched in sweat, they screamed in panic, wait. In this precarious situation, a stream of magical sword power suddenly rushed forward to block the three people, Obaru, Jade used her eighth form, the demon sword shield, to block an attack from the demon sword, Ryase. Obaru covered his eyes with his hand to avoid the bright light, wondering what was going on. He looked at Jade standing in front of him, curiously asking, you, why? Jade heard that and said seriously, hey, it's very serious at this point, that attack just now, if I don't stop it, it won't just end in injury. Ryase heard that and asked in surprise, what did you say, attack, block, who? Ah, why do you think you have stopped my attack? That was a punishment just now, R-Y-U-S-E-I said G-E-N-T-L-E-L-Y, then she changed position, bended up and waved her hands, coldly continued. What is this attack, you stupid name? Truly stubborn, Jade angrily waved his hand, a magic sword appeared in his hand, blocking Ryase's attack. Ryase bowed slightly, used all his magic power, and shouted sarcastically, this is what you call an attack, idiot. Jade saw this scene and immediately raised her hand to use the magic sword, angrily scolding, it was really unreasonable. Jade then sat down directly, using the third magic sword technique, shield to block Ryase's attack. Ryase was not weak at all, she raised her hand, releasing an amazing stream of power from her hand. Chris stood to the side holding a magic wand, he closed one eye and looked at the two people fighting, then told Jade, that's not enough to stop it. Jade was still hiding behind a shield covered with a protective layer of golden light. Hearing Chris's words, Jade froze slightly, his eyes flashed, his voice whispered coldly, he said, isn't it enough to stop him? At this moment, Ryase unleashed a one-hit magic attack aimed straight at Jade's shield. Jade was immediately stunned, her eyes opened wide as she looked at the ray of light flying towards her at breakneck speed. Ryase's one-hit magic fireball flew towards Jade's body as fast as lightning, leaving him unable to react. Jade looked around with a panicked face, as if he couldn't believe his eyes, he exclaimed in horror, he hadn't seen anything. The shield that Jade created to protect herself, at this moment, due to just a small attack from Ryase, a large piece was broken. Jade looked at the shield with heartache, saying in horror, my shield, in just one move. At this time, passes be gathered together, saw a loud noise, they whispered, the noise was too loud. Was there a fight? Someone recognized Ryase and immediately said, isn't that right? Ryase, it's Ryase, quickly show them the power of the empire. 
Ryase retracted her hand and took a defensive stance. She looked at Jeddah sitting on the ground and said contemptuously, Whatever, if it's good, then stop it. Ryase raised his head and coldly said with an expressionless face, I will send those who humiliate the empire to hell. After finishing speaking, without giving Jade time to react, Ryase directly used his magic attack to hit Jade straight, making him unable to react in time. Ryase's punch carried great power, aiming right at Jade's head. But as soon as she was close to touching Jade, Ryase discovered that her magic power was clearly decreasing, she opened her eyes wide, thinking suspiciously, has my magic power disappeared? At this moment, a person suddenly appeared in the sky, it was Riki, as soon as he arrived, he immediately said, Windy. Following behind, a giant sword under Riki's control stabbed straight into the ground, creating a terrifying vibration, causing Ryase to take a few steps back. Riki gently landed on the ground and said calmly, step back. Immediately after that, Riki used the whirlwind skill, causing Ryase's entire body to fly several meters away. Ryase landed on the ground with his hands to keep his balance, angrily shouting, who? She looked forward and shouted angrily, who made my magic disappear? When Riki heard that, he burst out laughing, he replied frankly, it's me. Looking around at the person in front of him, Ryase said contemptuously, what are you laughing at, you idiot, it's not you. But the magic power is much more terrifying and powerful. Riki didn't intend to explain too much. He immediately released the magic power inside him to let Ryase check. Seeing this scene, Ryase said in horror, yes, it was him. Ryase seemed to have found the right person. She immediately bent down to prepare to launch a new move, filled with anger and said, why are you hiding behind, come out quickly, I will use all my strength to fight you. These words just as he finished, a woman suddenly appeared from nowhere in front of Ryase. The woman who just appeared was Professor Hyewon, she said lightly, she also really wanted to see a beautiful match. Ryase was stunned when he heard this. Professor Hyewon placed her hand on Ryase's head and continued softly, but it was a more friendly final match, but as a teacher, she couldn't pretend not to see the players arguing. Hyewon caressed Ryase's messy hair, exclaiming, your hair is so soft, Ryase hasn't recovered yet, thinking in his heart, ex-brave Hyewon, when did she appear? Thinking like that, Ryase immediately backed away and turned around to run away, not forgetting to shout to the group of Imperial students behind him, let's go, those people were also very quick, running behind and saying, wait for me. Before leaving this place, Ryase slightly turned around and scoffed, let's meet in a friendly match, you stupid kingdoms, then don't expect me to act lightly. You guys didn't bother to pay attention to this warning, Urian walked up to Jade and asked with concern, are you okay? Riki was still watching the figure of Ryase's group gradually disappear, not knowing what he was thinking. Jade held Urian's hand, smiling and thinking, just now. The first time I saw it, the magic power disappeared in the blink of an eye. Just like that day witnessing the match between Chris and Urian. Jade's eyes opened wide, not knowing what she was thinking. Then he looked at the Urian in front of him, thinking in confusion, destroying a magic storm, very similar. While Riki's sword was stuck in the ground, cracks appeared on the sword's body. Riki then noticed, opened his eyes in surprise and thought, my sword is broken. He remembered that when he used the sword to fight Ryase, she threw her fist at it, which made Riki doubtfully think, could it be that it was broken at that time? Riki stared at his broken sword, lamenting sadly, it was obvious that normal fists had no magic power, did he expect that it could break his magic sword? Thinking for a while, Riki turned to look at Urian and said, Urian, this friendly match absolutely cannot be neglected. Urian stupidly scratched his head and asked, Ha, huh, why? Inside the friendly hall, a large number of people had arrived, enjoying delicious food on the banquet table. The five people of the first year Magic Kingdom school were standing in one place looking around. Obaru saw the group of Urians and immediately tensed up thinking, Here they come, the first year representatives of the kingdom, they are stronger than those demon swords. Urian looked at the food and drinks in the hall, his eyes lit up and said, is this a friendly hall, there's so much food. At this moment, a call suddenly rang out, Princess Seruti, long time no see, the one who spoke was the Royal Magic School's Deus, third year, first class. Seruti saw someone she knew and happily approached, Deus, 
just talk freely. Because right now I'm not a princess, but just a normal student. Deus heard that and smiled and said, Ha ha, you have grown up. Seeing this scene, MYU stood aside and whispered to Urian, that person was the top of the entire school at the Royal Magic School, the only elite class student of the third year, hum, I'm much stronger than him. Urian heard that, I could only laugh, blandly saying, split bangs, ha ha ha. Everyone was having a heated discussion when Professor Hyewon came and she spoke, everyone was present, right. Then she glanced at Deus's face and said, third year, one person. Second year, four people, one of the four people asked, is he really a former warrior? This time it was the Urian group's turn, Professor Hyewon called roll, five one, five people. Professor Hyewon stood seriously with his hands behind his back and loudly shouted, a total of ten players, that's enough. At this moment, Deus suddenly approached where Professor Hyewon was standing, politely greeted and said, long time no see, Hyewon nodded at him, Deus, I have high hopes for you, Deus happily said, pleased to give you me. As soon as he finished speaking, the lights in the friendly hall suddenly turned off, another voice rang out, thank you very much, the meeting will begin, Hyewon said without surprise, oh, let's begin, already. Ryase was standing alone listening to the introduction, the host said in a monotone, first of all, I would like to sincerely thank the distinguished guests who came to this faraway empire. The presenter stood on a high floor, the light shone directly on him, he began to introduce himself, I am Kazar, a professor at the international school. It has been seven consecutive years that the exchange between the empire and the kingdom has taken place, the exchange not only strengthens the friendship between the two countries, but is also an important event for students from each country to meet and learn from each other. Recently, when I heard that monsters appeared in the kingdom, I thought that the empire's students would not have a chance to learn. But don't worry, our empire is strong enough to be able to stop even a level 5 attack. Principal Marges stood aside, frowning as he listened to Professor Kazar say, whether it's this event or the demons that appear later, our empire will protect you, because this is the empire. As soon as Professor Kazar's words ended, another person stepped forward to speak, pleased to welcome you, I am Professor Jerry from the Royal Academy of Magic, through this friendly match, the students of the two countries will have the opportunity to learn and strengthen their friendship with each other. At the bottom of the auditorium, the principal of the national school looked at Professor Kazar and praised with satisfaction, what a great speech, Kazar, Professor Kazar immediately bowed his head and said, thank you principal. Professor Kazar looked at Professor Jerry with sharp eyes and said in a cold voice, I think the kingdom has been punched in the face by my speech. At this moment, Professor Jerry was still continuing to speak, hoping that you would become excellent talents of the country, he paused for a moment, he raised two fingers before continuing, today I am in here are two things I want you to know. Professor Jerry's first finger lowered, he spoke neither quickly nor slowly, first, the students from our kingdom, defeated level four on their own. He looked at Urian and Riki with excited eyes, this achievement will be recorded in history, once again proving the greatness of the kingdom. Next, Professor Jerry smiled sarcastically and said, second, the empire has been defeated by our kingdom in three consecutive friendly matches. Through this friendly match, if you can learn the magic of our great kingdom even a little, the empire will definitely become an excellent magic school. If you want to protect others, you must first be strong, I hope this friendly match can help you somewhat, as soon as these words ended, the principal applauded loudly, and the Professor G smiled helplessly and said softly, Teacher Jerry is still as mean as ever. After finishing the speech, Professor Jerry slowly said, It was a speech from the kingdom, the official friendly match will be held in two days, the remaining time is an opportunity for us to build up, emotional. Just right at the end of the speech, Urian excitedly rushed to the food tables, happily shouting, Finally those boring speeches were over, can you eat now, that king crab is mine. At this time, Urian was still engrossed in eating and asking if there were any more grilled clams, one person stood silently, bowing his head thoughtfully, not knowing what he was thinking. His face was covered in sweat, he looked at Hyewon and then hesitantly said, Miss, I'm a bit worried. Hyewon turned around to look, he hesitantly said, the second year elite class are all hospitalized right now, so we from the regular class became representative players. We are afraid we will drag your feet. At this time another second year student also came, 
His face also showed a worried look and said, Moreover, the Empire in three consecutive friendly matches, this year will definitely win, I don't know if they will play tricks, what rules does the game violate? He broke down when he said this, but that's not the case, if level 4 appears, there's no need to open this friendly match. After pausing for a long time, this student hesitated to continue speaking, so before we could finish speaking, Urian, who was still chewing his food, interrupted us, we just need to win, right, why worry, okay, can I continue eating now? When the two second year students heard that, they were immediately stunned. Princess Seruti and Riki came over, Seruti calmly said, of course, and Riki looked at the two second year students, firmly saying, they can play tricks or anything, because we won't lose this time. MYU and CR also came together, the two girls whispered to each other, playing tricks, it was interesting. When the two second year students heard what the Urian group said, they became less worried and their faces gradually relaxed. At this time, Professor Hyewon spoke up, human strength is inherent in nature, not in rank or position. It's not an elite class or an ordinary class, it's because you're excellent that you're here. You are not a replacement player for the elite class, I believe in my elite players. Hearing Professor Hyewon say that, the student wearing the headband couldn't hold it in any more, tears fell from his eyes, he choked up and said, thank you. The friendly battle between the kingdom and the empire was expected with little concern, so very quickly two days passed, in the friendly arena, the cheers were deafening, the friendly match between the the eighth magic school officially begins. You've been waiting for a long time, haven't you? The eighth friendly match between magical schools is now open. The first match, the third year's one-on-one -on -one match. Hearing this announcement, Professor Hyewon called out, Deus. Looking at the young man straight back walking up to the competition stage, Professor Hyewon asked, If I lose, I'm dead. Deus didn't turn around but smiled and replied, I won't lose. The instructor of Irvine Imperial Magic School spoke up, Although Deus is very strong, but if it were you now, you would win. Before the Imperial Magic student representing third year Vika Nuzag stepped onto the stage, Coach Irvin told them to show them the power of the Empire. The two contestants stepped onto the high platform, vigilantly observing each other. Below, cheers rang out. The kingdom is fighting. The Empire is victorious. MC Alice smiled and clearly stated the rules. The friendly match will take place in total three rounds. The school that wins the first two rounds will win. So the first round is very important. So worried, Professor GE spoke up. Principal Marchers immediately reassured. GE. It seems this is your first time coming to watch this friendly match, Professor G nodded and replied, Yes Principal. Principal Marges heard that and smiled and asked, Do you know the reason why the kingdom defeated the empire three years ago? Professor G heard that and was startled and said, Huh, it's not because our students are strong, teacher. No, Principal Marges replied smiling, because Deus was born in the kingdom. On the competition stage, Deus calmly smiled and greeted, we met again this year Vika Nuzag, are you still well? MC Alice's voice rang out, the two players should prepare, Vika Nuzag evaluated Deus once and said, Deus, I am much stronger than last year. The match started, the MC shouted, Vika Nuzag immediately raised his hand, continued speaking, today I will make you remember my name. As soon as he finished speaking, he immediately used a series of skills, including, physical strength, magic resistance, increased physical ability, increased movement speed, iron skin, healing magic, increased intuition, increased vision. Vika Nuzag's two nostrils immediately burst with blood, buff effects, magic increased the user's ability, buff magic usually has a limit of three to five times more, if the buff is too much to bear, the chance body will not be able to resist. Principal Marges saw that and exclaimed, the level 8 buff was so bad that his nose bled, that student worked very hard, Professor G shouted excitedly, I want to come closer and see. But, Principal Marges suddenly hesitated and couldn't speak. But on the competition stage, Deus calmly smiled and slowly said, Okay, I won't forget. Hope this will be a good match, Deus said and brandished his weapon. This is the death scythe, the powerful scythe of death. Vika Nuzag frowned and assessed that if the battle was prolonged, it would exhaust its magic power and be at a disadvantage. Thinking like that, Vika Nuzag immediately bent down, magic power radiated from his body around him, he confidently said, 
I will finish it with one move. Vicky stood below and asked doubtfully, what was that posture? Urien next to him gasped in bewilderment and said, that is the posture of preparing to run. The running posture should be like this, Vicky said while showing an extremely funny posture, Urien asked helplessly, ninja, but MYU not far away was pondering and not knowing what he was thinking. Coach Irvin stood below, smiling and thinking, the kingdom will probably be very surprised, because I used to be like that too. Instructor Irvin remembered the past, at that time he was extremely confused and asked, Nuzag, what position is this? Vika Nuzag said, this is the attack position, teacher, attack, training coach Irvin asked again. Vika Nuzag from below immediately said, teacher, Deus is very strong, in the past two years, I have not been able to defeat him. But this year will be different, your level 8 buff can take down Deus, coach Irvin said. 100% no, Vika Nuzag asked. Hearing this question, Coach Irvin was not sure and nodded haphazardly, just standing there silently. He thought to himself, level 8 buff is a very powerful magic, even if it is Deus, if you fight it normally you won't be able to stay awake. But if you play normally, there won't be enough time. A buff higher than level 5 will certainly be several times stronger, but the body will not be able to withstand it. Nuzag tried to the point of vomiting blood, to create a body that could withstand level 8 buffs for up to 30 seconds, that was definitely a great result. Coach Irvin glanced at Deus. Then he continued with his train of thought, for those 30 seconds. The 5 second raid that Vika Nuzag created, will take down Deus in 5 seconds. In the stands, Vika Nuzag's hands were firmly pressed against the floor, from the palms of her hands, extremely powerful magic flowed out. This magic power was so strong that even Coach Irvin had to sweat and take a few steps back. At this moment, he suddenly burst out laughing and said, so that's why he put his hand on the ground because of this. This is a raid to defeat you for a whole year, don't even dream of running away, Coach Irvin said. At this time, Vika Nuzag was ready, he arched his body slightly, shouted loudly, buff level 8, preparing to attack. He bowed his head and said, the position I created is the best position to increase speed the fastest. Combining level 8 buffs, my strength will be equal to or greater than the hero's, if you can avoid it, avoid it. I know, Deus replied lightly, let's end it quickly. Principal Marges commented with interest, curling up and running by stretching, can increase strength very quickly, a technique that cannot be underestimated. But, the way of fighting is not good, he said with a slight frown. But on the competition floor, Vika Nuzag suddenly froze on the spot. His eyes opened wide, watching the death scythe that Deus brandished rushing straight towards him. The death scythe did not show any mercy, splitting Vika Nuzag's body in half, sending fresh blood flying everywhere. Coach Irvin exclaimed in horror, Nuzag. Deus smiled and replied, don't be afraid, I'll just split the magic power in half. On the opposite side, Vika Nuzag collapsed on the floor, completely losing consciousness, MC Alice immediately shouted, player Nuzag lost. The person who won the first round was the Royal Magic School's Deus player. Deus smiled and looked at the other side and said, a very good match, Nuzag. Coach Irvin walked into the waiting room of the Imperial team, immediately countless reproaches rang out, you bragged like that, how did it turn out like this? Less than 30 seconds, what is this humiliation, isn't your training ability so useless? We have to win this friendly match. We can't lose four years in a row. Monster Kingdom attacks is being suspected by other countries. At this time, our empire must gain hegemony. But what is this situation? The third year ace of the magic school actually lost in 30 seconds. What are you doing to take responsibility? Coach Irvin heard all these words, sadly thinking to himself, how did it turn out like this? No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't. Deus, he will become the next hero. Not wanting to give up hope, Coach Irvin immediately explained, I knew this would be very serious for the first and second years, the third year lost, although I was sorry, I only lost one round. We will win the remaining two rounds, the friendly match is just starting now. A person sitting on a chair heard that and frowned and warned, if you lose this match, it won't end with you guys apologizing. But right now in the kingdom's waiting room, Professor Hyewon was happily saying, the remaining match is for the second year and first year, just need to win one of the two rounds. Let's let the first years go to war, okay seniors, 
she said with a smirk. The four second-year students heard that and immediately responded in unison and obeyed the order. The student wearing the headband is full of determination and determination. He remembered the image of being bullied by Ranking Lerrell in the past. Ranking Lerrell raised his fist, said viciously, and if someone opposes me, then stand up. No, Ranking Lerrell said, then now I will rule the elite class. Since that day last year, I was determined not to run away. The student wearing the banner clenched his fists and silently exclaimed, but yesterday showed a weak image. His eyes were shining with joy, silently asserting that this was his chance, his chance to be reborn. The kingdom is leading with a 1-0 score. Will the empire collapse like this? MC Alice said. The second-year representative of the Al-Zaha Imperial Magic School looked at the opponent in front of him and said angrily, those pests, where are Larry, I don't have time to play with pests like you please bring Larry, this insect, the student wearing the headband said through gritted teeth, a student behind saw his opponent like that and cried out in fear, he's so scary, unable to bear it anymore, the student wearing the headband approached Al-Zaha, shouting, Larry is playing with your mother, Al-Zaha's face has a long scar slashed horizontally from the top of his forehead to the bottom of his right cheek, he looks extremely scary, hearing his opponent say that, he smirked and replied, are you kidding me? I know. Okay, then die. The student wearing the headband was not afraid at all when he heard that, he clenched his fists, raised his stance, and looked straight at Al-Zaha with sharp eyes. At this moment, MC Alice suddenly shouted, Match 4, for a second year. Please allow me to begin. Kingdom versus Empire, Empire versus Kingdom. Fierce friendly match between two rival countries with the kingdom leading. MC Alice aggressively commented, can the Empire turn the situation around with the remaining two rounds? Will the Kingdom win again? The second round of competition that determines the outcome of the battle, the second year's 4 4 match, may we begin. Every cheer from below rang in the ears of the students wearing headbands, come on, Kingdom, end in second year. If the Empire loses, then accept the insult and quickly show them the power of the Empire. Al Zaha assessed the opponent in front of him and said, you guys don't wear elite badges, are you kidding me? Get Leryl out here quickly, he growled angrily. As soon as these words fell, terrifying magic power rushed out from the four Empire students, hitting the four Kingdom students. They slightly lost their balance, took a few steps back, and cried out in horror, oh, this magic power. The student wearing the headband gritted his teeth and shouted, guys, don't back down. We come here as representatives. On the other side, Upon hearing these words, the Imperial students covered their mouths with contempt and laughed, they seemed to be scared, ha ha, funny, this is the coach's instructions, let's win once, in the most cruel and tragic way possible, it's time to take the field. Anyway I think so, Al Zaha said. Hearing that, the other three members burst into laughter and looked at their opponents with cold eyes. All the second year representatives of the Empire had scars on their faces. The reason is because last year, the player representing the Leryl Kingdom used his dagger to slash everyone's faces one by one. He was like a pervert, slashing someone's face while saying, ha ha, being able to see the dagger so close was great. At this moment, voices of warning immediately rang out, stop Leryl, battle the match is over, the referee should stop it. Al Zaha shouted indignantly, we had to work hard to repay Leryl, but now we have to fight you instead of him. The group of Kingdom representatives did not bother to pay attention to these words, the student wearing the headband took a forward stance, then gave orders, everyone got into position, fighting to protect the magician. Looking at this scene, Al Zaha frowned and said, you guys, trying like that. As soon as he finished speaking, he slightly shrugged his feet. Al Zaha's feet quickly moved extremely fast, in the blink of an eye he passed through the group of representatives of the Kingdom. All four were so scared they couldn't move, since when? Al Zaha turned around, said neither too quickly nor too slowly, I have prepared for a year to defeat Leryl, last year's humiliation, I will wash it off with my own hands, then I will grow up. It's not you insects, Al Zaha said, around his body, demonic energy was rising. Before the other four could do anything, they were suppressed by that demonic weapon and sent flying back a distance. The student wearing the headband fell straight to the ground, a mouthful of blood gushing out, thinking in horror, what have I been hit by? 
His jaws clenched tightly together. Very quickly he struggled to sit up. The student wearing the headband opened his mouth and shouted. Everyone gathered, confirmed the target of the attack, and deployed defense. Al-Zahar didn't bother to turn around and said with disdain, Are you guys really second years like me? Your level is too low. The four students of the kingdom heard that and cried out in horror. Luckily it didn't hit. Your sword. Are you okay? It hurts so much. One person looked at the student wearing the headband and said, I wasn't hit. When he suddenly appeared, I instinctively opened the distance. So don't get hit. He only used magic to attack those at close range. That person said, the student wearing the headband immediately realized that, that's what it was. The representative of the empire looked at the others and began to discuss. They are discussing, it's too bad, I want to fight too, but I can't, that's the coach's order. The captain will defeat the kingdom alone to show off. At this moment, the eyes of the student wearing the headband suddenly became strangely sharp. He held the sword tightly in his hand, full of determination and said, this match, we won. When other people heard that, they were confused. The student wearing the headband did not answer but thought to himself, I don't know why he fought alone, but this is the opportunity. He gritted his teeth and shouted, everyone concentrated, there was only one opponent, with the ability to attack at close range. Formation 3, prepare, the opponent's weakness is long range attacks, the student wearing the headband gives orders. Hearing that, Al Zaha turned his head slightly and asked suspiciously, weak long range attack, me. He pointed at himself and announced, like an arms, 30 seconds, I won't strike for 30 seconds, take me down. The kingdom students heard this and exclaimed in shock, 30 seconds, a trap. Why are people standing still? Another person impatiently raised his hand and said, quickly attack. As soon as these words finished, everyone seemed to wake up from a trance, immediately grasped their weapons tightly in their hands, rushed to the position where al Zaha was standing and slashed. Second after second passed, al Zaha was not harmed at all, he exclaimed excitedly. His fist suddenly clenched tightly, and from his fingers began to radiate billowing demonic energy. al Zaha swung his hand, sending the people in front of him flying a few meters away. Guys, a student of the kingdom who was not affected by this attack cried out in worry. al Zaha walked past him and said leisurely, instead of worrying about those people, worry about yourself. Hearing this, he thought in horror, since when, I don't see. As soon as these words finished, he was sent flying away by al Zaha's magic. Professor Ji nervously stood up, the gap in strength was too high. Principal Marge sighed and said, anyway, that is the difference between the normal class and the elite class. Professor Ji heard that and cautiously asked the principal, if we let the match continue, wouldn't there be a problem, our students will get hurt. Principal Marges shook his head and said, their coach is Hye Won, trust her judgment. Professor Hye Won is currently standing below observing the match. Her sharp eyes assessed Al Zaha. The man raised his bloody hand high, then brutally punched the student wearing the headband straight in the face, causing the boy to spit out a large mouthful of blood. Al Zaha's hand retracted, a few rays of cold magic flashed across his wrist. He waved his hand, and the magic followed his hand movements and hit the student wearing the headband. The student wearing the headband was now covered in blood and let out a soft groan. Clenching his bloody fist, Al Zaha looked at the person lying on the ground and said faintly, Now you know. No matter how hard you pests try, you can't surpass the elite class. Crawl on the floor like a bug and beg for salvation. The student wearing the headband collapsed face down on the cold ground. Thin blood flowing from his face dyed the whole area red. He was silent for a moment and then spoke, I know. I also know I'm a bug. No matter how hard I try I can't surpass the elite class. I know much better than you. He stood up a little, trying his best to say, I know the people here. Don't care about me at all. They point at me. I will lose anyway. Why try to fight even though I know the outcome, fruit? But I won't give up. The student wearing the headband raised his head. His eyes flashed with a resilient light as he spoke every word. Because I ran away because the fear of that day was dead. I have transformed myself. If I run away now I will have to live like a weak person again. I won't run away again. The student wearing the headband shouted with all his might. At this moment, Al Zaha's fist suddenly swung from afar, 
punching the student wearing the headband straight in the face. The punch was extremely strong, sending the student wearing the headband flying several meters away. Al Zaha returned with his hand, not bothering to say anything, then die. At this moment, a series of loud explosions rang out. White dust filled the entire arena, making it impossible to see who was who anymore. The student wearing the headband spat out a mouthful of blood and stood up straight. His face was bloody, he gritted his teeth and shouted, I won't lie down. So what? Al Zaha didn't bother to pay attention, just coldly asked. His fist clenched tightly again, magic power seeped out from between his fingers, he slowly said, then. Al Zaha stopped for a moment, then used an incredibly fast speed to rush straight towards the student wearing the headband, he raised his hand, aimed at the opponent's leg and struck, his mouth faintly saying, I will break the leg, you, so that you cannot stand up again. The powerful fist swung down, but before it could reach the headband wearing practitioner's feet, it was stopped by force. Urian didn't know when he was on the competition floor, he rushed out to block the student wearing the headband, coldly looking at Al Zaha on the other side. When Al Zaha saw this scene, he waved his hands high, he roared in anger, whoever it is, do you want your legs to be amputated? Hearing these words, Urian curled his lips into a smile, at the same time, Al Zaha's swinging fist completely stopped obeying his master's instructions and stopped helplessly in midair. Al Zaha roared angrily, whoever you are, do you want your legs broken? Urian curled his lips and smiled without saying anything, his cold eyes staring at the person in front of him. The student wearing a headband with blood flowing all over his face raised his head in surprise and asked suspiciously, a special student. Coach Irvin suddenly shouted in panic, Zaha, stop quickly. Looking at the three other students of the kingdom lying flat on the competition floor, each person's body was covered in blood, MC Alice spoke, the opponent had lost the ability to fight, the match was over. The referee's hand was raised high and clenched tightly. That is the sign that ends the match. The second friendly round, the Empire won, the bell rang, Al Zaha looked back slightly and said, Hum, you're lucky. Another representative of the Empire grinned happily, Ha ha, indeed the captain. His ability to control magic power was very surprising. Before hitting that guy, he immediately retracted his magic power. Others heard that and immediately said, even if the opponent is Leryl, the captain will still win. But Al Zaha was standing on one side right now, he raised his hand high and looked intently at his hand, thinking in his heart, I have controlled magic power, how is that possible? On the other side, Ella clenched her fists and exclaimed, wow, what a surprise Urian, I thought there would be an unexpected situation. Jade stood next to him, trying to force a smile, thinking in confusion, I guess it wasn't my mistake, what happened today is certain of that. The magic power has disappeared, Urian can neutralize the magic power immediately. Knowing this unbelievable truth, Jade's face sweated, she was so scared that she burst out laughing, neutralizing magic power or instantly healing, these are all extremely special skills. At this moment, the student wearing the headband was sitting there dumbfounded, Urian came to comfort him, senior, he didn't run away until the last moment. I feel very impressed, Urian said smiling. Hearing this sentence, the student wearing the headband was stunned, his eyes wide open without blinking. He sat in one place for a long time, then slowly said, what, I can't do anything. But, well, I didn't run away, the student wearing the headband stammered, then burst into tears. He kept crying like that for a long time, as if he wanted to pour out all the worries and sorrows in his heart. The student wearing the headband cried until exhausted and fell face down on the competition floor. The referee saw this and quickly shouted, the student has fainted, doctor, call the doctor quickly. Urian turned his head and looked back, thinking to himself, the imperialists were too strong, could students fight against each other to that extent? Thinking that, he immediately smiled. The long, slender hand gently raised. Urian turned back to where the student wearing the headband fainted, brought his hand closer to his side, Marquis Reyes ran up and saw this and quickly shouted, special student. What are you doing? He asked in panic. Urian looked at the Marquis raised in confusion, frowned and said, I'm going to treat him because his wound is quite serious. No way, Marquis Reyes shouted. Your healing power has been determined how many times you can use it, please prepare your healing power for the next match. 
Urian heard that and quickly said, but if not treated now, it will leave Sequili. Seeing him being so stubborn, the Marquis raised angrily and scolded him, special student, this is not the place for students to perform their talents, this is an event that costs more money than I thought, please hand over the patient to the doctor, and prepare for the next match. The doctors arrived just in time, hastily preparing first aid, confirming the injured, and urgently treating and taking them to the emergency room. Doctors quickly lifted up four of the kingdom's students and took them to the emergency room. Looking at this scene, Ella covered her mouth in fear, Jade stood next to her, frowning worriedly. Vicky pondered, not knowing what he was thinking. The twin sisters MYU and CR also stood silently on one side. Princess Seruti had no special reaction. Professor Hyewon stood there with his arms crossed. Professor Hyewon's hair was a bit long, covering her eyes. A moment later, she slightly raised her eyes and a cold light suddenly flashed in her pupils. Four second-year students were lined up neatly in one place. All four were covered in blood and looked extremely horrifying. Around their bodies, magic was constantly circulating to heal their wounds. At this time, the doctor suddenly shouted that it could not be cured, the body was in critical condition. Another doctor heard that and immediately decided to stop emergency treatment and quickly take him to the emergency room, the other doctor immediately replied yes. The attack makes treatment more difficult, the empire is much stronger this year, the doctor silently exclaimed. The doctor was preparing to take the other four people to the emergency room when Urian approached him, he didn't know when, he looked at him with disdain and snorted. The doctor thought to himself, a player representing the kingdom, thinking so, he immediately said, we are still treating, you should prepare for the match. Marquis Ray saw this and immediately exclaimed in panic, special student. Urian firmly said, I'm sorry, but I decided to use my power to save them. The special student, Marquis Ray's roared angrily. Urian didn't bother to pay attention to him. Time was already urgent, he quickly raised his hand. A gentle light immediately surrounded the four injured students, gradually healing their injuries. The doctor was horrified when he saw this scene, not understanding what was going on. Another doctor exclaimed in surprise, What, what is this? As if by a miracle, one second the four students were in such critical condition that it was difficult to treat, the next second they sat up with strength and coolness, what happened in the end, the patient has completely recovered. This doctor angrily grabbed the person who had just given first aid to the four people and scolded him. What kind of treatment did you do? Princess Seruti slowly walked closer to Urian, leaned close to his ear and whispered, If they don't treat them, they will die, you're very kind, aren't you? MYU also walked up to Urian, smiled and said, This is the healing power I want, what, do you want to be by my side, when you heard your sister say that, you quickly shouted. Vicky closed his eyes and stood silently, he was always very quiet like that. MYU refused to let Urian go, continuing to say, marriage is for later, be my person first, Urian heard that and said in panic, are you still thinking about that, CR listened to these words feeling embarrassed for her sister, she covered her face with her hands and burst out laughing helplessly. Marquis Reyes was still annoyed by Urian's arbitrary use of his healing ability earlier, he scolded, special student, now it's my turn to say. Before he could finish scolding, a slim shoulder pushed past the raised Marquis, gave him a strong nudge in the body, and interrupted what he wanted to say. Professor Hyewon walked a few steps forward before turning around, smiling innocently and saying, sorry, you're so round and small, I thought it was a ball. Having said this, she paused slightly, her cold eyes assessed the Marquis rays once before continuing, besides, I'm the homeroom teacher of the children here. Marquis raised fell to the floor, cried out in horror, then stammered, if she lost this time, she would be responsible. Whatever, Professor Hyewon turned around, she raised her voice, Empire, how about it, we're all prepared. When MC Alice heard that, she was stunned and exclaimed. That is the kingdom's challenge. Former warrior Hyewon, Coach Irvin greeted, Professor Hyewon didn't bother to respond, just snorted lightly. Ryase stood there, determinedly telling himself that the Empire would not give up. A few light footsteps landed on the competition floor. The group of first-year students representing the Imperial Magic School had finished preparing, ready to start the match. Obaru, third-year first year of the Imperial Magic School, looked around, curled his mouth and thought, the atmosphere is gradually heating up, 
the coach won't be angry, right? Oh Ham, the fourth year first year of the Imperial Magic School, clenched his fists, excitedly said, wow, that healing power is strong, making me so curious that I want to kill him and take it away. Oh Jin, the fifth ranked first year of the Imperial Magic School, heard that and continued contemptuously, as far as I can see, he only knows that trick. Les Harper, second year first year of the Imperial Magic School pointed straight ahead, not taking anyone seriously and said with a hearty laugh, Riki, you bastard, you're probably dead. Raya Say, the first year class of the Imperial Magic School, didn't bother to listen to those people's words, just coldly warned, if you don't prove the Empire's strength, you will all die by my hands. In the crowded competition hall, cheers and cheers rang out endlessly, MC Alice spoke up, the Empire has responded to the Kingdom's provocation, so let's hurry to the final match. The student wearing the headband was looking up at the competition stage, at this moment, the doctor suddenly ran up and patted his shoulder and said, the match is about to start, let's go quickly, hearing that, he quickly replied, ah yes. The student wearing the headband's eyes were bright and determined, with a few drops of sweat on his face. Just as he was about to turn around and leave, a gentle voice rang out, senior, leave it to us next. Hearing that, the student wearing the headband immediately smiled with relief. His spine straightened, he walked away step by step, leaving only a word of encouragement, fighting. Professor G smiled and said in the waiting room, ha ha, very Professor Hyewon, the third match is about to start. Principal Marches nodded and replied, this time we'll decide the victory of this friendly match. Professor G felt a little worried when he heard that, he turned his head slightly and said, if we rely on strength, I don't doubt our school's victory, but I'm a little worried about the Empire's thinking at this time. Principal Marges was silent for a moment, he looked down at the arena below and cautiously said, I also thought about this, but it seems like there's no need to worry about anything. Below, Professor Hyewon slowly approached, calmly telling his students, the Empire has now lost to us for three years, they still open this friendly match to wash away their humiliation despite the current situation, danger. They will definitely use every trick to win this match, so you just need to win like always. Hearing these words, Urian, leading the group of students representing a kingdom, calmly spoke. Respond, obey. Urian smiled calmly, magic energy gently radiated from his body, and MC Alice shouted loudly at this moment, the eighth friendly match, Empire vs Kingdom has begun.